Nah, I'm good. McWuggy, I'm good. Hi, Groot. How's things? Hello, YouTube chat. How are you guys over there? I do see you, but uh, obviously, as as per usual, I won't be responding as much. Today, we are continuing our new fort. Twitch chat. Now's your opportunity to say to say hi, YouTube. And let's uh, play some Dwarf Fortress. So this, um, <clears throat> is Apple Bottom, my brand new fort. You know, I decided to stand up for a bit because I thought it would wake me up a little bit. It's not working, except now my knees are sore. So I'm gonna sit back down. <laughs> Standing desks, a blessing and a curse. Ow. I smacked my head. I checked. Do the boot doors wear boots with fur? Actually, yes. The first clothing item that all of the dwarves acquired were uh yarn socks and yarn shoes. And for maximum bling options, uh, we are going to be wearing uh, silk robes. And uh, we also have elephant leather hoods because I caught and slaughtered some elephants um, when I was trying to catch some invaders. Uh, it's a very low population fort. We're actually at year two. Uh, we have updated the goal and the last fort command. I will enable the dwarf redemption when we get a migrant wave, I think. Um, the named dwarves are uh, Tubby, Laia, Terminal Wetness, Gazoom, Merc, Creed, Arende, as well as Batome, as well as Joker of Spades, Shake, Break, and Fallout Rain. And we do have one single Bab in the fortress, who, of course, belongs to the one and only Fallout Rain and Shake, Break, who are a very happy couple. They arrived uh, already married, um, and uh, one of them is my manager, and the other one is the bookkeeper. Um, I would say that it was done specifically for um, priorities, but uh, the, the reason... Um, any uh, trousers soon? Yeah, I, mean, prob I don't know what to make the trousers out of. Pro probably more silk. Probably just silk. Um, because silk trousers are pretty blingy. Um, they, they arrived with the proper skills for management as well as bookkeeping. So I was like, well, this is fitting. They are a married couple, so it's less people to name. Uh, or rather, le less uh, offices to assign, and also um, they can get all my jobs done. So we are a cavern fort, but it's a very shallow cavern fort. Um, and it's it's on an untamed wilds biome. And the first thing I did when we settled in the caverns was I just went all the way around the edges and we sealed off every single one of the walls um, with granite blocks. So all of these walls all the way around the edge are sealed with one exception, this water zone. So my plan for today is to route this water into here and get some power going, okay? The other thing I would like to do today is I would like to... Okay, so this, th this right here looks like a perfectly normal bottom of a cavern, right? Well, it's actually one layer above the cavern below. I kind of would like to have a waterfall going into this cavern below because I think that would be awesome. But in order to do that, I need to kind of remove a bunch of this right here and have somewhere for it to flow, which currently I don't have. So I would like to do that because I think that would be awesome. This cavern um, has this lovely little, you know, lava spot here, uh, which I am slowly removing all the edges for, um, just to, you know, use it entirely for my own purposes. And my own purposes, of course, being... Uh, making aluminum goblets and aluminum bracelets. Um, we also are slowly making some green glass at this particular green glass furnace. So I gotta say that this is a pretty good sp elephant trousers with the trunk attachments. Oh no. I have a question. What, did, did, did the trunk attachments go on the front or back? Also, come on. Elephant leather is made, trunks are made into water skins. Come on. Dr. Y, indeed. Um, also, Rolf, good morning. It's good to see you. Darren, as well. Wuggy McWuggy, uh, Dwarf Dragoon, and Gazoom Royal Green 
as well as Salty, Tempest, Stone, aka Seashore, as well as Hal Thane. Morning, everybody. Euster Blich, as well. Your boy over on YouTube, as well as Bill uh, Sellers, as well as Greg. There's another Greg and LP Bean. Scrolling up in uh, Twitch chat as well. We also have uh, Shinobi and Ghana Tank and Tell and Artho and No Banner Flags and A Darkened Dawn, Chromoys. Hope everybody's doing well. If I missed you and you would like me to say hi, say hi now. Um, but yeah, so this is a very small fort currently. Um, it's mostly just this cavern layer and we are farming in it. Also, um, while I did slaughter some elephants, if I can find them, there are some baby ele Yeah, there's one. There are some baby elephants because before we slaughtered them, the adult elephants um, actually gave birth to some babies. And while they were giving birth to some babies, uh, we trained those babies and, well, because of the way Dwarf Fortress works right now, uh, babies can be tamed. So we have some tame baby elephants that are in the fort uh, and a very large grazing pasture for them, which is basically this entire zone. Which I could, of course, extend all the way down to there if I wanted to. But uh, there's, what, like three or four of them in here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five of them. Um, they're just very small, so they're hard to spot. But there are five of them in there, and uh, they they are a breeding pair. We have males and, and ladies. I kind of I kind of want to build a little walkway here over to here because this entire cavern is under our control. We, we can just build in here freely because these walls are almost entirely blocked off except for this area. So Forgotten Beasts can show up, which... I guess could total the fort right now if they did. Um, and uh, that's kind of fun. But uh, honestly, at this point, there, there's worse things that could happen. Um, but because the caverns are completely ours, this area is just ours uh, for the Taken to build it. Um, another fun thing is this right here is actually a downward um, pathway uh, leading down to this lower cavern layer. So that's kind of fun. Uh, also, this lower cavern layer, which we've also fully explored, which we don't currently have direct access to, aside from this doorway, um, is just above this other cavern layer, which is right beneath it, which uh, I found while I was digging out this reservoir, okay? Now, this is layer 20, right, with this second cavern layer, which, by the way, this is also a really cool-looking cave layer. Like, there's something about it. Just just the layout of this is really neat. It's very, f it's very flat, which I think is really cool. Uh, right beneath this is the Lava Sea on layer 16. Up on the surface, uh, there is a lake. Uh, this is an untamed wilds lake, and this uh, area over here is also untamed wilds. Uh, this lake has a flying lungfish above it, but this lake uh, is full of lungfish, apparently. Um, it, like I said, is untamed wilds, and I would like my front door to be in the middle of this lake. So I have this little circular walkway thingy that I started digging, um, which I obviously didn't finish, but I have this little circular walkway that I started digging that I want to dig one layer underneath this. How did I get such a thin map? I'm not totally sure. Uh, we did a bunch of exploring, and this one just seemed neat, um, mostly because of the massive amounts of obsidian right here. Um, and also, when, I, when I'm doing exploring, what I do is I just do the play now option and then immediately exit. Um, also what Tel and Artho said, if you're very close to sea level or very low elevation, you, you lose your total elevation, right? Um, but this map goes to minus three. So that's kind of exciting. Um, the problem is this is us right here. That's a necromancer tower right there. That's already sieged us which sie sieged us right at the time where we theoretically were supposed to get traders from the mountain home. So that's a bummer. And uh, these guys right here, this is my mountain home. Um, actually, I think specifically this is my mountain home. I could be wrong. No, that's just a dwarven fortress. Dwarven mountain halls. One, one of these are probably my mountain home. Anyway, uh, the problem with this is... They're in active warfare, so I'm not entirely certain I'm going to get traders immediately. I might have to wait a while. Um, it could also be these guys, and if it actually is these guys, I think these guys are just straight up inaccessible. Uh, no, they're not. They're just 24 days travel away. Okay, so, like, my home faction is potentially really far away. So the problem with this is we may not get traders. I'm going to, however, I think, send a... Demand one-time tribute. And I'm going to send... 
Uh, hmm. Let's just send one dwarf, actually. The reason I'm going to do this, and Tubby's going to go do this. Well, let, let's send somebody who isn't named yet. Let's send... Raul. Raul, you can go do this. The reason I'm going to do this is I need more people to trade with. The Earthen Conflagurations, which is a good name, uh, is going to go demand a one-time tribute. And here's hoping they come trade with us. Because we really, 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 really need the traders. And I'll also put a door at the end of that. So we really need the traders. So here's hoping that that can be sorted. Um, right now, we are currently giving all the dwarves their first furniture, which are cabinets and chests, uh, so that they can put their shoes and socks away, uh, which is lovely to see. It's one of my favorite things to watch dwarves do is store their owned items. They run around and they collect all of the stuff that they own, and then they put it into their uh, into their uh, cabinets, like as you see right here. Um, so you guys were saying we need pants, right? Well, we've been here for almost two years, so the dwarves' clothing is starting to get a little gnarly. So trousers. What kind of trousers do I make? We have cloth. We have alpaca wool cloth, cave spider silk cloth, pigtail cloth, and we have, um, under leather, we have elephant leather. What kind of pants do I make for my dwarves? We could do leather trousers, I think. Yeah, so we could do cloth trousers, leather trousers, silk trousers, or yarn trousers. Well, we have yarn shoe trousers. So also another thing, um, this fortress is called Apple Bottom. So we have boots with fur. So we have yarn shoes. So what would Apple Bottom jeans be? I rarely go with the funny name for the fort, but the funny the, the name was too funny. <laughs> the name was too funny, so we uh, we kind of we kind of decided to go with it. I I think I'm leaning leather. I, th I think we're gonna do fifteen leather trousers. I'm curious, who's my best leather worker? All it rain is a novice leather worker. We'll, we'll give you this job for the time being. But is currently making cabinets. So we'll let them make a granite cabinet and then they'll go work on these jeans. All right, well, oh boy. Well, at the very least, this dwarf is already back, I think. Yes. How did the report go? We demanded tribute. It was rejected. That is fine. And the reason I say that is fine is now hopefully we'll have enough contact with them that they will not, you know, um, kill us. <laughs> Hmm. What's my opinion on DF hack? I'm using it. Why does everybody want to know what opinion on DF hack? Um, what I'll say is I use it like a command line to debug the game. I don't like the majority of the automations the game has, and I don't find the UI additions necessary. And very counterproductive when trying to teach people the game. So I find it to be a bit counterproductive. I need to get this door closed now. So, who's coming to pull the lever? Go, dwarf. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the burrow. Go, 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 go. Well, actually, where are the invaders? No, may maybe I don't close the door. We all... Okay. Never mind, none, none of these have cages. 
Okay, I, I, I do need to close the door. Get cages into that. Let's also cancel this. Um, and go, where the heck? Well, actually, I've just had too many jobs, probably. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to planters. I'm going to say only selected do this. And I'm going to give it to three dwarves that don't have other specified jobs. Except for you, because you're a great planter. And I want my best planter to be planting. Let's also put Raoul on there. Because currently I I need more... I, my, my dwarves have too many jobs. Um, I'm also going to pause collecting webs. You feel it offers too much? I mean, I basically disable literally everything in DF hack. Um, I used to, I was using the search functions for a bit. I basically use it so I can quick save and like debug the game. I mean, I, I describe it sort of like, you know, some people like to play the game more as a sandbox. And if you like to do that, then DF hack is great. Um, some people prefer the building tools. Well, I think they're nice. Like I, I, I do honestly think that the like, you know, build planning mode and stuff are, is, is useful. Um, I personally would prefer to not use them and then complain that they should add them to the main game. And the reason I feel that way is for the, like, when I was talking with uh, Putnam a little while ago in one of the videos I uploaded with her, she says that, um, oh no, that I, here, here's another thing. Uh, in vanilla, vanilla, you can do multi-layer burrows, so I don't even use that feature anymore. Uh, but I do like the auto biting. I wish we had flood fill in vanilla. That's the one thing I miss. Um... But uh, talking with Putnam, she says that basically it's difficult for them to prioritize certain things because it's like if they just add features that are already in DF hack, then there will be a certain portion of the audience that says, oh, we don't need that because that's already in DF hack. Why are you wasting your time developing features that DF hack has already done? And that is actually a portion of the community that feels that way. And so I personally, while I use DF hack because it is, it's a useful thing to have, I don't use any of its automated features because I don't want more of the community to feel that way, you know? And at the end of the day, people who, a lot of people who use DF hack think that they are the majority of the DF player base, which uh, statistics wise isn't true. Um, because if I just go to Steam and like look at Dwarf Fortress player base, there's 954 people playing Dwarf Fortress right now. It's pretty early in the day on a Thursday. That'll probably go up to like, I don't know, 1100 or something. And um, how many of them are using DF hack right now? Uh, 281. So a pretty small percentage of the Dwarf Fortress player base is using DF hack, at least on Steam. In older versions of the game, I, I would agree it's probably the vast majority because most people just use uh, like the, 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 um, the starter pack and don't even think about it. Uh-oh. Um... Hmm. Well, we found the rat men. Rodent men blow gunner. I was waiting for that to happen. So they shouldn't have a way into my fortress. Shouldn't. I may just lock this door. I think I'm just going to lock this door. Be safe. It's a rat pack. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely flood these caverns with lava. It's kind of my plan. And where are they? Up there? Yeah, it's doable. This neighborhood is dangerous. <laughs> Roll up the windows, boys. This neighborhood's dangerous. Is it now? I played Nox Oxygen Not Included. I didn't like it. Um, I put about 30 hours into the like first two early access patches and it never it never really grabbed me. I tried it again when it released and I didn't it didn't grab me at all. Um, it's just not really for me. I I like colony builders, but I like colony builders where the characters in your colony, I guess in in Dwarf Fortress's case, your your dwarves in um in uh, oxygen not includes, included case included's case it would be the dupes i like it when they're characters that you want to protect and keep alive 
but in oxygen not included, I find that they're they're a resource to to be exploited, and I don't enjoy that. It's it's not really. It's not why I like that. I am also waiting. I will I will play Manor Lords. I will tr I will give Manor Lords a good shot because I wasn't that impressed by the demo, but I did enjoy the demo. Apparently I'm... Oh, I see. I did my math wrong on the aluminum. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll play Manor Lords. I'm also going to do a thing real quick with my... <laughs> wow, they just finished it. Um, meal. Let's say make lavish meal. And I will just repeat this seasonally. And we're just going to... Oops. No, not three shops max. I will do... 25... 22 meals a season. We'll just do that because that should... Uh, well, it's actually probably too much. Let's do 12 meals a season because, like, you, you get more than one meal per... So... I ever play Banished? I played Banished when it came out, um, or around uh, within six months of it coming out, and I liked it back then. And I went tried going back to it at a, in about 2016, 2017, something like that, and absolutely hated it. And tried modding it, and was like, no, not not for me. Like, I think Banished is a really important game because Banished basic basically proved to an industry that a genre wasn't dead, at least in like the modern market, right? Um, Mjork, thank you very much for that subscription. Also, by the way, thank you very much for the second subscription of the day. Chat room, if, if you want to support this channel and you happen to have a Prime sub, check to see if it's up because it's a very good way to give streamers some money at absolutely no, no cost to you and get yourself ad-free viewing, just like Mjork just did. Thanks for the third month. Welcome back. Um, but yeah, Banished was, I think, a very interesting and important game. Um, but, I mean, I can make, I can make 13 meals. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that, uh... I think that Banished is a very good game for its time, but the structure of that game has just been done better by so many other games. Was Banished a Kickstarter? I can't remember. I, I, if it was, I never kickstarted it. I just remember it coming out on Steam. I don't think so. No. There's a comic book called Banished. It was not. It was on Greenlight, though. Remember Greenlight? I remember Greenlight. I used to... Actually, fun fact. Something that I miss about Greenlight. I used to do streams uh, where I would just go through Greenlight. Greenlight was a feature that Steam had where you would... Where you would, um, what's the word? How many enemies is there? Okay, so I'm going to leave this burrow on and unforbid this once these get rehooked or once these are filled. But anyway, Steam Greenlight was how you used to get games on Steam. Nowadays, you just uh, pay Steam 100 bucks and your game is on Steam. But in the good old days, if you wanted to get your game on Steam, you would uh, like go to go go to you would go to Steam. You would I think pay some money. I think it was 100 bucks actually. Um, and uh, then your game would go on to Steam Greenlight. Steam Greenlight was a voting platform, kind of looked like old Reddit actually. Um, and you would vote games yes or no based on your aesthetic uh, appearance of them. Um, and games would get voted up and games would get voted down. And then at once a month, Steam would then go in and let games that were deemed good enough by the Greenlight voters um, to be released. I, I remember going through Steam Greenlight on stream, actually. We would do it like once a week. I would spend like an hour just going through games. We'd watch trailers and play them or not, or play them if they had demos, but, um, and then vote yes or no. It was actually a lot of fun. I missed doing that. 
I don't really use it much. <laughs> it's it's a the only time I really use it, Frisco, is when there is a waterfall. I will set the surface edges of the waterfall where right where it's going over, where it gets shallow enough that dwarves would walk through and like die. Um, those areas I set those to be uh, red and the lowest priority, and then I set my bridge right next to it as the highest priority, basically to make them route through the bridge instead of through the waterfall. But outside of that, I don't really use it. Um, I will sometimes use it like around shallow water, basically, is where I use it. Or like minecart routes. Um, but that's about it. I remember attending an event for indie devs about Greenlight at Valve's office. Really? Wow. Yeah. I, I think the most notable game that I remember voting up on Greenlight, saying, yeah, this should release on Steam, was uh, World of Horror which finally eventually released. I, I, there was definitely others too that I remembered seeing in there. Uh, I want to say I remember voting for Space Pirates and Zombies to get onto Steam. Uh, Barony, I remember. Rimworld, I remember, went through Greenlight. Um, I don't know. A lot of games went through Greenlight. It was a neat era. Yeah, I don't use the traffic route system a ton. I use it a bit. But uh, anyway, our plan for today is to get lava up to um, up to the layer above is my plan. But maybe also just spread lava around in this cavern layer so that we can take over this. Spaz was a great game. Was that second one any good? Because I remember, I know they released a sequel. The interesting thing to me about Spaz is the guy who made it went to the same high school as one of my best friends growing up. Like he's, the, like the the developer of that game is, I'm not, now they're making Clan Folk, same studio. Um, but like the developer of that game was like mutual friends with people I knew growing up, which is just kind of a, I don't know, kind of neat. Yes, actually, as well, that as well. Frozen water, frozen rivers is another good use for the traffic system. Penrose, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. That gives me about $2.50 every time somebody does that. And you get ad-free viewing for the next 30 days. And also emotes. So enjoy the emotes and the ad-free viewing. YMMV. What's YMMV? Your meat math vanishes. What? <laughs> have a fleet, you have a mothership? I never played the sequel, so. But, um. I do need to play a little bit of their. Uh, a, a little bit more clan folk at some point. Mileage may vary. Ah! Got it. <laughs> Laya, hello. Before you ask, yes, your dwarf is still alive. Um, what do I want to do down here? Because if this is going to be clothing. Kind of should get cloth moved down there. Load cage trap. That's what I like to see. Let's see where you're loading these. Okay, so we're loading these bottom ones. Make some more wooden cages. But I'm going to make them all out of tower caps. But they're easy to sort. Your kilometerage may vary. <laughs> Your meters may vary. There you go. Thank you for the translation. I understand perfectly now. Um, I'm going to make a little metal rings stockpile. Because we were making metal rings. And this is going to be for... Basically just those tiny little crafts that we've been making. Specifically the aluminum ones. And the reason I'm going to do this... And actually, you know what? Let's also put goblets into this stockpile. Which I think are also in finished goods. Yes. Also made of aluminum. And the reason we're doing this is because I would like to have a stockpile where the dwarves could claim their rings easily. And also let's just put the, you know, the goblets there. We don't need any uh, bins in this stockpile but it'll stop them from clogging up these and they can just go to where they belong. Got dwarves eating what you eating. 
chopped elephant liver stew. Ooh. Would you, would you look at that? And also, um, it's a pretty decent little stew. This is a chopped elephant liver stew. The ingredients are minced prepared elephant spleen, well minced elephant sweetbread, and minced chopped elephant liver. Delicious. Dwarfs are living for years off of all these elephants. Sounds like sausage to me. Why aluminum? Because it's the only metal I've found, and I wanted to make my dwarves some, like, items that they could have. <laughs> so, you know. Takes guts to stomach that? It's Dorfus food. Don't worry too much about Dorfus food. Hey, I mean, there's also elephant meat. 123 of it. So eventually we'll get to the good stuff, you know? Elephant steaks. But I would like to see these dwarves claiming some of these bits of... Some of these rings, you know? And I, I haven't really seen that much just yet. It's like, come on. Picking up equipment. What are you picking up? Did you, oh, you just went and grabbed new pants. Look at that. Look at that. Content after putting on a well-crafted item. Cybrek. Happy days for Cybrek. We've finished our yarn socks and our yarn shoes. Seems like there's coyotes on the surface. Oh, damn. I mean, and they're now dead coyotes, but... <laughs> Did the coyote actually get some hits in? Um... Wow, it did. The coyote actually bit the um, eye of steelsmiths and was shaking it around by the head. That's kind of, that's intense. Creed, thank you very much for, okay, hold on a second. Uh, let, let me just do some real quick math. Um, okay, so up until this point in the stream, I've had uh, a resub from Dirschland and two prime subs. Uh, that's five. So you've just more than doubled today's revenue. Thank you very much for that. Greatly appreciated, mate. So this guy, like, got bit and then, like, heavily damaged. Considering he's already killed a honey badger and an elephant, um, the coyote, of all things, was the one that was able to get damage in on, in on him. There's another coyote running around. Darius, thank you for doing it again. With another pack of five subscriptions. Appreciate you, man. Greatly. And no banner flags wants you to post beers, chat. Also, um, if anybody's wondering why dwarf redemptions are off, it's because I will turn them on when we... Also, hold on. Is this your second time back? Yeah, this is your second time back, Kel Ink Tower. This was one of the uh, necromancer experiments that attacked us the first time. So they've attacked us now twice. I need to put this into the burrow. So they can go reload these. Uh, everybody's still alive. We've had no deaths in the fort just yet. Uh, you're also very ha happy. You're also in love with Gazoom. Still. Uh, you would like to practice a martial art. Which means maybe it's time to do another training sesh. But uh, I, I would like some more of these crafts to be done first. So once this, once these crafts are looking done, specifically like the green glass tubes and all that jazz, when that stuff's starting to look done, then we will uh, make a new, or do a new training session. Let's see if I can uh, play some more cabinets. Also got cabinets to put into people's bedrooms still, because people are getting new pants now. Can do. You're still a leader. Yep, you are still a leader. So we've only had one migrant wave. Um, and that's not optimal. It's a very slow process because of that. But um, you know, we are trying to make our like trying to get by, even though we have no um contact with the mountain home. We've had no contact with the mountain home yet because. Both falls, we've been under. We've either been under siege or they just didn't show up. My suspicion is that they didn't show up because of uh, lack, uh, or not lack, but uh, because of the time that we started uh, the fort. We started at a weird time of year. If you don't start in the first of spring, it can sometimes I find screw up your first migrant wave. What are you hauling? I'm curious. Probably the goblets. Forest dwarf breeding. It's a little dark, man. There's a troglodyte in my fort. That implies that it got in somewhere.
Where did it get in? Maybe it got in before I finished sealing everything. Or it came in through here. I think I'm going to take matters into my own dwarfs. And start doing granite walls around this. Because I gotta be cautious. Because if I'm not cautious, there is a very real possibility that we could get attacked by something, and I don't want that. Actually, probably the better way to do this. Hmm. Would be to dig all the way up to the edge of this and then just build floors all the way across. Probably the better way to do this. Yeah, probably the better way to do it. Probably going to end up with something in a cage pretty soon. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, that's mildly scary. Um. What the hell's resurrecting you? Uh, <laughs> hmm. Also, we have floating guts in the basement. Don't see those very often. A transparent amorphous monster that lives underground. In, uh, it is small in size, and it is found crawling across the cavern floor. Its organs appear to be floating inside of its body. Yeah, no, there's definitely necromancers lurking. Trading's going to be interesting. How, how are the cages doing here? One, two, okay. I'm going to try opening up the... Burrow, and see if I can just catch some stuff in here. Dwarf's coming to pull the lever. But yeah, chat room, thank you very much, seriously, for those gifted subs, as well as the, uh, all of the follows we've had, because we've had a couple follows again today. Are there no fish in cave water? Um, you can absolutely get fish from cave water, yes, but I don't need them. <laughs> Dwarves need variety in food, and variety includes different types of organs. We butchered a whole bunch of elephants. I I don't need the added fish. Like, would it be nice? Certainly. Do I need it? No, not really. Did that say Gorlack? No, it's a cow. Oh, no, it is a Gorlack. The lower cavern Gorlack. Hey, bud. What's up? Hello, Follow. You are still alive. Just a heads up. And your child is also alive. You're quite happy. And um, I assume your child is quite happy. Domesticate the guts? I wonder if they are domesticatable. I don't know what their breeding process is like, which is a strange thing to say, but... I would also like to get rid of these giant Kias, which I would think would be flying in, but. This is actually just a skeleton. Hmm. I think actually the smarter thing to do is to just start training up crossbow dwarves and just plan for the worst that I'll have to do this manually. I think that's probably what I need to do. Uh, we have in we have in fact acquired boots with the fur. Well, <laughs> I was able to catch the troglodyte, so I guess that's a benefit. Uh oh, where are you flying? Lock the door, and then it flew over here. Unlock the door again. If 
I unpause the game. Double check. Where they are. They really aren't going to want to path into my fort. They are just sieging me, so. There's only two of them. What the undead key is. Oh. So, um, the coyotes have gotten more intense in their stature and are now giant variety of coyote. So maybe we can catch some giant puppers and some undead kias. But that's kind of cool. I find almost everything about the concept of a giant coyote kind of terrifying. What else did we catch? Fucking two troglodytes? Are you for real? <laughs> we caught two troglodytes. Well, great. I feel like the best thing to do with these troglodytes is to use them as bait. Like, place them up here and then release them. Let's, um... Do something kind of ballsy here. I have four troglodytes in cages, apparently. <laughs> four of them! Um, there's, like, some 800 animals in the game. The The thing that you, you, you'll be freaked out about is wait until you start playing adventure mode and you find night trolls, boogeymen, and all those crazy critters. Because there are some significantly crazier animals and or fortress that you'll never see in fortress mode. A lot of the really cool original dwarf fortress creatures are not in fortress mode at all. Okay, so where are these troglodytes coming from? Well, obviously they're in my fort. It's just a matter of how did they get into my fort. <laughs> get out. Troglin. Let's call you... Frog one, just so I know which one to remove from here. There you are. Get outside. So they're probably just trying to leave the map. Yep. But this will hopefully be a decent enough way of getting... Oof. What discovered? Oh, more, more, more crundles, and more rodent men. There is a war of rodent men and crundles in the basement right now. An absolute war. Over here, he has a sword. Yep, and troglodytes sending in trog force one. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this can be, we'll just call you Tro- uh, Troglin! Who can now be removed from this bur from this thing. Be free, you moron! Oh my god. Such friggin' giant wolverine. The surface of this map is actually kind of terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's actively- it's scaring me a little bit. Um, comes another trog. I like that name that you said earlier, so... Trog Force One. What's up, Lanix? It's good to see you. Glad you were able to catch the stream as well. Get out there, troglet! There goes the little troglet. This can be... Uh, Troggles McGee. 
and troggles can get released right about you. Go, you moron. Be gone, did. Drone marks. <laughs> It doesn't work as well as I think it does on paper, but that's pretty funny. So last gear bill has killed one coyote. Shockquakes. It's killed a giant key and a giant fly. What those undead kias? Okay, so there's still two giant undead kias on the map. One of them's like literally right there. I think it's chasing that giant wolverine. Whoop. Okay. Got one of the giant Kias. That we can just throw into the volcano, I think. Or a giant undead Kias, rather. Yeah, no, they, they move quick. Please don't be a gonna say don't don't be an idiot and please leave the map on the right side are there more trogs god damn it <laughs> <laughs> um hold on a second where are they all coming from what the shit man the fact that there's just like troglodytes getting into my caverns makes me scared because it, it means that there's an there's access They've got to be coming from the water, right? Like, they've got to just be climbing in, right? Like a trog zoo? There's no purpose to that. I can't butcher them. I can't train them. I can't tame them for any practical purpose. They're swimming across the border. Yeah. <laughs> These goddamn troglodytes that aren't paying rent. They're clogging up my cage traps. Genuine threat to society. Can you tame trogs? No, because they're semi-intelligent. Trog do what troglet don't. I, I just need to give them some sort of nickname so I can remove them. Yep, be going. You, you don't need to stand there, mate. You can leave. I haven't named one Trogdor yet. Uh, gremlins are the only tameable semi-intelligent animal because they are a... Sen they Or rather, intelligent animal. And the reason... Um, basically, if they have the tags of can learn and can speak, dwarves will not tame or train them because it breaks the dwarven code of ethics of... Um, what's the word? Uh, slavery. This one's just like stuck. Where are you going? Weird. But yeah, so the reason you can tame gremlins is because gremlins are pretending to be a pet. That's the reason you can tame gremlins. Although, being able to tame gremlins is sort of a bug. <laughs> sort of a bug. Sort of kind of maybe a bug. But that's a long story. Once I had like 30 to 40 trogs in iron cages, you don't know what to do with them. So you would, you tried to sell them. It was fun. I just usually release them off the edge of the map. Something you could do is put them all into one cage because there's no limit to the number of troglodytes you can put into a cage. Wow, that. Dorf, you are brave. What did you just go out there to haul? It doesn't say that you're hauling anything. Why were you outside? It's a very brave, dumb dwarf. Trogs 
Try exploring during sieges. I mean, I'm kind of tempted to do that. Actually, why don't we do that? <laughs> Let's just put a cage right here. The one with gems on it. And then I'm just going to start putting them all into the same cage. Yeah, you can. And if they have babies, they'll also be born in the same cage. Or maybe I should put them just out I should put them just outside. <laughs> and just cuz they'll just try to leave the map. That's that's their whole goal is to just leave the map, right? So I'm actually going to put this cage up here. I'm going to put this into the burrow very carefully. And we will have a surprise truck explosion as our defensive mech. <laughs> here comes dwarf. Troglite's stuck here. So any available trogs will just be put into this cage. No, <laughs> there are no available trogs. Well, they're probably all about to go get stuck in cage traps. Although they're just kind of like scared and standing there, so. Oh shit, there's a plant cave ogre in the basement? Oh, this is a cool basement. Look at this guy. Well, look at him die. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at him die. It's like an yeah, an entire an entire faction of troglodytes. You know what? I'm just going to close this bridge for right now cuz the pathing ain't changing. I do apparently have a troglodyte in a cage currently, which hmm. Do I have to put them into into a pasture before I can put them into a cage? I know that like I should be able to do that. Odd. Well, it's it's named number two because it was. I, I was giving them nicknames briefly, just so I knew which ones to remove from the location. Maybe I can't. Maybe they have to be tame. Oh, no, there it is. Right, duh, because its name is 2, not Troglodyte. <laughs> I'm smart. Don't worry about me. This is why I don't like nicknaming animals that aren't tamed. Because this happens. Trog problems? Troglums. I don't know what to do with that giant Kia skeleton. We'll figure it out. New fort? Yeah, we started the new fort yesterday. So it's uh, day two of new fort. I don't know why these ones are just standing here. I'm kind of petrified about something. I guess we just have trogs that live there now. <laughs> and each one is a problem? Yeah. There you go. So there's now one in there. So if I catch these other troglodytes, then we could theoretically start hooking them up. I guess they left. I... <laughs> Bye, troggy. Wow, just made it out. He's like exploring the water for the first time. He's like, what is this? Oh my God, it's a dead body. It's an elephant's dead body. Guard drugs? Sure, yeah. They have a thousand yard stare from the... No, it's the Crundles that are at war with the rodents. But there's coyotes out here, so... Well, they tell it means the undead, the undead, the flying undead Kia. Yeah, right. We are in an ad break, so I will pause until the ad break is done.
Best you can do is Undead Horrors from Beyond. God damn. I mean, that's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I will take that if that's an option that's given to me. All right, so let's see how many trogs are on the map now. <laughs> well, the good news is the siege appears to be over. Um, as for the undead, there is this one undead ske Kia skeleton. Fortunately, it's just a skeleton. Skeletons are not that scary, and it seems to be moving pretty slowly. So, those are all good news. It means we can just kind of walk around it. Um, I will go pull this lever. And we already have more troglodytes that I can load up, I think. Or are about to have more troglodytes that I can load up. Apple bottom jeans, yep. We also have boots with the fur, LMT. They have uh, uh, yarn boots, specifically. Let a dwarf open that. And now let's see how many more trogs we can get in here. Whoopsies. As they become available. Not any right now. But I'm sure we'll have some in the future. All right. Well, what I think I'm going to do is see what everybody's doing. We're all pen pasturing our alpacas because the alpacas keep getting scared by the freaking troglodytes, man. Okay. So I think... Next mode of operation is let's actually go back to old plan and block off these, even though I've kind of decided, I dis I had decided not to. The reason we're going to block off these and use the other entrance is these freaking troglodytes keep scaring my livestock, <laughs> and they keep trying to run away, which is real annoying. Um, so we're just going to block this off. I'm just going to do that, just so that the troglodytes stop coming in this way. doesn't really matter because we'll still be able to move around the caverns. I just, I want them to go through this way. Oh, wait, they all did. <laughs> Look at that. What's this? Uh, naked mole dog. Okay. Could probably just add the naked mole dogs. Um, actually, naked mole dogs are tameable, aren't, trainable, aren't they? Yes, they are. We're going to train those and eat those. Naked mole dog lunch. Excellent. Let's actually see what else do I have in cages. Yeah, just the one troglodyte. All right, well, we can do that. <laughs> Old pup was looking at her. I also have this naked mole dog. Good lord, where are they coming from? Like genuinely. Ugh. So we'll have to focus on this. All right, so I didn't want to do this, but rock blocks it is. Um. 20, I guess. Make granite rock blocks. And let's just make a stockpile for granite right here. I don't know why I'm like insisting on making all of my walls out of granite, but I am, so we're going to stick to it. Mole rats cannot dig through the earth. Am I playing with hard settings on? No, just a normal map. I only turn on hard settings if I find the game boring, because all hard settings do is it makes raids more frequent. I think sieges have been fine. It's like, hard settings isn't really hard, per se. It just makes certain events more frequent. I need to move all this stuff underground anyway. Let's go down here. Um... Let's do a cloth stockpile up here. Well, actually, yeah, we'll just do cloth stockpiles. Uh, cloth. There we go. Put all that down there. And before this becomes something I want to get rid of, we'll remove bins. I feel like bins should be defaulted to zero because there are very few there are some stockpiles I want bins on, but they're pretty few and far between. So the caves on below us seem to have uh, giant bats, blind cave ogres, mineras, and lots of rodent people. So it's a very active cavern. That's exciting. Good morning. 
Nameless and Martin, hello. Hello, afternoon for Nameless. You know, I could actually go up here and plug this. I could do that. Then I wouldn't have that as a source of possible power. <laughs> Who did not understand time zones. That seems like an education issue. <laughs> like, kind of a major education issue. You know, I'll be honest, when I was little, I understood the concept of time zones, but I don't think I fully understood time zones until I started playing multiplayer games with people. Like, until I started trying to coordinate, like, playing Counter-Strike with people I knew online. I don't think I fully understood time zones until then. Which I think makes some sense, actually. Let's just shear and spin. Animal thread. But <laughs> like time zones, man. Yeah, right. Of course, they're just time. They're they're like time zones. Where is that? Uh... I think that undead Kia is just like far enough away that it's kind of a non-issue. Got another one. I need to set up train. I've got two trained naked mole dogs, which we're going to eat. There we go. 20 granite blocks. We just need to get these pieces done. Actually, I could do this on higher priority to get it done quicker. Because they'll prioritize other things above mining. Got way too many pen pasture zones going on right now. So I, I need to move the location of my pack alpacas. And I did say I was going to let the dwarves train some wrestling for a bit, but... But yeah, I think depending on where you're born, it, I, I could understand why somebody would be confused by uh, time zones. I mean, it's it's not an easy concept to wrap your noggin around. Certainly not the most complicated concept, but... I love you decorate... How they're, this dwarf is decorating the damaged socks with bones. That's very funny to me. <laughs> He's literally decorating old damaged socks with, with bones. That's very amusing. Well... Just got another naked mole dog. Naked mole dog leather all the day. All day. All day long. You want to know how many you have nameless exclamation point tickets? Uh, Falsnor, hello. I'm doing okay. I kind of was super groggy when I woke up this morning, but I, I'm coming through it. Feeling a little bit better. But now that I'm getting through it, we're... You know, doing all right. Doing all right. I think I need a single dedicated planter. I think that Joker of Spades is going to be my my chef and planter, and that is it. So wherever Joker is, who's currently preparing lavish meals. Um, hmm. Actually, maybe not. Maybe I need somebody else. Okay, we're. I'm gonna need two. Hmm. Two planters, probably. Or another planter, actually. We'll just add Creed into the list of planters. I have a second troglodyte that I can add to this cage. My trog army begins. Crypt fear. Funk NDA, thank you very much for the eighth month. Welcome back, dude. Hope you've been well. It's good to see you. 
Is it, would it be possible to get a quick tour of the new fort? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's very small. So I could do it in like two screens. I just need to zoom out a bit. Um, the surface area is a freshwater lake, which is untamed wilds. The surface is also untamed wilds. And the underground area is also also untamed wilds. Um, because we're on a lake, we're not going to get visitors, but it, the last time I played on a lake, we still got traders. We didn't get traders the first season because, uh, we, we embarked at a weird time. Then we didn't get traders the second season because, well, um, and we didn't get traders the second season, uh, for, for like one major issue, um. God, Reddit is not letting me get to reddit.old. Well, I guess I'll just close that for right now. Um, so we haven't found any iron yet. Supposedly this map has iron on it. We have found some aluminum. Uh, we have lava and glass. You missed the siege broke? Yeah, they they just, they eventually killed enough like coyotes that they ran out of ammo. Yeah, makes me sad. I need, like, I need a proper replacement for Reddit that isn't Reddit. Basically, I need to find little forums for every single one of my interests that I use Reddit for. <laughs> because, believe it or not, I, I have a lot of interests, uh, and I and I Reddit kind of covered all those for a while. So this is a cavern fort, which is in this cavern. We are in the process of finalizing sealing up of the cavern. Um, the actual fortress itself is in the cavern, uh, in this little area right here. That's our temple. That's our tavern. It's a two-layer tavern. That's our butchery shop. Our kitchens and farming stuff is out here. And um, we kind of have a bit of a troglodyte infestation right now, but that's okay. And then bedrooms are kind of scattered outside. Um, I want to stick with this aesthetic, and I want to keep building this fort like this. The problem that I'm running into right now is we haven't gotten any migrants because we're very far away from our faction, and our faction is currently getting absolutely obliterated by the faction I was playing previously, uh, which is, you know, not great. So that's the majority of the fortress. Uh, the surface is this lake, which is untamed wilds. Um, and the flat area out here is also untamed wilds. So there's a lot of untamed wilds up here. So we have, we're being very cautious about the surface. Uh, there is an undead Kia, because something resurrected it. I'm not sure what. Um, maybe a stealth necromancer? I, I don't actually know. Um, but there is an undead Kia up here, which is giant Kia, which is kind of terrifying. If I go to the overworld, we are all the way down here. Uh, we're right next to this Necromancer Tower, which is where Necromancer experiments keep coming from. And uh, the faction that I was playing as previously is up here, and they're all the red one. So the the Veiled Halls was my last faction, and this is my previous fort, which had a population of 1,000, but now is a population of 750. So they're at war with somebody. Um, these are This is my faction, the Rock of Lobsters, and we are hoping to be able to, um, you know... Uh, fight back against that, but I guess I need to actually start getting migrants for that to happen. Um, well, see, necromancers can stealth onto your map, similar to the way, like, uh, goblins do to, like, try and steal your children. So because they can do that, that's likely what they're doing. They're trying, except instead of trying to steal kids, um, they try and steal your bodies. They, they, they want bodies. They want corpses. Um because corpses are what they need to expand their army, so. It's 24. 25, 20, oh, that's false. I needed floors at the end there. What I think I'm just gonna do is, I'm just gonna see if I can cave in. Like, Maybe here and here. Yep, I can. Yep, I can. Okay, so let's just do that. This, that, this. Um, this upper layer. Be all the way around here. Hit this, hit these, or remove those, I guess. Go across the top, go across the top. 
I could just dig up to here from over here somewhere. So I don't need to have weird tu weird tunnels going everywhere. Um, okay, so those are both done. Then what I need is I need stairs going down, stairs going up, and what do you not think is true about necromancers in general that they show up and steal your bodies? I, it is absolutely true. What? <laughs> like what? 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 What do you think is not true about necromancers in general? I will dispel your. Your, your disbeliefs. Thank you, Gade Ranos. I, I'm really happy with, like, even if we don't start, if, like, if this faction is really just dying and we don't get any migrants, then it's fine. But they represent capitalism. I mean, the beauty of art is everybody interprets it differently, right? So if one person um, interprets the concept and idea of necromancy as capitalism, that's one person's interpretation of art. Art being, you know, the storytelling of the fanciful creatures known as necromancers, right? Most people are wrong in their interpretation. Fair enough. Stingray, thank you very much for the prime. Appreciate you, mate. Three months. Doing all right. I'm doing okay. Slept a little funky, but... Going all right aside from that. This is also another area I'd like to populate very densely. I, I love, I, I, I've wanted to build a fort like this for a while where I'm just building little towns all over a cavern layer, and I think I can finally do it with this one. So I'm super keen. This will be fun. No, I mean, the storytelling is art, right? Storytelling of necromancy, I would say, is art. How's the new fort going? Pretty well so far, uh, aside from lack of migrants. Like the only issue we've had so far. But uh, that's because we got sieged at a really bad time. And the first year we embarked at a weird time of year and that can sometimes impact your, mig your first migrant wave. So I did get two migrant waves, but they were both very small and I haven't been able to trade yet. So fingers crossed we're able to trade soon. Well, here's the thing. Necromancers can also be vampires. They can also be undead. Okay, so let's do some other nice clothing. Let's say yarn robe. Let's make 15 yarn robes. And let's make silk bags. And let's make 20 of those, just for seeds and for sand collection. Um, probably, Master Spike. I mean, the, the thing about, like, the nec I mean, you probably know this, but, like, the Necromancer experiments can integrate into societies just like any other character, right? Like, they have free will, and they can leave factions and join new factions just like any character in Dwarf Fort, so... Where did you come from? There's a giant cave swallow flying around. So I've got another naked mole dog in a cage. We're gonna, uh-oh. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna turn on the burrow real quick. It's thinking about, there we go. Plaza. Give me excellent. I wonder if, um... Hmm. Chad, should I risk trying to put the undead giant Kias into the cage with the troglodytes? Or... Should I just... You know... Yeah, no. Nah. I'm just gonna volcano them. I'm just gonna volcano them. That's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna volcano them. Well, not, maybe not volcano them, but like throw them into lava. Cause honestly, I think that's a safer solution. 
It's like, what's the safer solution? Throw them in the volcano. Cajun all? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Um, no. The Kia skeletons cannot fly. It says on their thingy that... Well, one of them can. The, the other one can't. The one I just caught can't. Um, its ability to fly was lost. This one's going for, um... My damning project up here, which appears to be uh, going rather well so far. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to put a support right there. I'm going to put a support right there. I'm going to go up to here. I'm going to grab a lever, plop it up. Um, then we're gonna do this and this. This. Go do that first. Since. Because I need those to be constructed before I can actually completely remove these or they will collapse. So the idea is that these three fall down here and just block this river off. Uh, this one I can just floor off, I guess. And then we just need to fill all this in with flooring all the way up to the areas where they fall. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that you just learn with time, right? It's like anything. It's just something you'll get better at. Strainic and Moldog has forgotten her training. Well... I also caught a giant cave swallow, which is good. That'll be delicious. They're trying to make a necromancer resurrection chamber. Are dwarves scared of blind forgotten beasts? Dwarves are very scared of forgotten beasts. You just need something that is like either a wild animal or hostile enough that is hostile enough that dwarves will go, will think that they are in combat. But yes, uh, a forgotten beast is definitely terrifying for a dwarf. We're going to go down here and connect these. Go here, connect these. <coughs> and then I can do this all with one blast, but I'm going to wait for these boulders to be out. I'm also going to probably wait for this construction project to be done. I don't want to accidentally, like, crush a dwarf with this because my population is low enough that dwarves are very valuable right now. Actually, let's, let's do this one last. And we attracted no migrants, because I haven't traded. We're also weaving a lot of yarn, tanning hides, making robes. Do you have a robe? Hey, look at that. You got a ring. How are you feeling? You wanna fight? You want to be able, you wanna be away from fan I, I need to get these dwarves doing a little bit more training. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna add the dwarves that are not in the squad into the squads again. I think I'm gonna wait until I have this construction project done and then we're gonna get the dwarves training for a season. Well, they might be just trying to resurrect anything with necromancers, but I made a video on how to like very consistently resurrect stuff using necromancers not too long ago, just a couple days ago. So that might be a useful starting point for you. I think I have a third troglodyte in a cage. Yes, I do. There we go. Look at that. Stacking them trucks. 
<laughs> this is not going to stop being funny for a while. Yeah, English is a funny language, isn't it? Well, now... It's Trogtris. <laughs> Thank you, Telen. I will say, the DF Ideas series is something that, like, I don't get to make videos on very frequently. But, um, if Troglodytes end up being even remotely useful as a defense mechanism, even if it's just, like, distracting the enemy kind of thing, I'm probably gonna make an Ideas video out of that. Because Ideas is a really fun series to make. Start over from the beginning. All right, everybody. We're starting over because uh, Ryo Shincat just got here and uh, they asked nicely. <laughs> How you doing, Ryo? How's things? All the way up there. You guys can watch this dwarf who's constructing building. And I'm going to go put the final little bit of coffee top up on, into my coffee cup. I will be right back. Staff acquired. First, there you go. We've had like three different people be first today. <laughs> and a, one, I've got only Arende is the dwarf that's been attending meetings. Only Arende. Can prisoners uh, break chains? No. But um, sometimes dwarves can um, fail to chain up a prisoner. Um, and enemies or things that are tantruming can sometimes topple items. Oh, wow. There's more, more troglodytes to add to the pile. This isn't getting silly yet. This is getting extremely silly. <laughs> like, extremely silly. The next time we get attacked, there's suddenly just going to be like 40 troglodytes on the surface. <laughs> that is very goofy. Very, very, very goofy. Making robes and bags. Um, the nice thing about the breeding is if they multiply, they the, their spawn will simply just be in the troglodyte cages already. So it's actually not that bad. All right, so I don't want to lose these boulders. So I have a plan, but I'm going to wait until the ad break is done. At least it's not ogres. I kind of wish it was ogres. Because if I had a bunch of ogres in traps, then that would mean I'd be very likely uh, able to actually fend off enemy sieges with them. What's happening? I am slowly uh, corralling every troglodyte in the vicinity and putting them into cages and then connecting it to a lever so that when the next army attacks me, I can just laugh hysterically while a wall of troglodytes tries to fight them. So... That's that's what's happening. <laughs> it's never ogres. That that is true. It would never be ogre at that point. And the, that fortress would have a lot of layers. I don't think this fortress has enough layers to have ogres. 
We do have blind cave trolls, though. Cave leak and ho slash hole. You mean the one that the troglodytes are getting in through? Is that what you're asking about? Because um, I'm plugging it right now. I mean, I know where it is. It's this. I was just not expecting troglodytes to literally climb the walls into the fort, which is, I, I'm assuming, what they're doing. I saw something earlier, and I thought that you might know more about this than me. Giving socks and mittens under their armor for military have impact on how they form perform. So, military and dwarf fortress is extremely opaque. Um, the more weight that they are carrying, the, the more tired they get. Uh, the weight of socks is negligible, but yes, it can impact how quickly they get tired. Um, so, it's, it's very... It's not exactly cut and dry, to put it simply. So I'm going to just start placing granite block, not walls, floors, 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 granite block floors up here. And the reason I'm going to do that is it's going to just get these granite boulders out of here. Shouldn't take too many. But the idea is that I just have floors and I can just deconstruct and get the boulders back and then not worry about it too much. But um, I'll say this. If you are a, if you consider yourself to be a new-ish player to Dwarf Fortress, don't worry too much about what your dwarves are wearing for armor. As long as they have armor, mostly, you're doing good. Because that's all that they really need. Dwarves are the strongest military faction in the game because of their ability to go into martial trance, which removes all tiredness and exhaustion from them. So, because dwarves have the ability to, to go into martial trances, they are far and away the most overpowered, like, humanoid, intelligent creatures in the game in a military sense. So, when you're playing Dwarf Fort, do not worry too much uh, about the quality of the gear that they have. Then just rough skin touching metal. These are dwarves, not humans. You also need to remember that. Similarly to, you know, how, like, hobbits in Lord of the Rings don't wear shoes. Yeah, as, as long as they have some gear on, it doesn't matter so much. I mean, for my elite squads, I actually have mostly have them wearing no clothing on underneath their armor. For maximum agility. Giant anything are good for defense? This is true, yes. And once all of this is done, I will just remove the remainder. I just want these out of here, mostly. If extras end up coming up, that's fine, too. Which, what's funny is elite squads, which I, I don't even have... I don't have any well-trained military in this fort yet. Uh, but the, in the last fort that I had, where we actually had, like, an elite military, the funny thing is, if you have them just going commando underneath their gear they actually start getting pissed quite quickly. And the reason for that is they really, 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 really want to acquire clothing and really like acquiring clothing. Dwarves are all fashionistas, basically. Um, and the funny part of this is because they're very obsessed with acquiring clothing, um, they actually get quite upset if they camp for a while. And if you have them in the military for too long and don't let them put on clothes, uh, they get pissed at you. Um, adamantine clothing is extraordinarily effective armor. I've been told. I've never actually made it, though. I actually, most of the time, end up making adamantine furniture. I make adamantine weapons and then make adamantine furniture because I feel like adamantine is too strong. And there's something really baller about just like, oh yeah, no, I have a bunch of tables in my tavern all made of adamantine. And I like that, so... Holy cro troglodytes. Where do you keep fucking coming from? Holy fuck. <laughs> There's so many. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is hysterical, but like... Also very annoying. Something something WWE something something. Oh yeah. Dr. Y.
Also, it doesn't matter how good they are in the military, training will not satisfy all of their needs. So you do need to remove, like, give them breaks from training every now and again. Even I fall into this trap of just, like, making my military train 24-7 and like for the for the entirety of their lives. But like the first five years you do that, generally dwarves that are well suited for the military will have a great time. They will really, really enjoy like mastering a skill, right? But the second you start like trying to get dwarves that, you know, maybe aren't 1000% suited for the military doing those kinds of jobs, or um, once those dwarves have mastered it and there's nothing more to learn, they just need upkeep, right? So they just need to train periodically. Being off duty every quarter. Yeah, you kind of have to do that. Um, that would be very ineffective because adamantine is about as heavy as balsa wood. So imagine you just get hit with a piano shaped object that weighs almost nothing. That's more or less what you're describing here, which is kind of hysterical to me, actually. <laughs> just going to place some cage traps here because I'm pretty sure this is exactly where the trogs are getting in. All right, is this stuff all done? All the way along here, it's just you, and it's just you. Okay, so we just need to wait for these two to be done. You're doing the upper one. And then one more dwarf should be coming. The final construction. There you are, Cybrick. Um, For adamantine weapons, you want cutty and pointy. So uh, swords are... In my experience, are usually what I do. Uh, swords and spears and axes are kind of the weapons you want. Or, alternatively, bolts, if you're okay with using up your limited supply of adamantine. We are now going to cave this stuff in. I just need a dwarf to come pull this lever. And this should block off most of the way in via the water. And then I just need to floor the rest of it. It's crafted 99 mugs of adamantine? to drop on a bird, pretty much. It's like dropping a styrofoam anvil on somebody. Okay, there goes one. What? Why'd the other one not collapse? Kind of... What? Eh? Oh, did you not get fully connected? That's bizarre. All right, well, well, we'll do the second one in a second. Just need to wait for the water to evaporate. Laya is coming to pull the lever, who's apparently in love with terminal wetness. I really need to give these dwarves a break. But I just, I want to get this done. Okay, next dwarf needs to link. Do I not have the materials? Empty cage, needs empty cage. And I mean, okay. Wait. Okay. Um, I guess I need more mechanisms. Rock mechanisms. I'll just make 15 obsidian rock mechanisms. We'll do that. Terminal wetness. It's the name of a dwarf. It's the name of a member of chat. I didn't make it up. They did. Blame them, not me. I swear it's not my fault. But uh, since... I'm just start doing this. So 
So now, theoretically, only water-based creatures can get into the fort. I wonder. Hmm. Oh, it's because the burrow's still on. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally because the burrow's still on. That's why that didn't go through. Yeah, silver pianos, lead pianos, um, any kind of really heavy obsidian pianos, all that stuff. Or maybe not obsidian, but the, actually, uh, true, true story with Dwarf Fortress, for things that you drop on things, or if you're dropping things on things, fall damage isn't, yeah, slayed pianos, uh, fall damage isn't calculated by um, <clears throat> the distance they fall. It's calculated on the density of the thing they land on. So if you drop goblins 200 meters onto dirt, it's they're just gonna bounce. If you drop them 200 meters onto lead or um, silver or gold, they'll go splat. It's just Dwarf Fortress logic. Don't worry too much about it. I'm also going to smooth and fortify this obsidian wall. Actually, I'm gonna dig there first. Did you get an ex explanation of the goal of this fort? Well, right now it's just get migrants. Um, I'm trying to build a new mountain home for the faction that I've been at war with. Um, the last fort that I was playing and that I played for a few weeks um, what is at war with a dwarven fort faction, and this faction is called uh, the Rock the, the, the rock, the rack of Lobsters, I think. Yeah, the, the Rack of Lobsters. Let me just double check. Yes, the Rack of Lobsters. Um, and uh, so because I'm playing as a faction that's at war with them... <clears throat> Uh, or was playing a faction that was at war with them, uh, I'm trying to fight back against my old own fort. My own old fort. Yes. Platinum floors. Steel spikes. All around. Right. Um, but I are stupid. I hope you're doing well. How's things, mate? How's your day been? You know, when, it, when Fortress Mode came out on Steam, we had a countdown of how many days till Fortress Mode. How many days till Adventure Mode? One, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Twenty-one days till adventure mode. Twenty or twenty-one? I think it's twenty-one including today. It is turn-based. Um, the easiest comparison that I've been making to explain it to people who have never played it is kind of like, imagine turn-based Kenshi, sort of. Why are you injured? Giant bat. You got into a f spat with a giant bat? Okay, I need, I need, a, I need a chief medical dwarf. Um... Make Arende, Chief Medical Dwarf. Um, now I need a hospital. Could just, you know, let's just make these three beds into a hospital. Not the greatest location, but we'll go with it. And, um, you know, I'm actually, I'm going to go edit a job. We're going to go to orderlies because everybody's set to do this. And I'm just going to set orderlies to all of the doctoring stuff, all of them. Just so I don't need to worry about assigning too many doctors because I have so few dwarves. So anybody can do orderlies now. Because um, Creed is unconscious. I've actually got a few people recovering wounded. What the hell happened?
So Merc apparently got injured? Maybe you got bit by a spider. I feel such sympathy. I brought somebody to rest in bed. Um. Trying to attend a meeting. With the guy in charge. That's not great. Clean self. Recover wounded. Okay, maybe not. Sorry, Arende, you're getting demoted. <laughs> um, Let's give it to Cybrek. You're seriously injured. Lai is seriously injured. Lai got put on the floor because there's pants on the bed? That's harsh. Knee is mangled beyond recognition. Damn, dude. Okay, we are going to go to here, and I'm just going to pause this for right now, because that's not so important. Got to mount a CPO and cannibalize your old desktop. Best of luck, dude. That's the best. Enjoy the uh, the new build. And I assume we'll see you pop back in once it's done. Do let us know how it goes. All right, okay, so where are these giant bats then? Yeah, okay, so there's giant bats on my in my fort on this floor. Um, oh fuck, that's where they're coming in. Okay. Um, hmm. I found the whole chat. Yep, look at them all. How the hell are we going to fix that? Hmm. I could cave in above them. That wouldn't be too hard. I think we'll do that. Just block the thing off. At least for foot traffic. No, I can't find it. <laughs> there they are. Let's just jump back this way. I, I still can't find them. Okay, so it's down at the bottom. Never mind, it's all the way up at the top up here. Hmm. Drop a piano. Maybe not a piano, but... It's way too straight a line, but now that I see that this, I can do this. But yeah, we, we will have to do the equivalent of dropping a, uh, a piano on him. The dwarven equivalent, of course. And by that, I mean really big rock on them. And maybe we'll find some metal while we're digging. That'd be nice. Okay, so now that I'm down to there, we can go along here. Wink. And wink. So what I'm going to do, because I need to I need this to connect all the way across. I'm just gonna go up to here. Dig all the way around like this. Go down one. Get rid of the middle. Get rid of this. Actually, just get rid of all of this. Um, and then also. Let's um, put stairs right there. I mean, not doubles, just the singles. That'll work. Um, and then connect to this. 
And also, I don't need this top side, so we can get rid of that. Uh, Shanira, thank you very much for the eighth month. Welcome back. Appreciate you. Check, can I get a round of beers? For the continued support, thank you very much for helping keep this channel alive. One subscription at a time. Uh, sometimes I set a population, sometimes I don't. Uh, the answer to a lot of, like, playstyle questions is, for me at the very least, it almost always comes down to, it changes almost every fort. And that's just kind of the reality. It, it changes almost every fort. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um... Have you been diagnosed yet? Hmm. Are you gonna go do the Dorfus Jobbis? After you're done drinking? Nope. Okay. I guess, in that case, we'll do this. Still trying to figure out how the medical system works in the game currently. Doctor. Chief. There you go. Okay. You send uh, your caravan with five dwarf bucks every month. <laughs> oh, to, my, to, to, to the channel? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it goes a long way. It really does. Okay, one, two, doing surgery. Can probably get the um, traction bench up here. You know, at the very least, I'm aware I haven't been able to get the stuff done that I've wanted to, but this fort's been interesting. Um, I'm going to make this into my water source. Cause it's right here. Hi again. Mass Morass, thank you very much for the sixth month of support. That is greatly appreciated. We're still not properly connected, are we? My turn stone at 13 salute. Stone Coat, thank you very much for continuing to keep that subscription alive. Once again, greatly appreciated. It does actually go a long way means a lot, dude. The Mass Morass with the six months, and Stone Coat with the four months. Shinira with the seven, of course, and Stingray 36 minutes ago. Three months. Thanks for all these resubs. We hyping something. Oh, heck yeah. We hyping. Thank you very much, chat. Man. I just need mechanisms. Um... I'm trying to stick to lava safe ones. But let's just make some any rock mechanisms. Just 10. But chat, there's a hype train going on in the chat. So if you happen to have bits on your account to resub or a prime subscription and you would like some emotes potentially, now's a good time to use them. But yeah, when it comes to things like population limits, YouTube chat, it, it just... It varies wildly on the fort. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Chief Medical Fort is fighting with a giant bat. Oh, God. Did I catch the giant bat? Yes. Ha! Huh. Okay, hold on. Is the only giant bat in the cage now? Ye okay. The only giant bat is, in fact, in the cage. I can train the giant bat. But the thing that I should really do is we should use this opportunity to seal this shit off. Um, fuck it. We'll just use poor tree logs. I need something light. Wuggy McWuggy, thanks for the dollar. And, uh, Jura Bear, thanks for the brand new Prime subscription. It means a lot. It really does. I'm going to follow you. Yep, you've got the support tree. Come on, follow. We are now, we've, we're have we actually technically now in level one. The first level is actually level zero. It's like not anywhere near as clear as it should be, but. But thank you.
We can also butcher that bat now. Which I don't think actually killed any of my dwarves, which is good. We can also start eating the llamas. We're getting kind of low on meat, so... It is time to do that. The tra strange giant bat and the... Man... Actually, I kind of want to keep the giant bat. Hmm. I'd have to see, keep it somewhere careful. So I could keep it trained. Rolf, thank you very much for gifting a subscription. To Dwarmir. He's around a lot. Welcome to the realm of being able to post beer with two E's. <laughs> Just immediately another one gets caught. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of a hunt bat. I kind of do. All right. This should be cleaned up now. And I should be able to just like pause all this now. Which I no longer need. But did I find anything while I was digging through? Hey, we found some gems. Some zircons. And nothing else. Does anyone know how to add custom world generations into the game files on Linux? You've found videos on how to do it on Windows, but you can't find files for Linux. You mean like dragging and dropping the world folders? Isn't it literally just like you put them into the same folder? I thought the file structure of Dwarf Fortress is the same between versions. Like between OSs anyway. Laya's got the boned knee. Or the borked knee. I like how my medical dwarf is slaughtering a cave swallow. You know, just doing the important things, right? And then just fucking lets it go. <laughs> Gets distracted halfway through and then is just like, actually, I'm just going to leave. Let this fly away. At least it's trained. It's okay. Uh, Tommy's got it. Yeah, world gen presets. I'm, isn't I'm, isn't that quite literally just like a button that you like just a like folder that you dra drag and drop? Yeah. I like yeah. There you go. Because world gen .txt, you just need to f get a new world gen .txt file, and it'll it should just work. As far as I know. Because the, 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 like, those files shouldn't change from version to version. All right, everybody. I think I have enough troglodytes. <laughs> I think we officially have enough troglodytes. Fortunately, though, I shouldn't be getting any more. Because this should be good now. This is all the way up to the top. Looks like. Anybody resting still? Laya is. An evaluated, received cave spider stuck dressing. Level three, let's go. Needs a little bit more of a push to get to level three, mate. But thank you very much for the five bucks. It needs like three subscriptions or like 1,500 bits, basically. Maybe, it'll, yeah, about, 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 or eh, about, a, about 1,500 bits. No, it's not a link, fortunately. Yeah, you also need to restart the game. Dragging and dropping without restarting the game won't do anything. But thank you very much. Oh, man, Kazumi, just missed it. <sighs> thank you very much for the five pack, regardless, though. And uh, shouts to anybody who just got gifted a subscription. Chatroom, can I get a round of beers? Thank you very much for the scam train. Diagnosis required and crutch required. Well, fortunately, we do have crutches. Basically, his knee's fucked up. He just needs a crutch. This dwarf just needs a crutch. Which I think... It says I have them in here. Maybe I need to make some more. Let's make... Wood and... Why do I always type... I just grab the nearest thing and go, I should be able to type items to make into this.
I'm in an ad break in a few seconds, so I will pause game when there it goes. When ad break starts. I mean, you can still use Burr. No one's stopping you. What's up, Yaka Glass? How many glasses have you Yaka'd today? <laughs> I feel like Yaka is like now suddenly a, a a term to like throw a thing. It's like yeet to a degree. But, um, how's things today? Yaka Glass? Oh, <laughs> this is fun. Starting March 28th, new and existing subscriptions will renew at $7.99 in Canada. Woo! Fortunately, I get 50% of that still, so I guess that technically means I get paid more for Canadian subs, but ay ay ay. Um, I have two. I have Biggin and not... And just small one. This is a, a an aperture. This is a scene from Portal, which is very unfinished. I can show it off a little better if I stand up. Glados, no. Suffer from commodity fetishism. Uh, if you are referring to, like, acquiring stuff, then yes, I would say so. Also, you really need a new shirt. Let's do 15 yarn shirts. 15 yarn shirts it is. Well, right after you show us yours, Baka class. I'm still going to call you Baka because it suits you. I like how you are now, like, you've gotten a crutch handed to you, and now you're just going to go make more crutches. Oh, no, I mean, I'm well aware of the joke. Don't worry. Uh, the dwarves have boots with fur. The dwarves are wearing shoes and socks made of yarn from the alpacas. So trust me, we're, we are well aware of the joke. I think I'm going to move my alpacas up here, though. And I'm also going to start butchering some of the alpacas. And uh, let me also check something else. What else do you have that needs to be replaced? Robes. Oh, boy. Um, or a uh, yarn robe. Let's just do... Six of them. This right here is going to become trash. Um, and then I can jump back down to so many chocolateites. Um, I can jump back back down to here, and I'm going to oh, maybe not here. Actually, where where was that? I had another trash pile down here. There it is. You can go away. Unforbid all the plump helmets spawn. How many crutches was I making? 10. Let's just make three. And I screwed up the shirt, so I was making 15, so we'll do 14. 
So ideally, Laya should be able to go get new clothes pretty soon. There you go. You're going to go pick up equipment because it's probably time for you to go grab a new shirt. If I had to bet. Mm-hmm. You fuck you pressed enter. Uh-huh. I I'm sure you did. And <laughs> you have a tendency to use Twitch chat box as a notepad of sorts, I'm sure. Wholeheartedly believe you on that. Uh, everybody just wants to practice a martial art. One benefit of this faction so far is it seems like everybody likes practicing a martial art. So I'm kind of making this fort into a pseudo wrestling fort. Let's get them training for a bit. So all of the dwarves are now suddenly military dwarves. And aside from the, this one that's putting a troglodyte away, um, although you appear to have decided to not do that, which squad are you in Fallout? I would like you to finish putting the troglodyte away, actually. Actually, here, we'll just remove you from the squad temporarily, just so that you can finish. Because I'd like you to put away the troglodyte. And not, like, re-release it into the fort, because that would be not great. Plop the extra troglodyte into here. Go. Where the hell are you going? Probably putting it back in the cage, right? Yep, <laughs> literally putting it back in the cage. That's very funny. Um, all right, well, we can just get you into here now. Elfie, lunchy time. Have a good lunchy, Elfie. Hey, chat, what's for lunch? Very important question. I want them to all move above being dabbling wrestlers so that they can spar. So, entire squad is wrestling. Uh, you right here are actually going to be connected to the Frilly Pants, which is my tavern. This is, of course, the, the, the tavern and the tavern's dance room. Got into an argument, God. Jeez, for everyone. To create a Wariac? Um, no, but you could probably mod it into the game pretty easily. Are robes the uniforms? Um, I just had one dwarf show up with a robe on, so I was like, I'll give them robes, why not? It's easier to just make everybody the same items than try and, like, restrict items to certain dwarves. It's just easier that way. It's a fancy-ass goblet. It's completely encrusted with moldog bone. I'm going to hunting train this war bat. Or this bat can be hunting trained. And then I'm gonna release it from its cage in a little bit. So we're gonna go until we hit 80 booze. The reason I don't do a lot of dying and also the reason I don't do a lot of decorating or in, in encrusting, usually, although I am I am decorating items in this fort, um, the reason I don't do that a lot is because you can't be specific about what item, uh, gets used, basically, and that kind of bothers me. I'm also going to go to, uh, b -b 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 labor, standing orders, chores. I'm just gonna say children don't do chores for the time being. 
I'd prefer you just kind of deal with your needs, kiddo. I can also queue this up for after the training, but we are going to slaughter all but these three. And I'm going to geld all but those four. Do I have toys for the babies? Well, I just have the one kid. We, we do need to make them some toys. We haven't made any toys yet, no. Need them to get up to, to, to novice. Because they all want martial training. So I want to satisfy that need on just about everybody. I realize this isn't the most compelling viewing, but doing my best here. Did I trade with my faction? No, not yet. We're waiting for fall to trade, which actually another thing I need to do need to do this before falls. I need to dig across here and then put a door right there. That's something I need to do. Because traders do not like crossing over cage traps, which I think I, I wouldn't either, frankly. I want to practice some martial arts, so go practice a friggin' martial art then. Literally what we're all doing right now. You're waiting for a new migrant wave to install your first, uh, to install your first dwarf ever. I wish so badly, uh, to aid you against those naughty nights. <laughs> what do you mean by install your first dwarf ever? You usually just, uh, uh, uniformly dye all cloth one color because dye is still has the capability of making some very valuable clothing, which makes dwarves very happy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I might, you know, if this population doesn't start to go up soon, I, I might just start dyeing clothing. Rende, are you not in a squad? Yeah, you are. Here, I'll put you in the other squad. Because you don't seem to be training. So go train. Mate, come on. <laughs> I mean, or don't. That's fine, too. Can <laughs> you go take a nap instead? Fine. On your current setup, you can't keep up with everyone's needs. That's kind of the way Dwarf Fortress is designed, right? It's kind of designed so that you can't keep up with everyone's needs. And that's kind of part of the game. Let's just make... Actually, hang on. We're currently making shirts. Let's make leather gloves. 15 of them else do you have well, we're making new shirts right now I think we're okay currently you, you do enjoy how chaotic it's become you've you've had four fatalities in the bar fights so ooh it's not optimal we'll say you don't generally want that yeah we need new gloves that's what we need gloves 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 Gloves, 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 gloves. Yeah, I, I really like the bar fights. I think the bar fights are a great mechanic. And that's not me being ironic. I genuinely feel that way. I, I do honestly think it's a great mechanic. It's a big old trog pile. <laughs> 
Okay, we got one more troglodyte to put in there. Then they'll probably just start making baby troglodytes. And at some point, I will just lock the door and release them all. And it'll be hysterical. Um, I find that bar, bar fights tend to happen when you have a tavern keeper and way less often when you don't. Because dwarves are generally pretty good about not going past their limits. By that, I mean not drinking too much. Um, it's pretty rare that dwarves will drink too much of their own volition. And I personally really enjoy um, just telling them to, like, you know, not have a tavern keeper. Um, or not really enjoy, but like that's like I find that to be a really good way of avoiding issues is just don't let them have a tavern keeper. Um, I'm going to make a refuse stockpile, but I'm just going to make it for clothing. So this is just going to be a refuse stockpile for clothing, nothing else. Um, I will. Uh, yeah, literally just clothing. Well, the babies will stay inside of the, the, the trog cage. So yeah, I guess it kind of will be a trog bomb. Like YouTube said, trog bomb. And ironically, all they're going to do is try and leave the map. <laughs> Uh-oh, stuff's rotten. We're cooking her fertile turkey hen eggs? Oh, that sucks. Clearly, we have too much food, though, so that means it's time to uh, pause cooking. Because stuff's getting rotten. Yeah, we got plenty of meals right now. We got plenty of meals right now. Plenty, plenty, plenty. I'd like to see what dwarves are prioritizing to eat, but... I need to wait for a dwarf to go eat. Uh, this is the same fort from yesterday. Yes, your dwarf is still alive. You are the chef slash but slash planter, I think. Yes. I have a question. What makes you think that the fort from yesterday would be dead already? <laughs> There we go. Did have some injuries, but nobody's died yet, so it's been okay. All right, let's um start pausing jobs, I think. We'll leave Tana Hyde going, we'll leave that going. Pause that. Let the yarn shirts keep going. I'm just going to start pausing jobs that aren't 100% necessary right now because I need these dwarves to like put stuff away and then take a break basically. Put stuff away and then take a break. That's what I need. It's going to be a lot of storing items in barrels, this sort of stuff. Apparently you get the wool from alpacas when... Um... That's interesting. You get the wool from alpacas when, when you butcher them. I didn't realize that. There's something rotten around here. Or maybe it just got thrown away. It's possible. Um, nothing in there. That's okay. You're making leather gloves. Yes, we should keep that going. Tana hide. Keep going. Okay, we will just follow you. Let's um make a couple more clothing workshops. I think. Let's make maybe two more. Although actually. What I need to do is I need to make um, granite rock blocks. Rock blocks. Uh, granite. 15. Yeah, I just, I never noticed that before, I guess. I mean, it makes sense that you would. I've just never really noticed it before. Okay. 
Um, the name of the YouTube stream says New Fort, Apple Bottom Cavern Fort. And the Twitch stream says New Fort Day 2. I don't know how to make that any more clear. Turns out, when I put the words New Fort in the title of a stream, my view count doubles. So when I make a new fort, I inform people for a few days that it's a new fort. And then I stop once it stops feeling like new fort. Somebody just got married. Uh, Joker of Spades and Merc Dominith just got married. Congratulations, chat. Can I get a big round of beers for the happy couple? Merc has already left and going back to work, whereas Joker is hanging around and, uh, you know, chatting a bit. I think they would require wool to be able to get wool from them, no? Merc wanted to go get uh, probably a new robe. If I were to bet. It's now going to go store-owned item, which is... Hauling. You're just running off to go store owned item now. But like, oh, did you drop your old item on the ground? Yeah, you did. Dropped your tunic on the ground. Now you're grabbing it and putting it away. There it goes. We're also um, fixing a bunch of baby alpacas. In my tennis year fort. I mean, they need to, like, value fam. There are some dwarves that will just never get married. Um, regardless of what you do, more or less. And there are some factions that just, like, don't have, like, very marriage-heavy genetics, right? Like, I couldn't, like, I was able to get two of my necromancers to hook up almost immediately in that last fort. But, um... Then some of them just kind of, they became friends and that was it. Nothing more. Never went beyond friends. Yeah, asexual dwarves are actually pretty, relatively common in bigger factions. Because in Dwarf Fortress, um, one of the reason Dwarf Fortress ha one of the reasons Dwarf Fortress has asexual and gay dwarves um, is because in older versions of the game, dwarves would just outbreed everybody else because they breed really quickly. Elves breed pretty slowly, like they multiply quite slowly. Goblins also multiply quite slowly. So because dwarves multiply quite quickly, same with humans, um, and dwarves have a much longer lifespan than humans, um, the reality is uh, part, of, part, part of the reason they, they added asexual and gay dwarves is to like stop the dwarven population just from just exploding and beating people with sheer numbers. When you see Gadar in Diafak, I like the fact that that's one of the things that Putnam added to Diafak. <laughs> Which is just, like, the most Putnam thing ever. We just need a Babadook equivalent. I genuinely like that movie. Gay icon aside. That is a genuinely good movie. Well, there's pretty strict baby caps in Dwarf Fort. They have their own separate population cap. So, where's my giant bat at? Oh, right, it wouldn't be in here. There you are. So because you are trained... Uh, there you are. I'm going to move this giant bat here. I'm also going to put just a tiny little animal training zone right there. So this giant bat is going to be removed from this cage and trained to hunt. Which means it's probably going to go die to a giant coyote on the surface or something. But I'm real curious to see how it does. The other thing I'm going to do, though, is I am going to full heal it, just to give it a second chance. 
You get the one full he heal there. Go make us proud, batty. Training it to hunt. I never knew that war-trained bats had a different sprite. That is adorable. Go make us proud, bats. It does feel free after being confined. Have I tried the Dwarf Vet via fix from via DFAC? Sure, but I don't like automating things with DFAC, so that kind of goes against what I like doing. So, no, I don't use that. Have I tried it? Sure, yeah. Back when they added it, but I, I do not use it, no. All right, let's get the Dwarves training again. The thing is, I, I don't like it when DF Hack automates my game, and there are mechanics in DF Hack that fix problems with the game, but I would rather be acutely aware of the issues in the game and then appreciate fixes when they get added to the game instead of not being entirely aware of the issues with the game and then being mad when fixes fix things differently than the game would have or had with DF Hack. And to me, that's just a way of in inevitably being disappointed by the game, which is not a process I enjoy. Because believe it or not, there's actually a pretty common problem with games like this that have been in development for a very long time, where uh, they will... Uh oh Oh, she... Wait, hold on. Which faction is this? So this is a faction that I asked to come trade with me. I demanded tribute from them. So this is another Dwarven faction that I've never met before, that I've never interacted with, um, that I demand that I demanded uh, one-time tribute from. They denied it, but they will come trade with me now. So they brought an elephant. That's a good sign. Uh, but yeah. No, but see, here's the thing. That is adding a skill to the game that isn't there beforehand, right? It it doesn't... It's, it's, a, it's a modification to the way the game acts in a vanilla state. I don't want to modify the way the game acts in a vanilla state. Because that doesn't really benefit me. <clears throat> uh, April 17th. It's not tentative. It's April 17th. Where are you going? Guess they're in combat with um, the giant coyotes. Maybe they're not actually going to come trade. <laughs> it's pretty easy to get into the fort. The door's the other way, go. Oh, the door is, in fact, the other way. Go the other way. We have to go north. The thing that you need to remember to people who ask me about why I don't modify the game out of a vanilla state. I have built an audience around this game based off of the fact that I'm good at teaching people how to play this game. When somebody buys the game on Steam, they're not usually going to just go and install DF Hack unless they've already been playing the game for a while, most likely. So new players to this game generally, and I say generally because obviously there's exceptions to every rule, aren't going to be using DF Hack. I want to be able to teach people to play this game competently in a vanilla state. If I can't do that, I'm doing a bad job, right? Currently, if I'm just using a lot of, you know, third-party assists, tools, or features that aren't in the vanilla game, that impacts my ability to teach people to play the game. So it makes me worse at my job. Because I don't want to be worse at my job, it's redundant for me to do that. So I choose not to. Unless it's like a total overhaul, at which point then I'm much more open to the idea. 
You know, let's sell them an elephant skull totem. Uh, then I'm much more open to the idea. And the reason I'm much more open to the idea when it's a total overhaul is because I can be like, I can make a little event out of it. I can be like, this is a total overhaul mod. It's a very big change to the game. It changes the entire theme of the game. I'll do that occasionally. Um, and that's how I've always done it traditionally. But the vanilla game is, is fine for me. Uh, Canadian Pagan, thank you very much for the raid. How are you doing? Chat room, go give Can our friend Canadian Pagan a follow. Watch them play a variety of video games. Friend of the channel comes by, raids us relatively frequently, which is wonderful because very few people do that. So thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated, mate. I hope that your stream went well. Welcome, Raiders. My name's Greg. I play too much Dwarf Fort. Sometimes chat lets me play other things. I also need to take my dwarves off of training. We're still all just dabbling, though. And honestly, like, the modifications from DF Hack are largely just convenience. And um, the changes that um, mods can have are just added variety in a lot of cases. So, like, adding other races or other factions and that sort of stuff. It's just adding more of the same, really. So, gameplay-wise and my long-term entertainment-wise, it doesn't... Like, adding a bunch of stuff to the game doesn't actually change me my experience of playing the game. I am very confused by what that means, Raging Cave. What? Have there been any notable overhauls for the Steam version yet? Um... I know that the Rise of the Mushroom Kingdom is in the process of getting ported, and the last thing I heard was, holy fuck, this has a lot of sprites. And that was like six months ago. Um, I know that there is a version of the Long Night that works, but I don't know if there's a tile set in the works, and I wouldn't want to play those with the vanilla tile set, and I don't really want to stream in ASCII because that scares people away. Also, I am now in an ad, so I will wait until the ad is done, probably. But I am kind of curious as to what they brought for trading. I might just buy food. Shit, they brought a steel minecart. Don't think I can afford that, though. I'll honestly probably just buy the cloth, like the yarn or the meats. Just buy the food from them. But we'll, we'll just wait until the ad is done. Um... Yeah, but I, I don't I don't get the joke. I don't get the punchline. You said that you were feeling trolly earlier today. This one has gone so far over my head. Like, are you trying to do like an anonymous bit? Because like, that's not cool. <laughs> you used to ask you, well, that's one. Long Night is an overhaul mod, yeah. The Long Night uh, makes the game science fiction. Kind of 40K, but it's a unique world. It was originally made by one person for themselves. And uh, they didn't publicly distribute it for a while, but occasionally would post about it. And then people begged them and were like, hey, please put it on the internet. And so they put it on the internet. I don't have a lot of aluminum brace bracelets. Arende. I do not have a lot of them. I have 20. Um, and I'm aware they're a thousand each, but also this is my first time trading, which means no, they're not going to be a thousand each. <laughs> They're absolutely not. Um, they're 400, because this is my first time trading. And thus, my, you know, trader doesn't have the best bargaining skills. One thing I needed to use in DF Hack was instruments locked on floor in tavern. Why? Just put them into a. Just put chests in your tavern. The 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 the, the movable ones just get put into chests, and the rest of them get, um. Put into the what's it called? They 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 either get put into the. They they put they, and then they just get put into the chest in the tavern. Like, what well, what? Why would you? Why would you care about? I don't know. That's odd. Odd thing to need. 
Um, I'm gonna buy this. This. Oh, maybe not that. That's too expensive. Uh, this, this, and this. I'll make some cheese. Let's mark all my stuff so I got 600 to spare. Okay, we'll buy a single iron sword. Cheese! I still haven't found any iron yet. Uh, it's supposedly on the map somewhere, but I'll buy some fish until I can't afford anything else. It'll be a little bit of export. I don't know if trading with other factions helps me get migrants, though. I doubt it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Trade. Done. Which means all that stuff's going to show up in there, probably. Although, actually, I should add fish to this. Also, should probably move the kitchen. And uh, on top of spinning thread, you can make some cheese, because I just got some milk. That's rare, but it's happened to you twice. See, I wouldn't... See, to me, something happening twice in the game is not a... At least for me, not a reason to completely modify the base functionality of the game with DF hack. I mean, for me, that would be a reason to, like, auto-dump destroy one item that I that is stuck somewhere. Because that's how I use DF hack. But at the end of the day, I don't know. You do things your way. Don't worry about how I do things. All right, well, we finished those extra rock blocks. And we'll probably go back to training. Once we're done making that cheese. And also add cheese to this stockpile. Where the heck? Well, also I should add egg, but where's where's cheese? There it is. Animal cheese. Sweet. Got free and then uninstalled DFX. Oh, fair, uh, fair enough. I mean, like, at the end of the day, the, the thing that I like to try and remind people all the time is I play games weird. Mod game. Use DFX. Play game exactly the way you want. Like, I... Something that always kind of catches me off guard is I, every now and again I get people like accusing me of being a gatekeeper which is one of the most hysterical things in the world to me <laughs> but uh, the, be, because people hear me out of context at some point state like the way I use DFAC or the way I feel pe like or the way I feel that um, you're impacting your game negatively if you overuse things like DFAC. Um at the end of the day use tools exactly the way you want to use them it's a single player game live your life but if things break, or you brick your save doing something with DF hack, don't come crying to me. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. Which is possible. You can brick a save pretty badly with DF hack. Just remember, Raphael over in the YouTube chat. The classic version is almost exactly the same game as the premium version. In fact, in some ways, I would say the premium version is harder. So it looks so much hardcore, sure, but that's all looks. I'm moving the kitchen into here. Farmer's workshop, that's the kitchen. We can deconstruct that. Um, I would say mouse support. <laughs> because the mouse there while there is mouse support in the older versions, if you hack it in, it is not good. 
<laughs> like, it is bad. Um, like, even though it theoretically works, which is something that I like to remind people of, um, it is not good. Hey, Holy Spokes, how are you? Yeah. I mean, just remember, like, all that sort of stuff, like menus staying open and whatnot. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I just about, I think everybody agrees with you on that, that there's absolutely things that could be better um, about the UI. But the reality is, it's improving. And it's going to be improving slowly. How huge a difference some UI can make? No, totally. It also ruined the game for some people. I know some people who, who are still talking about how this game is dead. <laughs> so, you know, it pff, made the game better for a lot of people. It also ruined it for some people. Mako Darkfire. Glad to see you streaming. Thanks for the fourth month. Welcome back. Appreciate you, mate. Glad to have you in my chat. How's your day been? But it's okay. Go AFK when you need to. It's all good. I will be okay. Even if you go AFK. So I would like a well. And I would like this is gonna slowly drain, which is gonna be the which is a problem actually. Um for Rimtar Rickrail, we will be leaving. That is okay. Okay, let's um Whoa! Pond grabbers. Eesh. You get hooked up. No, you didn't. God damn it. <laughs> Unforbid this. So there's pond grabbers all over this. These are kind of dangerous. They basically are like weird heads that reach out and grab dwarves. They're relatively dangerous, but we should make sure that they don't make it into the fort. UI scaling can be kind of crashy. Recently? Because I know there was some, like, crashing issues, issues with UI scaling um, around launch, but recently? Hello, Sui. How are you? Are you liking the new Stardew Valley update? Or if be running. Like, two days ago? That's interesting. What, what OS are you on? And also, what resolution is your monitor? But uh, if you get crashes, like, do send in your crash reports. They go into a folder in your game files. ASCII Vanilla, is it 47? If you were playing, okay, so if you were playing ASCII with this, I don't understand why version numbers in Dwarf Fortress specifically are so confusing to people. It drives me nuts. Um, if you are playing Dwarf Fortress with this UI, it's version 50.12. If you are playing Dwarf Fortress with the UI that's just a bar on the right, that's all hotkeys, that can have mouse support enabled, but the mouse support sucks, then you're playing version 47. Why are version numbers so complicated and, like, almost impossible seeming for people? I do not get. We'll never understand. Well, the game didn't want you to play Heavy Aquifer right under the first layer of the map. Well, then, why'd you settle on a Heavy Aquifer? Settle somewhere else. You chose to settle on a Heavy Aquifer. Number make head go oof. It's not that complicated, though. <laughs> it's also on the main menu. You also kind of have to go out of your way to find version 47 now. Light aquifers are light. Heavy aquifers are heavy. The only difference is the amount of water that comes out of them. Light aquifer is trickle, trickle, trickle. Heavy aquifer is immediate torrent of water that fills the entire hole up immediately, right? Heavy and light does not equate depth, meaning 
You could have a heavy aquifer that is 30 layers deep. You could have a light aquifer that is 30 layers deep. Another concept that I one day will be able to commu figure out how to communicate to the entirety of the Dwarf Fortress community. <laughs> but today is not that day. I've got to leave her to pull. Ral's coming to pull the lever. Kulu did such a good job on it, Sui. Someone has to clip it for it to hit the YouTube shorts. Otherwise, meh. Part of the reason I had so many shorts for a while there was because Boom Boom kept uh, clipping stuff. That was convenient. Well, the thing is, there used to be one type of aquifers in Dwarf Fortress. They were just called aquifers, right? Maybe I should make like a two-minute video explaining this shit. The, 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 they, were just, they were just aquifers, right? And all aquifers were heavy aquifers. In version 47.05, maybe, maybe it was 0.01. Anyway, one of the version 47 eras, they changed it so that there was three types of aquifers. Light, varied, and heavy. Can't even dig, it's annoying. I have a tutorial on how to dig through light aquifers. It's You just do it one layer at a time. It's one of those things that like, well, sure, I could see why it would seem really annoying. It's something that you get used to if you just keep playing the game. So I don't, I, 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 at the end of the day, I don't really know how to explain it to people because it doesn't matter how many times I explain it to people and how frequently I explain it to people. It's just a concept that people don't understand. They think that lots of layers means heavy. It's not true. It's doable. Did you settle on a multi layer? Like, did you settle somewhere that has heavy and light? Like, did you settle on a varied? Well, wh whatever. I give up. <laughs> Let's subject change because I just, this is, this is one of those things where it's just like, I, I, I don't know how. I don't know how to keep explaining this to people. Only heavy? Well, then why did you settle on a heavy aquifer? You're complaining about heavy aquifers. And so you settle on a heavy aquifer. And now you're complaining me that the, that it's like, like I, okay, I give up. I, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't this. I can't this chat. Sorry, I can't. Um, I need to get rid of these. Why, Dwarmer? I'm just waiting for the dwarves to build this slowly. Let's see how my training's going. Just gonna wait until you guys are all considered wrestlers. What we're gonna do. There we go. You're now a novice wrestler. That's what I wanted to see. You're still dabbling. Wait until you hit novice. They're all satisfied upon improving striking, which is good. Which is satisfying the need for martial training, which is good. How can you feed your animals? So make a bigger... What kind of animals are you trying to feed? And how many animals? Because two things happen, right? I'm assuming the grass is growing back on the surface because grass grows on clay. And I'm assuming you're, you didn't settle somewhere that has no, like, undergrowth. 
right? Because it like as an example, this is mountain, right? This cloud these cloudberry flowers, they grow can be grazed once and then never grow again, right? Um this area over here as dense edible grass, which is which could be grazed indefinitely. When they graze it, it will turn into sand, but then it'll grow back. So if you have, let's just say, 40 animals in a tile this big, yeah, they're gonna be starving because you need more space, right? Or you can like quadruple the size of the space and then they won't be starving anymore. So give them a bigger pasture if you wanna keep them on the surface. If you wanna move them underground, you could flood an area, but flooding areas doesn't give you a 100% coverage. Um, and it also, I think, only give you coverage if, um, it'll only give you coverage if dwarves are, or if there's actually, so let's go up here. Uh, if there's actually moss growing in that layer. If there isn't moss growing, then you won't get coverage. Also that too, the, um, the cavern ashes should have moss growing on it. It's weird if it that it doesn't. It's Mitchell. Thank you very much for the raid. What's up? I've been getting a lot of raids the last two days. This is nice. Hey, Cathode. How's things? Boltfy. What's up? Clayborn. How's things? Mitchell. Eternal. AJE. Hello, friends. This is Dorfort. I think you came from Dorfort. How is Dorfort? In this Dorfort, we fended off a uh, very large army of uh, troglodytes and a giant bat that almost killed three of my dwarves. I'm still trying to get migrants. We made it to Autumn, but um, didn't get traders from my faction, which sucks. But I was able to trade with somebody else, so that's good. So it's not the map that's borked. It's just I haven't been able to trade with my faction. So here's hoping we trade next year. Which would be year three. Because I haven't seen them yet. And expose either the clay or sand. I would... Honestly, for me, I would just make the the grazing size bigger. Like, that's, that's the best advice I got. Really. Uh, just make the grazing spot bigger. All right, so since these guys are all, well, not quite all of them, most of them have at the very least gotten some sort of training in. You're a novice fighter, novice wrestler, novice wrestler. Okay, so it's time to cancel these dwarves training, bring in the other squad and get them training. Rack and Soul, thank you very much for the seventh month. Welcome back. I'll say, Peter. Hope you're doing well, mate. Release troglodyte baby, baby. No, 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 no. No, you do not release the baby troglodytes. They stay in the cage too. Same with them. We keep the troglodyte babies. <laughs> the trog army must grow. <laughs> Actually, I wonder if I forbid this cage, if that'll if that'll do her. Probably. I think. Did you ever get connected? Yes. Well, I mean, it's less of a trog zoo and more of a trog bomb, but... Because, like, I'm, I, it's hooked up to a lever, and the next time I get sieged, I'm just going to lock the door and release them and see what happens. <laughs> Can you load cages into minecarts? Yes, but you can't release things from cages unless they're constructed. So it's not like the animals would go flying out of them. As funny as that would be. So I currently have this problem where I don't have anywhere near enough dwarves planting things. What's Joker doing? Oh, you're doing individual combat. That makes sense. Earthen Conflagration. Okay. 
need these dwarves to become, you know, novice wrestlers. Or at the very least, satisfy their need to train. It's kind of concerning to me that I have dwarves that have a unmet need to, like, argue. This one. Laia has an unmet need to argue. That's kind of concerning. I feel like that's just going to lead to a lot of arguments. Giant bat is fighting with a bug bat. Is my bug bat hiding? Hunting? Oh, no. It's on the lower layer. God damn it. I thought my giant bat was fighting, maybe. Or hunting. I'm kind of sad. Who's upset? Rende? Of course you are. But Tome is also upset. Is the person they are trying to meet with training right now? Oh, it's fine. He's conducting meetings. Got a raid and dash. We'll see you when we see us, Mitchell. Thanks for hanging out. Can animals ride minecarts? No. TLDR, you can't really fire livestock stock out of minecarts. Just remember that the whole process of firing things out of minecarts is not an intended mechanic. So do keep that in mind. It's not something the game is supposed to be able to do. So there really isn't features prepared and built around it for that reason. And while it's a absolutely hysterical thing that you can do, it's still not technically intended. <laughs> So because it's not technically intended, it doesn't often end up working the way you want it to. It's like we can fire like lava out of minecarts and that's already kind of amazing. This is the one with the giant Kia in it. And this one also has a giant Kia in it. Those should just go into the lava. Although most dwarves are just constructing buildings right now. All this flooring. I kind of wish those two migrant waves I got were bigger. So I think I will give this fort another three, four years, and if I don't maintain or gain a, a, the ability to trade with the mountain home, we'll retire it and move elsewhere, and just try and build the coolest little location possible. Um, because I, 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 I don't really have another option if I don't get traders. So that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll give it today and maybe, maybe one more stream, but worst case scenario, we just make a new fort. I think we're just gonna swap this back to everybody does this for a bit because I just I need to get some stuff planted. Still just dabbling, dabbling, still just dabbling. I think that's it for right now. Let them go do other things. Plenty of training, but we need dwarves to go do more useful things and also pray. <laughs> Mostly pray. Although Tubby did become a wrestler, meaning you've made it to novice wrestler. Shaken reliving after suffering, suffering a major injury. That sucks. Uh, let's just go down here because I don't have a lot of them and just pause all jobs. Everything that is, well, actually, except for these floor jobs, we'll, we'll finish those. Everything that is possible, I will pause. And let's just get these dwarves chilling. Because a lot of these dwarves need to, you know, do this sort of stuff. They need to pray. Yeah, there you go. Wonder after communing with their god. They also need to acquire objects, which would mean... Hmm. Perhaps bulk crafts? I'm trying to think. Well, actually... Cloth. What are we? 
Doing for cloth. 63 alpaca wool. 67 cave spider. What do you have? Mm. What about you? Well, hmm. Why don't I do amulets made of silk? Maybe? Let's do 15. Well, let's just do 20. 20 silk amulets. Make those. Those will be a decent value, and hopefully some dwarves will be able to grab those. Corridor is in the side of a mountain. Looks so cool. I agree. Damn rocks. I absolutely agree. I, 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 I love the aesthetic of really, 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 really tall mountains with just, like, tunnels going through, like, peeking out. But I also equally, I think, like the look of forts like this that are more, you know, um, like, cramped, I guess? Maybe claustrophobic, even? Like, I really like the look of this fort, just as a whole. Where are those pond grabbers at? Okay, so there's pond grabbers hanging around here. A little bit worried that they're going to try and yoink my dwarves there, but I think what I'm going to do, actually, is just this. Once I can build across that. That, or I could just do this. And then just build across that. Probably would be better even. So, did they ever unbrick cave adaptation? Because dwarves get cave adapted when they hang out underground. If they see the sun for one second, do they immediately lose all of their cave adaptation? It's been it's on their bug tracker, like it's been reported, but it's it's been a it's a bug that we've had since the beginning of this version. So I don't think anybody who's played the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress even knows what cave adaptation is. Uh, so how am I dealing with it? Uh, it's a non-issue. <laughs> That's the actual answer to that question. And it's it's kind of funny because like it was something I was expecting to have to tutorialize and then almost immediately realized, oh, it just straight up doesn't work. Well, don't need to tutorialize that then. Which kind of sucks, because I really like that mechanic. And also was involved in one of my favorite bugs ever in this game, which was the bug where they would start... Like, when you'd start a brand new fortress, doors would start with maximum cave adaptation. It was like a typo that happened at one point when Tarn tried to tone it back a bit. And so you'd just start a brand new fortress, and then immediately everybody would start projectile vomiting. Which is just kind of funny to me. Of cave adaptation, because somebody just asked in the YouTube chat, is um, a disease that dwarves gain if they spend too much time underground. Because contrary to popular belief, in Dwarf Fortress, dwarves are not an entirely, um, what's the term? Underground? Uh, sub subterranean? What whatever? Species? I'm in an ad break now, so people are probably missing what I'm saying. So I will explain in a minute and 30 seconds when this ad is done. Good afternoon, Celestine. How are you doing? Subterranean? Yeah, it does sound like a real word. Because I don't know how many people are getting ads right now. So I will wait until this is done. So I got a minute. And I will finish talking about cave adaptation. Cave adaptation. Cave adaptation. Cave adaptation. And also to the YouTube stream. Thank you very much for the likes. And thanks for the 62 of you tuning in. We had 80 for a moment there. And thanks for all the, the follows here on Twitch. If you want them to use bows, pro tip, don't make them use bows. <laughs> because bows are not a... Um, if, if you tell them to equip a bow, they should pick up arrows. But pro tip, don't make them use bows. And the reason I say that is because dwarves can't make bows. They're technically a foreign item. So... Because they're technically a foreign item, dwarves don't prioritize them. Unless you're trying to do it manually. And version 50 is the first version of the game where dwarves could even pick up bows. So I would say make them use crossbows <laughs> if you want to keep your sanity. 
Um, anyway, as far as cave adaptation goes, cave adaptation is a disease that dwarves gain over time when they spend too much time underground. What it does is it causes them to get nauseous and puke when they see the sun. Um, this is a negative for combat, but a um, pretty awesome mechanic uh, just in general for the game because it really makes you think about how you design your forts, forcing you to have some above ground regardless of how underground the overall of your fortress is. The problem with cave adaptation is it makes your dwarves extraordinarily bad at combat if your military dwarves get completely cave adapted. So you have to be really careful about how you um, basically deal with um, having too much underground space. Oh yeah, it is that weekend, isn't it, Nander? Well, thank you. I think I have to go over to my parents' house on Sunday for Easter. We're doing some sort of dinner thingy. Do I use crossbows? I don't use bows. I do use crossbows. The Isakai. I think that's how you say that. That seems right. Uh, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. And for following me two minutes ago. Appreciate you. Ooh. Forgotten Beast. The first that we have seen has come. A huge eyeless kingfisher. Beware it's poison gas. It has a long, it has three long spiral horns and a bloated body. Wear it. Okay, so it's in the lower level. It can absolutely get through my trash bin. I'm gonna go take a piss real quick. Cheese for everyone. Over here, he has a sword. Nani? Yeah, it's a kingfisher with three horns. It's three different tones for the beeps. Um, all right. Wave webbed the wispy plagues. That's a good name. So I've got a door there that's locked. That's fine. And then I've got this that has a door in front of it, which I'm going to lock. Let's jump back down to where it is. See where it goes. It's probably gonna go fight with the rodent people. Okay. Well, it's getting hit by a, a lot of bolts. It turns out um, they're actually hitting it with their. Well, they have bronze spears. No oh, shit, eh? Damn. Copper blowgun and copper blow darts and bronze. Damn. Well, that's a pretty good cavern defense force. That it's bleeding a lot. It's taking a lot of hits. Can't stand and can't fly. They've got it on the ground. Combat log is mostly just them beating it. Yep. A lot of the attacks are actually doing nothing to it, but uh, they have it dead. So which rodentman got the credited with the kill? There you go. Luster dent is their name. Successfully killed a forgotten beast. Good old Luster Dent. May she live long and ratty. I don't know. Uh, there was a lot of rat people there, so they kind of had an unfair advantage. You know, numbers and all that. Rats, rats, living in the dark. Everywhere you turn, there's rats. All right, dwarves are doing something. Constructing something. Where are you going?
No, it's Dwarf Fortress, not Warhammer Vermintide. Clearly. How do you stop your dwarves from eating your tallow? Well, I don't think... Do they eat tallow raw? They shouldn't. Uh, you go into this screen, and you scroll till you see tallow, and you can tell them to not cook... Well, actually, I should tell them to not cook my rum. That's kind of annoying. Uh, but uh, you have to have tallow, first off. Then you search for tallow, and you tell them to not cook it, basically. That's that simple. You go into that screen and you tell them to don't cook the tallow. You can only do that while you have tallow, which is actually my biggest complaint about that current screen. There we go. And this shouldn't be an issue. I find that I should, I never turn off tallow cooking. I just butcher a lot of things around the time that I need to make soap. Um, and the reason I don't turn it off is because I find that if I don't have a specific stockpile assigned for it, what ends up happening is my entire stockpile fills up with tallow. So I would rather they just cook it most of the time. Baby alpaca was bitten by a cave spider. Okay. Okay. They're all hanging out in the tavern, chit-chatting. But uh, Tomei here has made some friends, which is good. Exactly what I wanted to see. Giving those dwarves a break. You want to help. So Tubby wants to help somebody. I think I'm going to swap my chief medical dwarf from Cybrek to Tubby. Because they seem to really want that job. So you can have it. Let's just let them socialize for a little bit. All listening to stories? What story are you telling? How Lyagushka ceased to be the militia commander of the Valley of Columns. Oh, because they had to make the... Because we made a very brief squad and then removed everybody from it and then added everybody back into it later. Just to explore the caverns. So they're talking about exploring the caverns, basically. I'm concentrating on something. Are you now? Feel enjoyment while performing as my giant bat flies by. Shouldn't waste your time on revenge. And Arande over here says, I saw a dwarf tell the story of the removal of Lyagushka from the position of militia commander at the Valley of Columns in the late summer of 544 at the Frilly Pants, and it is interesting. And then you, inco after incompetently performing rites and rituals uh, to your god. Actually, I'm kind of curious. What's the most popular god here? Okay, so... Ashen the Crimson... Lum, the Silvers of Saffron, and Kishbin Snurl Disc are the most popular gods. Five worshippers of that religion. Oh boy, that's annoying. A whole bunch with one. You know, maybe I should just make a dedicated temple to the Buff Fellowship. Maybe I should just do that. Need morning coffee? Damn right, I agree. Rat God? I don't know. When the dwarves decide. I think I'm going to build a temple to the Buff Fellowship, which I think is the god of beauty. I think we'll just do that. Um, and I will assign it and everything. The reason I'm going to do that... The reason I'm going to do that is because I, I, I would like them to be able to correctly perform the rites if possible. They're making silk amulets down here. Also running low on brews. I'm just going to kind of leave them in this kind of chill mode that they're currently in. Until... 
I'm just going to kind of leave them in this chill mode until they have the opportunity to, you know, go out and actually get some other things done again. Because right now, I, there's, there's stuff I could do, but honestly, I value the moods of the dwarves a little bit more. Where is... Oh, I see. There's an A in there. I was like, where the heck is Silk? There it is. I'm also kind of looking for a dwarf that would be good... at being a, um, a, a, a tavern keeper. Renday really wants to acquire something. I'm also just going to real quick double the size of the stockpile. And also just make sure that we're keeping bins at zero. Everybody runs off. Probably all acquiring uh, crafts, actually. Yep. Means hopefully you can acquire... Item, if you want. There you go. Funny thing about um, amulets is dwarves don't have necks. <laughs> well, I mean, they do. But dwarves don't wear amulets on their necks. They wear amulets on their heads. Satisfying acquisition. There we go. There's a popular deity in your fort known as the Sloppy, and they keep making statues of it. What is it? Or what does it represent, rather? Just hauling that. Anybody else grab one? You did. Shake break did. Still want to fight. What squad are you in, Shake break? This lower squad. We'll get them training. Shake break. You're in this squad. You should go train. Or you're too busy socializing. After work today, uh, if you make a meeting zone, stone coat, and then select make new temple, don't actually make the new temple, but just hover over the name of the god. It will, it'll tell you. It'll tell you what they represent. It's one of my favorite little settings in Dwarfort, actually. There we go. A lot of dwarves have now claimed these amulets. There you go. You're over here. Doing the thing. Because I need to solve this fight need, which they need to make it up to actually being a wrestler in order to do. So let them train and we'll let these dwarves socialize down here. Of which they're singing, turns out. And it's party time chat, which means grab your favorite party emotes and post them in my chat. You know, they could be mine, just any others. I'm pretty sure we're about to get the tavern song because of the way it ended. There it goes. Oh, round of beers. The cool or demon man, he can do see what's up soon.
It is kind of funny, the banger song going on, and there's barely any dwarves in the, in the tavern. Because <laughs> half of them are up there training, and, you know, the rest are off doing gosh knows what. What? Are you able to acquire something? Want to acquire an object. Mate, I'm trying to make you acquire an object. So many opportunities for you to go acquire an object. Go acquire an object. Instead, you're just like, you know, standing in the hallway. I mean, live your life, I suppose. You've moved up to novice. You've moved up to novice. You're still in dabbling. We'll wait for a ran day to hit novice, I think. There you go. Martial training need is satisfied for you. Rende, I will remove you from this squad. Uh, Ral, we can also remove you from this squad. Oh, wait. You're the leader, so I can't really do that. Um, Shake Break, who's the manager. Satisfied after improving fighting. Listen to that song in the car a few times. It's a pretty good kid's song. I could see that. Let's make a rock toy for the kid. Two K more points and you shall have a dwarf of your own. I do have it disabled today. I'll pro I'll enable it at some point, but the reason I have it disabled is because like there's so few dwarves we would have named them all already. So I'm just kind of hoping that I'll get a Migrant Wave. And if I get a Migrant Wave, I'll enable it. But I just... I'm holding off until then. Yeah, so save the points, basically. Hmm. Tubby, I can remove you from this squad. We'll basically just let these two... Train. Ral, who's, like, not got any health problems, but is getting tired constantly. Um, let those two train. Yeah, still at 15 dwarfs. So, currently, priority is keep the 15 happy and slowly build up the fort. Otherwise... Like I said, I will basically give this fort today and maybe one more stream to see if we start getting traders or migrants. And uh, if we don't, mm -mm, I I don't think we'll be able to go much longer or do much more with this fort, which is a shame, but kind of is what it is, you know? Um, I'm going to wetness. Don't want to acquire something. Actually, how am I doing on tanned hides? Not great. I could make, let's make leather hood. We'll make five more. Make them out of elephant leather. Yeah, I also really like this one, too. NFL. It would be a shame. I mean, I could retire it and reclaim it as a different faction. Or abandon it, rather, and then reclaim it as a different faction. That would actually be a pretty accurate, like, story bit, I would say. Do I not have... Hold on. Hmm. Odd. Any plump helmet seeds in there? Well, let's just do this then. <laughs> if they don't have any plump helmet seeds there, we'll just harvest some. Yeah, I I too really like the uh, this this particular theme. So I will be sad if it goes.
Yeah. At that point, I might even just continue it. It would just be a different faction. Actually, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. If um, if I don't get traders from the mountain home, we'll abandon this fort. And um, then the faction that I'm trading with, who is... Uh, the circle, the castle of fellowship, which is a dwarven sieve, apparently has a miller in charge of it. Um, we'd get, we, we'd let these, th we, th but rather, we'd reclaim it as this faction. Because that would make a lot of sense, but, and I don't really have water in any crazy enough places that, like, it would be completely screwy. So I think that's probably what we'll do if we don't get a migrant wave. Or rather, if we don't get traders. If we do get a migrant wave, then I don't know exactly what I'll do, but we'll figure out a, a solution, I think. But I don't mind micromanaging some dwarves for a bit. It is fun. Um, it's you who really wants to acquire something. Store item in stockpile. Maybe that'll lead to you acquiring something. Nope. It's a large pot. Can organize big fort and don't send invasion for the party. You organize a big fort and don't send invitation. Oh, invitation for the party. What do you mean? By don't send invitation for the party. What, what, what does that mean? <laughs> okay. Um, let's start scheming together. Lava reservoir, or uh, lava pumps. Those go all the way down to there. I'm pretty sure I can just do this. There we go. That'll do. Oh, like we forgot to just invite anybody. Well, I mean, the the faction that, that we're playing as is very heavily at war with another dwarven faction. So it's not the biggest surprise because it's likely that like the mountain home is just under permanent siege or something to that extent, right? So it's not that big of a surprise. It just kind of sucks. <laughs> That's all. Like it's, to me, it's not a, it's not a massive surprise that we're running into this issue. It's just, it's kind of sad that it's happening more than anything. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just go all the way up and down the side of this to make this easier for us. I'll wall it all in later. Is that dwarf like a particular kind of item? Maybe they'd go for it? Maybe. Let's try that. Uh, terminal wetness. What kind of items do you like? Quivers. Figurines. Not really stuff thing that you would acquire. Acquire, though. Um, I don't think figurines actually get acquired, do they? Let's also go back to decorating with bone. Because I've got tons of bones.
Let's see how Shake Break is doing. Still don't have the need to fight Sorted. I wonder. Do I have any caged animals I could tell you to wrestle? Nope. I don't really want to tell you to wrestle anything. <laughs> I mean... Okay, so I could take this squad, run them up here. Oh, wow. They're, uh, we got wild boars. No, I'm just th I'm thinking I could remove like a single troglodyte and tell them to beat it up. What do you think? Just to like deal with that dwarf's need to fight? It's because we, we haven't had a single trade yet with the mountain home. Our, like, status with the mountain home is just, like, not bad. It just is non-existent, really. Gladiator pit? Nah. I need to satisfy this dwarf's need to fight. And I need to do it, like, right now. I don't really have time to make a gladiator pit. But I do need to satisfy this dwarf's need to fight. Are you not entertained? Well, I hope you are. Genuinely love that movie. What? I was not expecting it to get just like removed like that. Okay, let's just... Hmm. What is whose population? My my faction's population? Um, I, I, I think it's in the 6,000s, but they're completely surrounded by a faction that's like 10 times the size of theirs that is at war with them. That And I was playing that faction and actively... <clears throat> and actively, like, for lack of a better term, um, beating the ever-living shit out of this faction for a good long time. So, like, it doesn't really matter <laughs> what the population of that faction is. Why can't I pass through this troglodyte? Okay, let's just go down to here and forbid all these. I'm in an ad break. I thought it might have gone out hunting. It didn't have anything in its combat log, and there wasn't a hunting combat log, so it may have been trying to, and the thing may have left the map. I'm kind of hopeful it will. What's actually on the map right now for wild animal? Um, well, you've got the pile of troglodytes and a bunch of troglodyte babies. Yeah, it's just, it's just the wild boars. So it could have been going after a wild boar that left the map. Could have been. Okay, let's sort your need for fighting Shake Break. Get back up here, dwarf. You know what, screw it. I will just assign one troglodyte to this. And move the other troglodyte back over to this. Because I'm not sure how to differentiate between the two of these. There you go. One's unassigned. There we go. Lia is coming to move the troglodyte. There we go. So it appears that my manager 
is very enthusiastic about beating up this troglodyte and immediately starts um, kicking the troglodyte in the left foot, fracturing the bone. Um, and then it says, in the midst of conflict, I'm not scared. He then punches the troglodyte in the right upper arm with his right hand, bruising the bone. The force bends the right shoulder, bruising the muscle and bruising the bone. The manager then kicks the troglodyte in the lower in the right lower arm with his left foot bruising the muscle the force twists the elbow tearing apart the muscle and bruising the bone and tearing apart the muscle and bruising the bone a ligament has been bruised and uh an attendant has been bruised and shake break the manager says i cannot stand by this requires an answer and then punches the troglodyte again you big meanie mint syrups um well fortunately we have um now satisfied his need to fight so that is good um they're both terrified but I'm sure this is okay in the long run. Uh, we are going to dump this corpse into the volcano and um, rest in peace, the, 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 the troglodyte. <laughs> or rather, the lava pit, not really a volcano, but false advertising. But, y you know, we're, we're, we're going to do it. I clean up all the blood first, though. Just make sure that we are cleaning up refuse. Yes. Okay, well, hopefully that gets removed in a timely manner. The poor troglodyte. I, I mean, hey, I, I needed to solve that, that dwarf's need to fight. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Oh, I need more drink. Time to brew some drink. Always a magical time. Sure this is okay in the long run? Well, not for the troglodyte. But everybody's happier now. So, I mean, it's good for my dwarves. I, I don't... I, it's certainly not good for the troglodyte. <laughs> that part's a given. Imagine trying to sleep while a giant bat flaps in and out of your bedroom. Rough week, Creed. What a rough week. <laughs> no. Dr. Y. Just because, like, I, I only name animals in very specific situations, and I don't name things that aren't a member of my faction. So... I realize that that is a silly request that people make all the time, but it's just going to either A, die, or B, leave the map, and then never come back. So you'd be wasting your points. Um... Could somebody go answer Frank Fingerprint Invalid's question in the DF Save sharing room? I don't really sit, want to sit here and type staring blankly at my screen for a minute. Okay, Ethereal Elephant. You have a stockpile and you can't get them to move stuff from one stockpile to another because you need to remove the stuff from the previous stockpile or set it up as a linked stockpile, which I wouldn't do because that shit's complicated as all hell. Oh, the dead walk. Hide while you still can. Lovely. Lovely, 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 lovely. Uh, you didn't get plus one kill, no. Shake break did. And one kill. And it was a troglodyte. How can you get them to remove it? You have to select the stockpile, go into the stockpile's settings, and remove the items from the stockpile. You don't really get the dwarves to do things. You give the dwarves vague suggestions, and sometimes they decide to listen to you. It's it's more of much more of a god game than a direct control game. So set things up and then hope the dwarves do it is generally the way this works. This dragon uh, really is the cave tit mouse of Flounderveleks. You're supposed to write words that are words, not words that aren't words. Uh, leather shoes are the prettiest kind of handwear uh, available for alligators. 
uh, hideous laughter reverberated uh, endlessly can uh, cause the brain to melt like butter, which makes onlookers swoon for cabbage. While it... What? No. Onlooks the math numbers. Words. Plus is not a word. Alright, so we have... An Axdorf corpse, and then... You know, these same guys keep showing up. It's always Ink Kel Ink Tower. Wait, hold on. Is one of you named Esmil? Dude, I think the um I think I I think that these necromancer experiments got married. I think they got married while they were here last time. Or in between. So, I have two options. I can release the trogs and laugh maniac and laugh maniacally. Or I can try and cage them. Oh, they're definitely on their honeymoon now. Absolutely. What do you think, chat? Try and trog them to death? Or see if they attack me? Just double check. All right. It isn't the smallest siege, but hopefully we can get the zombies into here. It's a short marriage ending in marriage ending in tragedy send in the troglodytes. Oh trust me, this will just force it to end in tragedy. Comes the first hammer dwarf corpse. Two axe dwarf corpses. The door the corpses will absolutely attack us. But first they're going for the Oh no, the wild boars are gonna go get stuck in my cage traps, aren't they? Oh that's gonna be annoying. Um, okay, that was that. Where did this... Okay, for a second there, I thought one of my dwarves was bringing a wheelbarrow up, and I was like, no. Okay, well, on the bright side, I can get weapons from them. That's a wild boar in a cage. Killing another wild boar. Horribly. The, zom the zombie dwarves are brutalizing this wild boar. And the frame rate suddenly goes bye-bye for a moment. I'm not sure why, but it seems to be coming back now, which is good. Okay, that's one, I'm assuming. One, two, three, four. Hmm. There should be a bunch of load cage trap jobs. Although it depends on how many extra, oh, I have them all forbidden, don't I? Already have. Let's Brella Tango. There's a zombie over here who's heading over. Probably was the one chasing this wild boar who's currently running away while terrified in conflict. Um, what about the... So there's still four necromancer creatures. Start tame training the wild boar for lunchtime. They're just hanging out up here. Almost looks like they're leaving the map. Nope, they're just hanging around. I see combat. Is that new combat or, nope. Okay, there's this zombie. Doesn't appear to be too bright. Rather dim that. OK, 
Okay, so I've got a few cage traps that do need to be filled. I think I can just throw the zombies off a cliff. I should be able to just toss them into a pit, but I have to be careful. Okay, so since I've done that, I'm actually going to release the trogs now. I'm going to lock this. Because I want them to run out of ammo, right? So suddenly there is now a whole bunch of troglodytes on the surface who are just running off the map and... Well... You know, I can't hate them. They're very efficient. What were you just in combat with? Oh. Giant bat, apparently. And a bunch of them are just hanging around the front door. Well, who let the trogs out? I mean, we already have the answer to that. So where are that zombie at? Hopefully go fight with trog? Go fight trog, zombie. Or maybe climb a tree or whatever you happen to be doing. They're all going to come running back in when I close the door, aren't they? And uh, these guys seem very uninterested in the whole ordeal. Well, okay. Quick potato action? What's that mean? Hey, Rhino. They do like just kind of hanging out, don't they? Hmm. I liked how a bunch of them just like immediately like vacated the map and then the rest of them are like, eh, we'll hang out, we're good. Shadow Absorber wants you to post beers, chat. Let's post beers. Okay, so most of the dwarves I'm assuming Man, you are real angry after getting into an argument. Okay, let's just go here and pause both of these jobs. Go up to here, pause everything that isn't immediately necessary. Spinning a whole bunch of thread here, as well as processing plants. Although I think I'm going to delete the process plants job. I'll just let you finish spinning the rest of the thread. Ah, we're out of food storage items. Need to make more um, rock pots, I think. Let's make 10 more and we'll make them out of, um, <clears throat> make them out of obsidian. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with the obsidian pots. I like the black pots. I do like the black pots. And the dwarves can hang out a little bit, socialize. And go up to the temple a little bit. Okay, that's it. I need to remove the front gate from the temple because that's just ugly looking. Go inside. There you go. Okay, so over here, we're going to start building this up. And also, we're going to start making some more rock blocks. Let's make rock blocks and, surprise, also rock blocks. The rock blocks and also the rock blocks we're going to make is 20. Went to 20. And those are going to be... Right of light down at the bottom there. And granite. So 
This makes you think. You've been talking about how you only want bins in certain stockpiles. What situations do you want bins in? Clothes. Clothes and armor. Clothes, armor, weapons. Um, stuff that I want to be specific about offloading or have specific stockpiles, I don't want those in. Also, I can turn these off. Dump these. Let's reassign you to this. Not that, though. Gems are fine. Yeah. Leather's fine. You just don't want leather mixed with cloth. Basically, bins are a good thing for mass storage of completed objects. They're not so great for materials, I guess is the, the easier way to refer to that. Yeah, they're also great for bars, <clears throat> which doesn't actually go for everything too, because once again, they're, they're great for, uh, they're, they're not great for um, if, if you're mixing certain types of cloth, but are great for other things. Yeah, it's um kind of tricky. Okay, who's getting more upset? It's Laia. Or after watching a performance. God. Damn, my nose, it hurts. Um, right after watching a performance, what do you want? You know, there's a creating a great work of art. Finds the pursuit of knowledge to be a waste and of effort and respects the development of a skill. Fearful in the face of imminent danger. I don't know what to do with this dwarf. I'm trying to keep everybody really happy because there isn't really much else to do in this fort. You're a competent. You know, I'm going to make Lie into a performer. Because I need to find something that this dwarf likes to do. The big issue that I have is they are constantly getting into arguments. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Although another, like, just a tidbit about bins is I would, um, I would only make, if you're going to make bins, on oh shit, they're fighting with giant coyotes. Oh shit! Ink Tower is dead. Ink Tower was killed. Look at that. Thanks for the free crossbow. Giant coyote. That should break the siege, I would think. Yep. Lightast is also dead. So this. Coyote killed two of them. What is an eagle woman scholar? It is a scholar who happens to also be an eagle person. I would, in fact, like to catch the big puppers, but... Let's see if they get the zombie. Because there's one zombie left. Oh. <laughs> it was horribly murdering... all of the troglodytes, apparently. Yep. Uh, they kept punching it, but it's, their attacks were glancing away. Oh shit, you've got a Warhammer? I would like that. Very much so. Alright, come on, coyotes. Oh, scary pups. Get them! Food, enemies, cavern layer, and happiness? Okay, well I think you have found all the things you need to improve on then. You need to... Uh, first and foremost, um, figure out how to stop enemies from getting into your fort. Uh, and you need to figure out how to maintain happiness. Those are two very achievable goals. If you're having problems with enemies in the caverns, when you initially enter the caverns, block off an area, right? So you don't want to let them get into your fort. Um, you could go pretty extreme like I did with this one where... I just made it so that it's impossible for um, 
things to get into my fort altogether, right? So that's an option. Option B would be kind of a, well, if you can't stop things from getting into your fort, maybe you can um, minimize their ability to get into your fort. Uh, use cage traps and such. Uh, if it, And then for farming, you can always farm on um, uh, soil made from mud. So you can uh, connect or use buckets to dump water onto stone, and that'll make mud, which can be farmed on. You know, I've answered this question like a hundred times in the last 72 hours. No, Hoff. There is, they can leave through the caverns. They cannot enter through the caverns. That is a strict no. There is no way to do that. The game is not capable of that mechanic. As neat as it would be, it's just, it's not a thing the game does. Okay, where is this zombie at? Actually, Laya, what are you up to? So, something I need to do right now is I need the gear from these goblins. I'm going to make a garbage dump right here. I'm going to go down to where I've got trash, and I'm going to lock this door so that they can't get to that garbage pile. And then I'm going to go to all of these, and then I'm going to say dump. But what I'm going to do next is I'm, I'm going to go to the actual uh, cages themselves and say, no, actually, don't dump that. And what's going to happen is all of the gear, theoretically, should be dumped off of these characters, and then I can throw them into the lava. We'll see if it works. Here's hoping. So it says you're going to go dump item. Let's see what you dump. There we go. Look at all this gear. Look at it all. We got steel gauntlets, steel leggings, earthen conflagrations. These dwarves seem to really enjoy the military stuff, so we're actually going to give these guys metal armor uniforms. Also, going to get them training. We're going to put the rem or some of the remaining dwarves, I guess, over here to this squad. Um, and then we're going to go up to the tavern, or just above the tavern, and we're going to tell them to train again. Yep, there they are. So you are going to go get to get new gear now. Update your weapons. Oh, wait, duh. <laughs> Should probably actually um, unforbid them so that they are acquirable. Update gear. More stuff's getting thrown in. Update gear. They love to see it. I think it's just like gloves and such, but... And there you go. We also have a steel crossbow, so I could actually assign a dwarf to hunting. But I just want to train these dwarves up enough so that we can go get rid of that one zombie. Well, on the bright side, we now both have helms. So what did we get? What did we all get? Steel battle axe, pretty good. Steel chain leggings, gauntlets, bismuth bronze shields. That's and the bronze helm. That's like not bad. Damn, dude. Dumping water on stone. Yeah, and the way the way you dump water on stone is you use the pit pond tool. You go one layer above where you want the water to go. You make a pit pond like this. And then you set it so that it's a pond. It defaults to being a pit where you can throw animals into it um, or prisoners. But we're going to set it to being a pond. 
What do you do with dwarven prisoners from other civs? There's absolutely nothing you can do them. You can use them as target practice if you want to be a meanie. If you want to be nice, you can let them go. You could crush them under a drawbridge, throw them into a volcano. The world's pretty much your oyster, aside from you cannot make them yours. Something that's really funny about this game to me is that the developers of it are very dedicated to making sure that there's no slavery. The problem with this is because the developers are very dedicated to there being no slavery, um, the result is sometimes there's weirder things. Like, well, we can't like keep these prisoners because there's nothing we can do with them. Batome wants to fight, so we're gonna put Batome into this squad. Are you the leader of the other one? Ah, you are. Um, let's just make Rende the leader of this one. Let's see what gear you get. It's kind of funny to me that picking up a weapon for fighting with doesn't satisfy acquire an object. Creative imprisonment methods? Certainly. I couldn't reasonably do with uh, into a wall and forgot about them? Wait, really? <laughs> Like, you just had, like, hundreds of dwarves that weren't technically on your side, just behind a wall? That's kind of dark. For a second there, I thought that this honey badger was labeled as an invader, and I, I thought that was very funny, but it's not, and that makes me kind of sad now. But it is fight- it is- the, 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 the zombie is trying to fight with the honey badger. <laughs> So that is kind of funny. It's never going to catch it, but still funny. All right, let's um, pause game because I'm in an ad, but I'm going to place all of these cages with the zombies in them right here. And we'll just see if I can throw them into a pit. I'm not entirely certain I can, but I'm going to try. Which means if I lose a dwarf, we lose a dwarf. Let them eat trogs is a very terrifying thing to say. <laughs> I'm also going to put a hatch down here. Only after being away from family for too long. How about you? Went to fight. Mate. Come on. You had a big hall once with the tavern zone in the middle of it, and all the criminals uh, were chained at the walls. You know, it's real fun um, to uh, actually combine your tavern with your prison because what I find happens is that the tavern, uh, when it's combined with the prison, the result is that the dwarves will actually go and like sing and dance and like basically make them quite a bit happier, which I think is kind of awesome. So dwarf axe dwarf. That one, okay. This one. So I'm going to tell my military to go stand right down here. And if this shit goes south, then it goes south. At least it won't go east or west. Okay. I like how this dwarf still has the sprite. Okay, sweet. So I can just straight up throw zombies into the volcano. That's good. Let's throw another one in. 
This is Goblin. But um, yeah, if you actually make the tavern part of the temp, the, the prison zone, they will serve them drinks. Uh, they will dance as part of the other dancers and take part in all of the tavern activities, which I think is kind of awesome, actually. Meet Obsidian. We're just going to keep slowly mining out this layer. Oh, that, that one's already in. Let's just get the last two cage traps down here. And I think that considered the siege dead because, well, there's now no longer zombies in my fort, so. No, um, you know how you can connect different... Okay, here. Uh, let, let, let me show you. So if I go to my... Pri to, I don't know my prison. If I go to my tavern, uh, which is right here, right? I can go into the tavern, and I would probably remove a portion of the tavern zone right there. And then what I would do is I would make the dungeon right here, okay? And it says it's overlapping because I would have removed this part of the tavern, right? And then what you do is you click on this plus symbol, and then you can select the tavern. The dungeon is now part of the tavern, meaning dwarves will walk into the dungeon zone and do normal tavern things in the dungeon. Yeah, so you connect the two zones together. That's what you do. Very much helps the moods of your prisoners. I think Arende is the least happy dwarf in the fort, aren't you? Nope, it's Laia, who's currently digging. At least you're satisfied at work. I mean, not intentionally. Only if they fall asleep. I see, you know, I'll be honest with you. I cannot remember the last time I had a dwarf die or anything die for that matter, like human um, of alcohol poisoning in my tavern, due to a tavern keeper. I can't remember the last time that happened. I, I know it can happen, but I couldn't tell you the last time I saw it happen. So I guess the proper answer is probably it could happen, but you know, the, cas the number of casualties are probably pretty negligible. You thought it was fixing a recent patch. No, that's a designed mechanic. That's an intended mechanic. Um, I know that um, necromancers can be given alcohol in the most recent patch. So if you have necromancers in your fort, you really should be doing that. Like having tavern keepers. Okay, I have a question. Did, did that human that you had die, did they have a... Did they have access to somewhere to sleep. Nobody actually misses that. You miss the concept of that, Anander. Because if you attach a dormitory to your tavern or just have a dormitory, they will sleep in the dormitory and not the tavern. And when they sleep in the dormitory and not the tavern, then they don't get served booze while sleeping. I think this dwarf is literally sitting at the bottom of the lava sea. Yeah, literally sitting on top of semi-molten rock, burning. <laughs> you don't have, you didn't have a dorm yet. Yeah, so you need somewhere for them to sleep. As long as if you have somewhere that they can sleep in that isn't your tavern, they will like. If they have somewhere to sleep in that isn't your tavern, they will satisfy large portions of that need. And then they won't have, like, alcohol dumped on their head because they're not in the tavern. So make sure that you're, like... Basically, what I would do is if, you're, if your public tavern has a tavern keeper, also have a public temple that obviously doesn't have a tavern keeper, 
allow your Eight. like visitors to go into that temple and then connect a dormitory to that temple because then they can sleep in that dormitory. So when they need a place to sleep, instead of just falling asleep on the floor in the tavern and potentially getting drowned, which is what causes that, let them go somewhere where they can deal with their needs. So don't make bedrooms assigned to the tavern. Make a dormitory. Or actually make enough bedrooms that your dwarves can't claim new ones. I, I mean I don't know I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to give you a solution but if if you just want to say that that's not a solution then okay don't do that it's the reason I said dormitory not bedroom but yeah of course your dwarves will claim bedrooms because your dwarves need bedrooms whereas like visitors generally don't claim bedrooms. Yeah, I, I, I also love it. I think it's a great mechanic. It's a mechanic I really like. Because irresponsible dwarven bartenders is a very dwarven thing. What about... Jake. Okay, let's end this training sesh. These dwarves. Get them to go do anything else. So be careful, Zwari. I'm not necessarily the best person to go to for empathy. If you need to vent, you're welcome to, but my responses are not necessarily going to be empathetic because I'm not necessarily the most empath I'm not generally the most empathetic person. So just a heads up. You obsessively tile floors of every bedroom in your fort? I do the same thing. I don't know. I feel you. Uh, Lund 2.0, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. But yeah, drugs are scary. I refuse to take opiates when they're prescribed because they scare me, <laughs> to be honest with you. That's how, that's how my brain works. I think I tried to communicate this to you yesterday. All this conversation is giving me anxiety, mate. <laughs> I'm happy that you have a solution, though. Fort's going all right. We may have to retire it or abandon it and reclaim it with a different faction because I'm not getting migrants, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, the faction that we're playing as is very heavily at war, which mm, going into this fort, I kind of had the suspicion that this would be a problem. Um, but I was kind of just hoping it would not really materialize into a permanent problem, but I think it might be. So because of that, um, we may have to retire and then reclaim it as a different faction, which is all right. You know, Frago, you're allowed to just say, good afternoon. <laughs> That's so ominous. Your existence has been noted. What? What does that mean? Am I about to be kidnapped or something? <laughs> Hmm. 
Maybe. Hmm. I don't have much money, so it's not really... Wouldn't be worth it to kidnap me. Full stop. At least it wouldn't be worth the criminal charges you'd get. Could it be Armok sees your efforts being noted? But I am Armok, at least in my headcanon. The player is Armok in my headcanon, so... Doesn't quite work. For four whole lettuce? Uh-oh. I don't know if I can lettuce that much go. I do like that Shake Break is just, like, keeping their gear on. That's kind of fun. That's rude, log power. I can see. I'm visually impaired, not completely blind. And also, I would probably break their arm. I'm better in fights than people give me credit. Or... There's, like, two of those. So... Eh, I think I'd have a fighting chance. Althane. Just because there's people out there who think I play this game wrong doesn't mean there's a lot of them. It's in the stream tags, Lock Power. It's all good. I would agree with this, Amanda. All right, so we're going to go up here and we're going to make them a proper temple for the buff fellowship. And we'll get the value up high enough so that I can, you know, make them slightly happier so that they can perform the rites in their temple correctly. The threaded obsession of being... Generally, I find that, like, the Dwarf Fortress subreddit, like, that kind of stuff doesn't really stick around there very much because when people start getting gatekeepy about how to play Dwarf Fortress, they generally just get, like, muted or downvoted into oblivion. Turns out that that actually is a pretty effective method of getting rid of people that are being real annoying. Um, what do I have for bars currently? One Platinum and one Electrum. Bruh. Boy, oh boy. It's basalt. I feel like... I found metal and basalt previously. Chat, can, can iron form in basalt? Actually, I'm kind of concerned now if I do reclaim this fort, the lake might be in my fortress. Fortunately, it's not actually that much water, so it would drain pretty quickly. But kind of concerned about that all of a sudden, because it actually is kind of a very real possibility that that could happen. Well, things that work like that in real life generally work in Dwarf Fort. Dwarf Fortress does a weirdly good job mimicking real life when it comes to rock stuff like when it comes to this kind of geology. All right, just double checking that we are not in the burrow. We are not. Doors are just smoothing walls, which is fine. How's the value of this? Once this is a temple. It's not quite a temple. Actually, I don't I guess I won't be able to recognize priesthood, which is a shame, but at the very least, it's now a place that they can go pray if they would like. Kiddos playing make believe. How happy is Kiddo? Pretty neutral? All happy thoughts though. 
Also, Lyasis being the least upset dwarf in the fort. Well, this is good. Uh, she feels empathy after remembering suffering a major injury and mulling over the reoccurring memory changed her personal tendencies. What did it do? Apparently, uh, dwelling upon a new romance uh, made you become more altruistic and you learned to value merriment. So you went from, like, not enjoying, like, you know, um, merriment to slowly starting to enjoy merriment. So it made you even more altruistic. So you're, you're now truly fulfilled by assisting those in need. A human caravan has arrived. Well, that's exciting. They've also brought elephants. I like how common elephants are in this world. So where's that zombie though? That's the, that's the question. Oh, must have died. I know that's an ironic thing to say, but it's likely the truth. All right. Also, chat, we're into early summer, so please do me a huge favor right now. Cross your toes and fingers and hands and arms and legs and teeth or and hairs, hair follicles and whatever else you got. Um, because here's hoping that the dwarves arrive to trade with us this year. The dwarves being my faction, not that other faction. Now that we've done that, let's do amulets. Sure, that'll be fine. You crossed your eyes too? I, you know, I can't actually do that. Fun fact about my eyes. I can cross one, but only one. It's actually impossible for me to properly cross my eyes. It used to drive me insane when I was a little kid because I, I would try and do that and it would just confuse the hell out of other kids. Actually, here, let, let me show you something. Well, it's real weird. But that's all I can do. And the other thing that I can do is this. It's like I can make my eyes jitter. Which, uh, interestingly enough, was something I couldn't not do when I was little. Um, when it was part of the reason why all eye doctors thought I was completely blind when I was born. Because the uh, birth defect I have in my face is so rare that none of them knew what it was. So I can like make my eyes jitter and I had to like train myself to not do that all the time as I grew up. It's not super uncommon that people can do the eye jitter thing, but yeah. Ping pong with your eyeballs? Oh, like one goes one way and then it bounces? That's wild. No migrants yet? Nope. Well, we did, we did get the first two migrant waves. We haven't traded yet is the problem. But at least we're trading with the merchants now, the humans. Uh, so this is the chief treasure, treasurer, Lagi Iviki. That looks like an elven name, but I'm not sure if it is. Neokai, thanks for the five bucks. Sup, dude? Appreciate you. Thanks for the first bits and those last bits. Got some subs recently, but two hours ago. Thank you. Means a lot, man. Um, I would like... Iron anvils. Please bring me iron anvils. And, um, and then I can melt those down. Please also bring me iron and silver. They want sheet and tanned hides. Well, I can sell them tanned hides next year.
Can't do what on mobile? All right, four, three, two, and also hello, suited giraffe. How goes Newfort? Uh, we are praying for a migrant wave. I, by that, I mean being able to trade with my home faction because they haven't shown up yet, and we are on year four, I think. No, that's fine. I need more iron anvils anyway. Because currently I only have one iron, one anvil and I haven't found any iron. So I would like to have at least two. So I'm asking for anvils so that I can get more anvils. And bars to actually use. And I can melt them down if I get too many. Um, I will take that copper bar though. Did I set dwarf's limit? Nope. Nope, I did not. Brought a dog, a water buffalo. Ooh, they brought purple amaranth beer. Reindeer's milk. Prickleberry wine. Strawberry wine. I'll take them all. Thank you very much, friends. Brought a silver morning star. An iron shield. I will buy the iron shield. And, um, hmm. Also buy those strawberries. Stay cheap. And I think I will buy... Okay, no, I won't buy one cheese. Values don't stack up good. I'll buy the fish. They're cheap. Okay, that's how much I can afford. Done. All right, so... Now that we've done that, we're going to go up here and say, make us some chisplas. So we can bring that milk over and make some reindeer cheese. Yeah, do not buy bits on mobile. Under any circum under no circumstances should you buy bits on mobile. We're actually just going to pause this briefly and instead make them from fruit. Because we're going to have strawberries now. There they are. Strawberry wine. Look at that. Incoming. The fancy stirf. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I, you know, for, for a good long time there... Um, I'm actually going to set it so that they can cook those seeds. For a good long time there. Um, they didn't, you didn't have to pay the Apple and Android tax. But when that came in, it basically went from, yeah, this is a good way to buy subs to just like, yeah, no, do not ever do that. And I kind of, it was a very annoying week. I'll put it that way. Simply put, it was an annoying week. I thought that was a dead dwarf for a second there. Uh, let's just get collect webs and weave thread into cloth. Except we're only going to do it on one of those two shops. Um, who's the most upset dwarf? It's a Rende still. Just getting into arguments, man. Hmm. I mean, Tim Sweeney is my mortal sworn enemy for one simple reason. Tim Sweeney is my mortal sworn enemy because Tim Sweeney bought and sold Bandcamp to somebody significantly worse than Epic. So, Tim Sweeney is my sworn mortal enemy, and I would fight him... Um, if given the chance, I wouldn't actually, uh, but I would glare at him menacingly from a safe distance. Um, and, uh, so because of this, um, sc screw Tim Sweeney and I hope they lose, but also I, I agree with the logic. <laughs> I 
Yeah, some dwarves are a little more specific, like this one currently seems to be. Like you're actually you're a skilled musician. Why don't I make you a performer in here actually? And let's also swap you out with Shake Break for commander of this squad. Actually, I might just get rid of this squad. Canyons of color. Yeah, I think I think we'll just get rid of this squad. Let you go attend a meeting and then go perform if you can. Because this dwarf really likes watching performances, which leads me to believe that they would probably also enjoy performing. Yeah, there is. You make a refuse pile, Dirschland. Making a refuse pile, dwarves will take clothing that is... Uh, one large X or above, um, which I think is tattered, uh, and that isn't owned, that isn't claimed, and they will just put them in those stockpiles, and then from there forward, they'll just degrade into nothing, and you get rid of them. Although, the settings need to be pretty specific, which I'm actually thinking about going, I don't think I set this up correctly. No, I did. Um, but the, the way that I recommend doing it is also um, go into finished goods and just type in where, well, not finished goods, uh, finished goods, type in where, and also um, get rid of just everything that's below here. Because dwarves don't, won't claim those items as much. They'll just throw them out and you don't need to worry about it. They'll just degrade into nothing. It doesn't upset the dwarves. Problem solved. What am I missing? Literally just dispose of clothing that isn't claimed. That's degrading. Very simple. There you go. Pleasure while performing. That's what we need to see. I'm going to add plant cloth. Right. <sighs> run out of booze and they get upset really quick? Yeah. Or like, you know, have a necromancer in your fort and then watch a dwarf get murdered by another dwarf. Then they'll get upset real quick. That's what kept happening in the last fort. It was uh, something, let me tell you. I mean, I'm in the, see, I'm in the camp of like, I don't know who is and who isn't getting ads. As somebody who play, pays for Turbo, people always assume I'm seeing ads. Um, so I, at this point, just, I just pause. Yeah, chat's got you on the what happened in the last fort question. We retired it because like I'd done everything I wanted to do with it. And it was kind of spiraling intentionally. And I didn't want it to die because I want it to be the big bad for a bit in this world. I want it to be an ongoing location. So I let it be an ongoing location. Let's see if that will help fix you, Arende. I, uh, I, I recited works and the bolts at the frilly pants and it pleases you. That's good. Discuss your problems with a friend. Here's hoping you just stop being quanky because kind of being a little bit annoying. Wait, what? There's a boar's dead. Oh, get rid of that. <laughs> okay. Let's also get rid of these troglodyte skeletons out here. I would also like to make an ammo stockpile. 
Probably also a weapon stockpile. I don't know, they change it pretty frequently. But to be completely honest with you, I don't even know how much most regions have to pay for pits. All The only, like, real thought I give it is if you feel that you are paying too much for bits or a certain Twitch feature is too expensive, just don't participate in it. The only thing that I would say is, like, recommended on Twitch is subscribe because then you don't need to see ads. Or pay for Turbo so you don't need to see ads. Do one of the two of those. But outside of that, really, I mean, world's your oyster. You can kind of just do what you want. And if that's subscribing, subscribe. If that's bits, bits. If it's not either of those things, then don't worry about it. The show's free. The show's free for a reason. If it wasn't free, it would be a subscribers-only stream, and I think that feature still exists. <laughs> um, I get ad revenue that I, I... I, Rather, it's not entirely clear, but as I understand it, I would... I get a higher portion of money per ad if you are watching and have turbo and it's siphoned out into a separate section of turbo or of my revenue for me so it's like i it's like ad revenue and then right next to that is turbo revenue why are you getting the brew from all the way over there seems a bit redundant but i mean okay i guess it's stockpile is full Yeah. Turbo if you stream jump. Like, if you're watching, like, two dozen streamers and aren't really the sort of person to subscribe anyway, yeah, just go get Turbo. Turbo's just a better value for your money, then. Uh, when a dwarf gets melancholy, they're dead. There's nothing you can do. Um, unless they've made an artifact, at which point then they will periodically snap out of it. Um, and if you s extremely heavily overcompensate it, uh, overcompensate for it when they snap out of it, it is possible for you to recover them, but pretty unlikely. Was a kid? That's unfortunate. I would say, um, if your kids are getting melancholy, make sure that they're, you go through their chores in the labor screen. And don't make them do chores that would, like, you know, make a kid want to kill themselves. <laughs> like hauling bodies and such. Oh, did they have an artifact request, but uh, you, you, you didn't notice it? That made them go mel melancholy? Yeah, failing an artifact's pretty brutal. Yeah, I mean, even I do that, right? Uh, would that be better than subscribing to you? Let me tell you this as bluntly as possible. Absolutely nothing that you can possibly do is better than subscribing to me on Twitch. If you want to support this channel, the number one best thing that you could possibly do is, subs is subscribe on Twitch. And there's two reasons for that. Reason number one, I get 70%, so it's the same as subscribing on YouTube. It's more obvious when people subscribe on Twitch, which very simply um, put... Uh, reminds other people that, hey, they can subscribe on Twitch. So it's marketing to give streamer money, basically. Um, and lastly, it's also the most consistent form of income that I have. It is the only portion of my income that I can legitimately depend upon because I know it's not going to vanish overnight, right? Every other thing that I've encountered that exists, I don't 100% trust that it's not just going to vanish. Um, so if you want to support the channel and you're like, what is the most effective way of supporting the channel? Just subscribe on Twitch. It's it's that simple. Like if, if you want to use Turbo and not subscribe, that's fine, but it's less beneficial to me. Doing all right, Spicy Topics yourself.
bits are nice because they are money that is paid out in my paycheck. And it's nice to have a paycheck in one place. That's why bits are nice. Even though they are less like financially effective than tipping directly. Personally, I would prefer you use bits over tipping directly because it's easier for me to budget around a paycheck than it is for like a drip feed of money. Tips are nice. Um, but like I said, it's harder for me to budget around those. Um, and, uh, Patreon is like what I would say I would recommend you do if you're already subscribed on Twitch, because you don't really get any material benefits or if you're not ever going to watch a live stream, then Patreon's probably the better option. But if you already watch on Twitch and you want to support more, Patreon's the best option then. That's that's basically like the tier list, I suppose. <laughs> Streamer support tier list video coming to a stream near... Oh, that'd be awful. Fucking Jesus Christ. Um. Okay, let's get some more granite. I feel like we should make this temple a little bit nicer. Meditate on hunting. You know, I'm going to start... I'm going to assign a few dwarves on to hunting. Have I started the jeans industry yet? Unfortunately, uh, we can't make jeans, but I do have uh, some bits and pieces for my dwarves now. Such as uh, leather pants. About as close as we're going to get, I think. Storf is meditating on hunting, so I was like, well, why don't I just put you in hunting? Tier lists are uh, people who want to appease the algorithm thing, and <laughs> when have I ever wanted to do that? Let's be honest. I ain't dying cotton, and I don't have access to cotton on the surface. I'm not doing surface farming in this fort, so you can theoretically all you want, but I ain't doing that. <laughs> I mean, imagine actually getting a consistent paycheck <laughs> from YouTube. That's being slaves to the numbers game, Blueheart. You know, it, it kind of sucks that YouTube incentivizes shitty behavior, but it is the reality of it. It's like, if, if you want a consistent paycheck from YouTube, you literally have to be a sensationalist git and follow all of the metas. Twitch, you have a little bit more flexibility if you've been around for a long time, so I have a bit more flexibility on this platform, which is why I prefer Twitch. Um, but unless there is a major release for Dwarf Fortress or Dwarf Fortress is on sale, YouTube hates me. To try the YouTube thing? Good luck. Took me from 2012 to uh, 2021, eh, 2020, to actually start consistently getting paychecks from YouTube. So, good luck. Let's make the bedrooms a little nicer. This one's just full of cobwebs. I kind of like that, actually. Something kind of funny about that. I mean, that's the way to do it, right? I mean... I talk about this seemingly like every three streams or so. 
but the worst part about the current era of this industry, meaning content creation, the absolute worst part about it is nobody does it as a hobby anymore. Or very few people do. The majority of people who are starting to stream right now, the moment when you think that there's something in your glasses, but there's actually something on your eyelashes, what the hell? <laughs> um, when you when when people start doing this now, they they look at the very wild. They look at like moist critical, and they go, "I'm I'm gonna do that." <laughs> uh, and so they skip the portion of trying it out, right? See if seeing if you have the personality and the desire to try and do this as a job because generally what ends up happening to people is they just ruin their favorite hobby which is video games for themselves um and i think that that's actually a real shame um it's very easy to do that in any industry like this that's self-driven uh where you have you know no boss and no guaranteed income When I like, like when when I one of my biggest issues with Twitch over the years has always just been that they made getting getting affiliate way too easy, and I know that some people around here will probably be like, "Bah!" But like, you got affiliate right away, yeah, because I'd been streaming already for like almost five years, so I already had an audience built up. I got like it was like eighty subscribers in the first day or something. Which at the time was like, you know, enough to suddenly have like, go from nothing to actually having a paycheck. But the vast majority of like, Twitch affiliates don't even have two subs. And that, all that really is, is it's just m making Amazon money for free. <laughs> um, so I, I've always kind of felt that they made it way too easy to become an affiliate. And... The re just the result is is you burn people out before they even have the opportunity to figure out if they like doing this or not. I think that's a, a damn shame. It's uh, hard to understand how much work goes on behind the scenes. I mean, it's not even that. I mean. You know, the, the kind of, like, sad thing is that recently this, this whole topic has kind of become a joke because, like, what was it, Hassan, like, stating that this is harder than a normal job? No, it's just as hard as a normal job. <laughs> Not harder. It's just as hard. A any job's a job. Right? And the, the difference is Hassan is somebody who is incapable of not working, which I was for a very long time, so I kind of feel it and kind of understand where he's coming from with it. But dude also makes millions and millions of dollars, so a lot of the actual busy work and hardship that somebody like I would have to do, his management company takes care of. Like, all of the nitty-gritty, behind-the-scenes shit, uh, he doesn't have to do because, you know, he's a management company that does it for him. Um, I don't have that. So... You know, I don't have somebody to do my taxes for me, just as an example. Um, a very normal people example. I don't have somebody to, like, manage my, my the books and give me a paycheck. I, I don't have somebody to um, actually run the business side of things. So, it's a private business. The nicest part about a normal job versus a job like this is at the end of the workday, you get to go home. Well, what he said is that this will drain you. I mean, I listened to the clip, and the context of the clip. He said it'll drain you. Which, as somebody who's had multiple real-life jobs, and also this job, it's, it's about the same. Why is learning to edit fear-inducing? What? Do you have to pay for Adobe all of a sudden? What software are you using? The curiosity. All right. That'll increase the value of the bedrooms. Makes the dwarf slightly happier with things. We could make a sheriff, but I don't see the purpose of that, really. Jinobi, thank you very much for the tier one subscription. Appreciate you. Especially considering I think the price of those just went up in Canada, yeah? It's like today.
but like add a text file. I mean, I don't do any of that shit either. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think that um, those hyper edits that you describe are necessarily good editing. Anybody can just add a bajillion effects onto a vertical video and go, "Huh? It's a bajillion effects." Doesn't necessarily mean that they're good at editing. Just means that they found the effects button <laughs> and scrolled down. Do we get value from this month at least? Cheers, dude. Enjoy the emotes. I've been told they're pretty good. Also, we're holding above 800 subs, which makes me really happy. Do nothing but the Lucas scene swipe transition. God, I'm not going to lie. I think it was episode three of Star Wars was the first movie I watched in my life where I was like, what the fuck is up with these transitions, man? <laughs> this was like the, the first time in my life where I was just like, this is bizarre. What is happening? Um, it doesn't matter if somebody's collapsing their brand once they have millions of dollars, right? Like, Peg, over in YouTube chat, you need to realize there are two mindsets you can go into with this industry, or any industry, rather, any kind of entertainment industry. There's two mindsets you can go into with it. The first one is, I'm going to make as sustainable a business as possible, which some would say is probably the smart way, right? You want to make a sustainable business. The secondary option that is actually more common, fortunately or unfortunately, that's up to you, is let's make as much money as possible in as short a period of time as possible and then get out. A lot of people like that at that tier don't care if they're tanking their brand because they already have enough money saved up in investments that they can leave and go start a, I don't know, fashion brand or um, a VPN provider or, um, you know, uh, a, a, a news blog. <laughs> like, there's all sorts of other things you can go do with your time in your life once you have fuck off money. And the the matter, the fact of the matter is, a son could stop streaming tomorrow, and never stream again, and he would probably. Ooh, there's a giant Wolverine fighting with one of my dwarves, and uh, they're dead. Well. Okay, then. Hmm. Bring out your dead. I need to make a tomb. <laughs> oh, no, it's Hugh Jackman, pretty much. That was the sitting. Anyway, he could stop streaming forever. And never really stream again. And he would still be making thousands of dollars a month. Just in residual subs. So, it doesn't really matter if somebody like that tanks their brand. If they if they want to quit, it, it's not a, really a negative. That actually is one benefit about being really, really big. Is if you do decide you want to quit, you have a free way out. Stop streaming. Like, yeah, people will come up with all kinds of drama BS around it, but, like, who cares, really? That's all this stuff really is at the end of the day is bullshit. People retire all the time. You just died on level 20? Oh, no! Those multi-tile units are so cool, eh? I need to start making tetrahedrite. right? Or mining tetrahedrite. right? Like, I can't really afford to tank my channel, right? Because if I do that, 
like, I, I, I will go bankrupt, right? That would be a very dumb decision. But somebody who, you know, averages 80,000 concurrent viewers is making more in an hour than I do in a month. So. <laughs> Don't bank the rupt? No, exactly. So we are on the 8th of limestone, early autumn. We're hoping for traders. What the fuck? Why the Yeti, though? <laughs> There's a Yeti here. Why? What? Why? Why is there a Yeti? <laughs> this isn't even like a cold place. The heck? I mean... Okay. That's kind of hysterical. Oh, right. Well, let's actually just go up to here then. I, er... Well, it's kind of, like, ominous looking, I'm not gonna lie. Actually, that's really useful. Is that connected to the edge of the map? Eh, probably. That is really useful. Darn it! No, not my dwarves. The other faction. At least they've arrived a second year. Good to have you back. <laughs> Is running from something dangerous? Probably. How far away am I from a cold area? Well, I'm in a pretty warm area. I'm just on a mountain. It's probably... A mountain up at the top. What's up, Corey? It has been a minute. Hope you've been doing all right. It's kind of a cool, cool color combo, that. Although I do not want you to do that, because then you will not be able to get back out. All right, once I've done that, I still need to make tombs somewhere. Better than dead. Damn right. It's kind of terrifying. Glad you made it through. So I'm going to do very similar tombs to the last fort because I really liked the way they turned out. Okay, there we go. Tetrahedrite. Beginning to bubble up. And this setting seems really cool. It is kind of a neat idea, but I'm still holding out hope for a little bit. Let's make 
Ooh. Let's make, let's collect 20 sand and make greens glass sarcophagus. Uh, is it coffin? A yeah, coffin. Green glass coffin. We're doing that. And we'll do 20 of them. Okay. Um, I'm going to... We've had some critter-related excitement. What kind of excitement? Oh, unless you're talking, a, it's a big bang about critter-related excitement. Uh, I had a dwarf named Ural up here uh, die to a giant wolverine. Also, apparently I caught an eye eye woman. Huh. <laughs> okay. Still haven't traded with the mountain home, though, so that's a bummer. We'll give these guys my used laundry, but... Boy, oh boy. Sell the mechanisms. Really should start cutting those gems, actually. Making other unrelated crafts. Have anything really particularly good to trade right now? I'll just sell a goblet to get it having some value here. Nope, I don't believe so. Nope, no, they have not. No, that was the uh, the humans trading person, not the dwarves. If that's if you're talking about me requesting stuff, that was the humans, not the dwarves. It was the human keeper of the seal slash royal treasurer. It's one of the two tasks usually. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting. Apparently, Twitch had just added a new um, requirement or a security layer for people who want it, uh, you can make it so, you can set the amount of time people have to have an account on Twitch to be able to follow you. Which I don't think I would ever turn on because I get a lot of follows from people who come over from YouTube. Well, that's kind of neat for people who want that anyway. Gonna slow click the dead, oof. That's, that's distressing. <laughs> That is a distressing thought, thanks. <laughs> All my dead are buried, I what? Oh, right, yeah, still need to finish trading. Um, you're conducting a meeting. Rande's still pissed. Honestly, this dwarf having a past major injury is possibly the worst, has been the worst thing to happen to this dwarf. And also had to see troglodytes dead bodies once. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's I think, probably going to be the biggest use for it is, like, ban evasion and bot spam. Like, it's a useful feature. I don't think I'll use it, though. Oh, buried in an aquifer. Bury the body and seal it before the aquifer fills. Well, that's kind of neat. 
Can't smell too good, though. Also, this can't help you at all. Let's see if I just remove your, like, manual tasks. Maybe give you something completely unrelated. Like, let's get Arende doing gem cutting. Let's do that. Um, could just put it up here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put the gem cutter here. I can't say I've ever buried bodies in an aquifer before, but that is an, e an interesting concept. Okay, we'll buy one silver bar. Brought a goose and a cat. Steal toy boat. Um, I think I'm also going to buy that one scroll from them. Buy the cheese. Buy the strawberries. Buy the tomatoes and the tomatillos. And one steel high boot. Eh, never mind. Can't afford two of them, so won't. I will buy the fancy robe and the fancy shirt. That'll work. I'm going to make a little baby library. Don't know where I'm going to put it, but I'm going to make a little baby library. Actually, here's where I'll put it. A tiny little nook in the wall. Rock bookcase. Just one. Don't really need more than one. And I kind of want to make wood table and a wood throne for it. Let's do wooden table. Wooden throne. Or chair, rather. Um, I'll make them both out of spore trees. And we'll just do two of each. Don't need too many. Sounds tasty, Darren. It's been manageable. Yeah, fair. I mean, I... Uh-oh. Hmm. That can't be good. I've apparently opened up the caverns. Hmm. Well, I don't think there's any dwarves in there right now, so let's just seal this off. Yeah, right? I was making blocks, doing various other things. Fortunately, the dwarves are all very busy. No migrants this season, all the way up to mid. Come on. I think what... Hmm. It's now the question of do I orchestrate inevitable failure for this fort? That's the next question. Because if I do... Well, then it's just a matter of time before dwarves start to die. But if we say, oh, well, they're not they're, they're not going to intentionally kill themselves or anything. They're just going to hang out until the, you know, last possible moment and then say, well, we're not going to go anywhere from here. And then they abandon it. 
green glass coffin. There we go. Got one. See, is anybody going to go construct a location? Nope. Oh, it's probably already there. Wow, dwarves are too efficient sometimes. You totally just miss it. Alright, Errol. Errol's gonna go put an item in tomb. Rest in peace. Oh no, you were being your this this dwarf was actually their friend. Well, I guess that's fitting in a way. Just make them go acquire their gear. I just have a chinchilla person running around outside. She seems rather adorable. Oops. Maybe maybe don't actually throw that one out. That's that's ear all that we need to keep around. This has to be put away by somebody. But I did kind of put the wrong dwarf into the military. Just kind of want these clothes to get removed from here, but it doesn't appear to be their task. I need to make an armor coffin and or an armor stockpile zone and a weapon zone. They pee on their target as a defense mez. I I, <laughs> I I like how don't ask me how I know that followed by it tastes terrible. <laughs> Everything about that is funny. I'm so sorry. I do like the it's it tastes terrible addition to that. It also kind of explains how you know that. So you kind of just gave away your own secret. Um also my hunting bat horribly murdering the chinchilla people. He is getting punched, though. I could tell you to just go kill the chinchilla person. It probably will help solve your need to fight. Go chill Go go chill the chinchilla person. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Doesn't feel anything after experiencing trauma. Yeah, but like... Satisfied need to fight, no? Is fine. Chinchilla head, mutilated corpse. Excellent. Leg and arm. Wow, you didn't just kill that thing. You obliterated it. Speaking of killing things, go kill this one now. And that's two. That's, it all, you also beheaded that one. I gotta just say that my dwarves are being absolutely horrible monsters. That, that's about it. Man, this dwarf just constantly gets into arguments. What a dwarf. It's constantly. Constantly. It's 26 days travel. Man. What if we were the villain arc? I mean, they're home invaders, okay? Just because they're cute and cuddly doesn't make them any less home invader-ish. They're invading my home, and damn it, they're gonna not do that. <laughs> like, that's, that's about it. It's that simple. You have a necromayer in your fort, uh, the, and that has severe injury due to a, a, a work accident, and now he just crawls everywhere instead of using crutches. So now every dwarf having a meeting with the mayor and him are just lying down on the floor in pain. 
I, I kind of love stuff like that. What in the shit is happening? There's just Wolverine people in my fort. Um, all right, so I need to wall this off, this side door. <laughs> need to get a door placed in here um, and then lock it. Logan, I mean, <laughs> I guess. I guess I also need, like, some cage traps along the side here, yeah? Just to catch them more effectively? Meditating on painting. Uh, no, but there's a link to the shop uh, in the description of every single one of my videos, Anander, in the Twitch chat right now, and also in the description of the stream by the social media links. Which don't matter, because fuck Twitter. And, you know, most people aren't the sort of people to follow me on Mastodon, and I get it. But if you are, I do have a Mastodon. Gotta go feed your wife and tiny human. Take care of your wife and tiny human. We'll see you later. Hell pain. Thanks for hanging out today. My next guaranteed stream is Tuesday. But if I end up on earlier, I end up on earlier. I do have a lot of shit to get done over the weekend, though, so we'll see. A lot of real life stuff is happening right now. Been a busy few weeks. I'm kind of just trying to get through everything I need to do before um, Adventure Mode decides to release. <laughs> Apple Bottom Graves. Oh boy, that's... Oh man. I, I like how we managed to find a lyric for a song that literally everybody knows though. Like who doesn't know that song? <laughs> It's like impossible to be a human being on Earth and not know that song. Okay, so now that I've got Tetrahedrite down here, um, I'm just gonna up to here and just say smelt Tetri. Ooh, I can make billin. Not that that's useful to me in any way. You can smelt native aluminum. You can smelt the Tetrahedrite. It won't take too long. Um, I'm gonna go back here. Well, actually, let's just do it this way. I'm gonna go right here and go pump, pump, pump. All the way along here. And this is just going to be for not all stone, just metal ores. Then I'm going to go up to here to this gem cutter shop. I'm going to say cut gems, but cut the clear zircons, uh, the amber opals. The, ooh. Yeah, I think that's all we'll do for right now. And Arende, I'm going to give that to you. Let's hope that you like your new job. Apparently, yelling at people in charge trains intimidation. That's interesting. What song are you missing? Apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. The whole club was looking at her. She hit the flow, etc. It's a song about pole dancing, I think. <laughs> Oh, 
also, I gotta say, um, it took me maybe 20 years. Okay, not 20 years. It took me maybe 12 to 13 years to realize that Florida's name was Florida. <laughs> Thank you for the high quality guides on YouTube. I think without them, you would still be stuck in marking trees on day one to this day. I'm glad you made it further than just marking trees. This game's a lot of fun, but it does require some consistency, you know? Storf is going to go pick up stuff. Oh, seems like the militia cat. Oh, nope. Ral is not currently fighting. You have not ever heard this song. You are clearly from a different generation than me then. <laughs> Which I already knew, but. It's one of those, like, it's impossible to miss if you grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s. It's like everywhere. Yeah, that's one down. Let's keep the gear on. Well, this one's just leaving the map, it looks like. But it's probably going to work its way into my fort anyway, so we'll just go deal with it. Dagnabbit, you're sticking with it? All right. I mean, I don't expect everybody in the world to have heard that song. It's not a good song. It's just kind of a funny song. It's kind of for a, it's, it was kind of a meme for its day, if you will. It was just, it's just the song that I associate with like being a kid, I guess. I mean, sure, it was a club song, but it was also played literally constantly all the time, everywhere, at all times, for no fucking reason. <laughs> but yes, certainly, it was a club song. Apparently somebody's getting stitches. Oh, Batome. Got, in got injured while fighting with a Wolverine man. And you know what? Honestly, I'm not too surprised. But still won, so... Now Cybrek the doctor gets to do the doctoring stuff. Makes Cybrek very happy. I will say under orderlies, we'll manually assign a Rende to orderlies, even though everybody is still set to do that. I do want you to do orderlies. <laughs> After experiencing trauma again? When did you fight a giant Wolverine? Also, why why did you fight a giant wolverine in the water, supposedly? What? That's not confusing at all. It's kind of wild. Okay, let's just go through here and for and pause a bunch of jobs. Even brew drinks. I got a bunch of crap that needs to get done. And I've also got a bunch of dwarves running around picking up gear. Um, I'm not sure, but there's no body in there. Meaning this dwarf clearly got into a fight and fell into the water somehow. Which is kind of hysterical. Don't get me wrong.
Seems like it was very much like a North American thing, Hobo. It was just one of those songs. That's about it. Nothing more than that, really. Just one of those songs. It was also played at a key moment in Tropic Thunder. You know, I don't believe I've ever actually seen Tropic Thunder in its entirety. How's my secret lettuce patch? Not exactly a secret, uh, but it's going all right. I have lettuce. It's good. Uh, Mom's taking the tomatoes tomorrow, which is good because they are too big for my little lights. Um, so she's going to slowly introduce them to the concept of being outside because my mom likes to micromanage plants like that. And in exchange, I'm taking hers and I'm going to embiggen them by, you know, giving them uh, my my lights, which are very bright. <laughs> All right, Joker, I'm going to give you other jobs because I, I need you to do other things like construct stuff and throw bodies away. In that order, <laughs> please. Just getting all this stuff done because it's quick. Quick and easy. And put a granite bookcase there. Table there. Table there. Chair here. Chair there. And uh, this can be a tiny library for the one book that's in this fort. Turquoise Sanctuary? You know, that's actually kind of correct because aren't sport tree tables kind of a turquoise color? <laughs> I have to give them to my mother. What, like, what, tomato plants? What could I possibly say that would be upsetting about tomato plants? So this is a manual about animal diseases. It's a, a great book, supposedly. And it's made from rutile. There's just a bunch of dead Wolverine people in the hallway. There we go, we're getting to dumping items. As we should. Uh, I don't think it's dead. It hasn't moved much. I water it maybe once every three weeks or so. So, not dead yet. <laughs> I realize that's probably a... Oh my god, you're carrying a chinchilla woman head. Uh, so, that's probably not a very, you know, act, like, descriptive descriptor, but how, how are the baby cactuses? They haven't moved much, and uh, they, they aren't dead, I don't think. I've moved it near to my window. So there is that. You have cheese pizza with extra cheese. Enjoy your cheese bread. Let's make some aluminum. Cheese! No, not everyone. aluminum cheese. Uh, let's do some aluminum. Earrings. Let's just do 10 of them. We did a bunch of bracelets. Make a little jewelry stockpile right here. And 
amulets, except I'm just going to say all quality and only aluminum. Although I could make a statue of cheese out of aluminum, but like... I feel like that would be a wee bit redundant. There you go, you've got an aluminum bracelet. Look at that! Aluminum bracelet. As you dump that coyote skeleton. Now you're gonna go store an item in stockpile. Probably one of those crafts. Maybe then you'll acquire something new. Oh, nope, never mind. Actually going to go get uh, more tetrahedrite. Go move up the higher level. Uh, ham is a... <laughs> You know, honestly, I, I I always wonder about that with, like, the popularity of, like, songs in countries that are in languages that they weren't originally written in. It's like, there's always something about that that's very much a, oh, hey, look at you. You've got your amulet on. You've got uh, probably something else soon. Probably some rings, some earrings, maybe? You're going to put on your earrings? But I always wonder about that with songs that, like, pe people listening to songs not in their native language. And you know what? I'm actually going to put a couple floor tiles right here. We'll just use basalt. Put another jewelry table here, and I'm going to start encrusting these. So that'll be finished goods, I guess, with cut gems. We're still cutting amber opals, though. That is a lot of boulders right there. Uh-oh. Moods are dropping. Uh, Tomei's upset. This is like... I, I don't know how to deal with this with this dwarf. Seems like the cavern forts have grown slowly. You need to remember, I made sure that the home faction of this fort was, like, getting completely obl obliterated into the wall. Um, so I did a very good job horrifically destroying the home faction of this fort. So I'm not too surprised I'm not getting migrants. I should be, but I'm not too surprised I'm not. I'm mostly just kind of sad I'm not. So the change of plans for this fort is going to be if I don't get traders from the mountain home... Next year, I'm going to retire this fort today and then reclaim it with a different faction. Although I will say, I'm a little bit worried, or sorry, abandon this fort and then reclaim it as a different faction. I will say, though, I'm a little bit worried that I might end up in a situation where all of the lava is in my fort or a bunch of water is in portions of the fort, so we'll have to deal with some flooding, likely. Because we are directly beneath a lake. <laughs> However... The good news is that if that does in fact happen, what I can probably do is, because we are in a pretty open cavern, it'll probably all just drain out into the caverns. Um, hopefully. I may have to try several embarks. I probably won't prepare carefully, though, because I'm really enjoying this fort's layout, and I would like to have a playable fort. Because it would make sense, you know, that, like, if they're not getting migrants for such a long time, they would abandon the fort and head home. Doesn't look like you have a torso. It isn't actually entirely black. Ginger. Metal band. All right, so now we go down here and say, eh, 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 jeweler. How many bars am I sitting on? A eh, decent number. I'm ahead of myself. There you go. Pun worthy of my bad sense of humor. Where 
Rough gems. We'll put rough gems right there. That's that one? Oh, that one shouldn't be paused. But we're getting a decent number of amber opals. Um, I'm gonna hotkey my forges. And just say encrust finished goods with cut gems. And this is also well, you know what actually we'll, we'll give this to Batome. I think, because you need a new entertainment task. And you are kind of annoyed at life. Can you go grab a tapered cut gem? This means you also have a bad sense of humor, Bastet. I hate to break it to you. There you go, aluminum earring, value about to skyrocket. Because this is 200. And this is 443. Just kind of hoping you would acquire it. Doesn't look like it. Now it's worth 600. I feel like it actually lost value. It's kind of funny, though. You love the certified minecart operator? That was one of the most knee-jerk made pieces of merch I think I, I, I have. Yeah, Cards Against Humanity just proves that everybody in humanity is capable of being a horrible person. That doesn't mean you need to, though. I really, really hate that game, by the way. <laughs> and all right, there we go. You can go back to smelting aluminum. You can go back to smelting this. Bring items in stockpiles. Just received your new motherboard and the CPU from a friend. You're going to go rebuild. You're, you're the second person today who's, gonna, who's rebuilding a computer today. What's the new CPU? Curious how much uh, DF frame rates will go. Pretty soon we're going to have to pause all jobs. It's just like cave spider silk webs everywhere. It's actually just kind of funny. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is a pretty nice upgrade. No kidding. bracelet moved. I wonder if anybody's going to claim this earring. Yeah, no, they, like, you're, you're skipping a good couple of years. Catching up to the modern era, even. Alright, well, you can learn some gem setting. Dwarf. But uh, I'm going to need to pause those jobs, unfortunately. The reason I'm going to need to pause those jobs is because we need to relax, at least. More specifically, these two need to relax. And they need to relax consistently for a while.
It helps because they had hardware fixes for the spe uh, Spectre and Meltdown, which, uh, spe you know, I, I really, some, something about tech that will forever drive me mildly insane is um, <laughs> how often they have, like, crazy code names that make them sound, way like, kind of scary. It's like, why couldn't you just name your thing something normal? God damn it. It's like Spectre. It's like, what the fuck's a Spectre? <laughs> I don't know. Let's call it like the 2010 model. Jeez. Although nothing's worse than like Ryzen. Speaking of things I need to get put away. Also going to do this, this, and this is going to be a ammo slash armor stockpiles. Two separate stockpiles. One for armor, one for ammo. Maybe also one for weapons. Three separate stockpiles? Let's see, did I get those bodies out of my hallway? Yes, I did. It's kind of bad having just like straight up three... major problem spots on the way into the tavern. Seeing more and more people in the software in industry changing that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think that product should be easily discernible and decipherable. Like, I, I remember seeing this, like, jog wheel that Ryzen was handing out explaining what their different CPUs were. Like, it was literally like a code wheel. Like, something you would have seen in the 90s. It was kind of wild. We'll put ammo there. That can get bins in it. That's fine. We'll put weapons there. And we will put armor here. But I will make this slightly smaller first. Although... Just gonna jump into here and just say no unusable armor, please. <laughs> just usable armor. Unusable armor is no use to me there. Is the asshole cat still in the building? Can you elaborate a little bit more? No, absolutely, Sean Clapper. I don't disagree with that. Saying I'm glad I'm not seeing it as much. Don't need trap components, turns out. Just because it's a known strategy doesn't make, make it cool, you know? Let's do blue diamonds. Pretty sure those two are right there. So let's just do one. And a second one. Unless those are sapphires. Ah, that's a sapphires. It's fine. Rough blue diamonds. That's one. I'm just curious about what the value of these are going to be. Twelve hundred. Not bad. You're just sleeping there. Okay. Take your nap then. Where's your bedroom? Right there? I mean, go snooze in your bedroom then. The one that tortured birds and mice. His name's Charlie. And yes, he's still in the building. He was also like seven months old at the time. So he grew up a little bit. Now he just kills the birds and mice, which is much better. If I was given the option of having to, like, listen to uh, a bird get horribly murdered um, versus it just dying is honestly a much better solution. Now, he was a kitten at the time. And the reason um, I was referring to him as an asshole, I mean, he still kind of is. He's a cat. All cats are assholes. Um, was because I, I, I'd never seen the cat before. He was a cat that showed up out of nowhere. I'm 
My favorite is like the 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 third the thirty sixty is better than the forty sixty in some ways. Hmm. I don't like cats. I've just kind of come to terms with this. Like I'm, I'm sad that my parents' cat died, but I generally just don't like cats. So I don't, I don't care what your cat does. <laughs> I know that's kind of a like an unpopular take, but I, I don't really like cats all that much. I've learned over the years that I like garter snakes and are kind of scarce local reptiles way more than cats. Is a hot fucking dumpster fire? Mm. Yeah, I haven't told my neighbor that. <laughs> that is what he bought. But hey, it's allowing him to play Helldivers, so... You're going to go for a 4070 for your rebuild? Bad that I would go with a non-NVIDIA card. You made a friend. Good for you. Joker of spades. It's midnight. Alrighty. You have a good evening. Also going to make a squad for what? Okay, I'm gonna make us a, a squad for everybody who isn't in the other squad. They're not gonna do anything for a minute, but they will. Uh, currently, we don't export much of anything because we haven't been trading with the Mountain Home because the Mountain Home hasn't shown up yet. Which is leading me to be concerned that they're dying. Which is a shame. It's also... Let's also put bracelets and earrings in this stockpile. Go down to here. And delete this stockpile. Let's move this stuff up. Is that a Batman? No, it's just a giant bat. <laughs> Could still run the latest games. Yeah, I mean, like, you can get by. If you're okay with not running everything at, like, the absolute maximum settings, you can get by with some pretty budget systems. Like, you know, I, I've been streaming full, like, pro professionally as my main source of income since 2016. I, I haven't had a top of the line PC once. I've had, like, medium-high NPCs, certainly, but... Reciting poetry. See how that makes you feel there, dwarf? Yeah, I mean, you know, the more I read and hear about... RTX stuff, the less interested I am in it. Almost no games use it. The games that do use it don't use it particularly well. I've seen games that look almost as good without using it. And it's like, yeah, control looks really, really good. Like, really, really good with it on, when it's running well, on a computer that can handle that. But the reality is I find that most, peop most, most computers can't handle that. There you go. You got yourself an aluminum earring. Nice, nice, nice. Got your bracelet. All these dwarves satisfying acquisitions. And it's party time, methinks. It's gonna make GPUs dirt cheap if this trend holds much longer. 
You mean like if the trend crashes and then suddenly everybody needs to offload their GPUs, similar to what happened with crypto, or do you mean like the other direction? And how so? Here's hoping it goes well, Big Bang. Current crypto was built back in 2013. Yeah, that's like the one next to my desk <laughs> that I haven't used in ages. We can party if you guys want, but I don't know, this conversation's entertaining. It has been nice that um, these dwarves have kind of had the opportunity to, you know, chat a little bit. What is Laya up to? Okay, you're just heading into the... up here to socialize. Yeah, that's fine. You're happy being near a fine seat. Well, that's good. Excited after remembering performing. There you go, Gazoom. Isn't Gazoom the other depressed dwarf? Okay, this is basically Arende and Batome. Who both really like performing. I mean, you're even focused right now, which means most of your needs are met. You might have to rebuild yourself. Easy anti-cheat doesn't allow virtual machines. Not gonna lie. I'm so tired of the state of anti-cheat. It is just one of the most frustrating things on earth to me. Like genuinely, I, I absolutely hate it. I love that they're playing instruments up here with dwarves down here. That's awesome, actually. Telling a story. Yeah, you do want to pray, but that's okay. If I can get them up one layer of stress. The interesting thing about doing forts like this, though, with very small populations, is you get the opportunity to really stare at how to make them happy, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm at the point now where when I see easy anti-cheat or any of those kernel-level anti-cheats, I... That's the thing that makes me not really want to play the game because I'm somebody who I bounce off of multiplayer games quickly, you know, and I know that if I'm going to buy a multiplayer game, it's something that I'm going to put like 40 hours into maximum and I won't keep playing. Like I'm not, I'm not going to be that kind of person who's going to have, you know, a thousand hours in Helldivers, right? But I, I could absolutely play, you know, a couple dozen hours of Helldivers or even like, you know, 40, 50 hours of a game like that. But when I see... Kernel level anti cheat, I go. Mm. Do I want to deal with that? And the more I read and learn about these anti cheats, and the more I look into it, the less I'm willing to deal with it. We got a joke that's truer than ever in programming about easy anti-cheat. It's called, uh, because it's easy to bypass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All I know is that Denuvo's in the news again because they are developing some anti-leaking software which they say would be best used being tagged on to review copies of games and uh, for private betas to stop people from leaking your game, basically watermarking your like the, the game window. Felt indignant after being... Oh, wow. I mean, I did bury them. So, like... <laughs> Come on, man. Lots of arguments. That's very interesting about this might this faction might actually have the most arguments I've ever seen. Like genuinely, this might actually be the most arguments I've ever seen. Probably not playing. Yeah.
And is what NVIDIA is pushing that won't play games. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. So I'm just going to scroll back up to see exactly what uh, Shinobi was meaning. Oh, no, no, never actually responded. Yeah, I, the, the AIG or a APUs or whatever they're calling them. Um, yeah, we're, that's not going to be like something that makes gaming graphics cards cheap. It's not quite like the crypto stuff where it's like it was the game. Initially, it was the gaming graphics cards that made things cheap. Then they just bottlenecked all production. Wooden cage. Uh, let's just make eight. I don't actually. Well, let's 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 make ten. I don't actually know how many I need. Um, we're gonna make tower cap, and I'm just gonna go chop down a couple tower caps, like these. One, two, three, four, five. Just making sure I do in fact still have a woodcutter. Uh, yes, Mark does. Interested after watching performance? To spend some time with family? Well, you have a lover. Get married. Then you'll be family. <laughs> you can spend some time with your goddamn family. Where's Creed at? Go marry your wife. God damn it. <laughs> Similar software has convinced all the OS and CPU manufacturers to include a safety mode in the latest gens only for said anti-cheats to now be very easy. To now be very easy way to make pirate attacks. To now be very easy way to make pirate attacks. You mean like to like... Oh yeah, I mean building back doors into things is always just going to open up windows into things so people can get into your computer. Against your wheel. It's fun stuff. Place an aluminum statue there. Bunch of those logs just fell into that water. What a waste. I mean, I believe it. Like, I, I've never really thought of myself as somebody who's dedicated enough to security to, like, run um, virtual machines, but I'm starting to think about it. Oh, sure, Shinobi, but, like, that's just graphic stuff power in general. My expectation is that, um, I, I guess I'm very much a nihilist when it comes to the future of marketed AI. <laughs> um, I kind of expect it to collapse because the longer I see it, the more I go, oh. Yeah, there's no way this, like, actually is going to have a future. Um... Yeah, but it it's a way to stop it. It's another way to stop people from getting into your accounts, but it's not that type of security. It's a different type of security, Mako. Um, but anyway, just as an example, you open your email in one and you upload stuff to YouTube in a different one. It's that kind of security. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Right. I, I'm very much a nihilist. I have a feeling, like, my expectation is that the over-dedication to APUs is actually going to bankrupt <laughs> NVIDIA. Or, like, cause them to suddenly have to lay off two-thirds of their workforce. Like, that's that's my expectation. And, um, kids, children, don't really give a shit about, you know, PCs. So I think at-home graphics cards are going to kind of go away, actually, is my expectation. But this is just me being a nihilist, right? Just expecting the worst, really. Um, is I, I expect <clears throat> the current um, audience for these things, for, like, consumer graphics cards, to go away and it to be replaced by something else or go away entirely. 
because I I don't expect. I think that like sure, ChatGPT will be around in the same way that like Cortana is still around. Um, it'll help people who are shitty at like UI and will use it to search the internet, and the rest of the in, the rest of the world will move on. Uh, it'll have its niche cases in like scientific study, but these companies dedicating their entire business model to the concept of, oh, you are going to use this shitty chat bot or this piece of software to analyze a thing at home. I just, <laughs> it slightly better Siri is still shitty because Siri sucks, right? Um, so I just, yeah, just an image of a dwarf. Could have done something more interesting, but we'll take it. But yeah, I just, I, I have a very hard time believing that the thing that they are marketing as AI right now will still exist at the level that it is at right now at peak fad. Like, it's absolute, like, the technology will continue to exist for the same way, way blockchain technology continues to exist. But all you need is, like, a good two months of everybody simultaneously deciding, fuck this thing, and it's gone. And the more I screw around with that type of tech, the less f belief I have that it's going to go anywhere. Like, it's, it, what initially started off as, like, anger and annoyance at a piece of software that was taking away people's jobs is now just depression. Because it's like, well... Sure, it's taking away some people's jobs. And it sucks. <laughs> you know, like, it is not a good solution. Yeah, but, but like, but between, like, increase in internet bandwidth and streaming alternatives to having home PCs and, you know, just the lack of interest of having at-home desktops outside of work situations. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think uh, AI is healthy. For the same reason I don't think doom scrolling is healthy, Jesse. Like, I, I genuinely look at it as a, oh, cool, another way for people to over-isolate. That's one of the reasons I, I kind of feel bad for Zoomers. I, couldn't, I would not want to have to grow up with this shit. You find a buzzword that people are willing to throw investments into, and then you yell that buzzword really loudly for a couple months. And if it catches on, then you keep yelling that buzzword. That's my interpretation of the tech industry right now, secret person. Until the next buzzword comes along. <laughs> Little do they know, you're just a bunch of buzzards feasting on cash. Greedy fucks. I, I was um, listening to a podcast recently, uh, which was Brad and Will made a tech pod. And um, they had an interesting bit where they talked about just kind of the chain, main changes in the tech industry. Uh, my Two of my turkeys have died of old age. Um, it started off, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years, 30 years ago, maybe a little longer with the idealist goal of improving society, we are so far beyond that. <laughs> it's not even like improving anything anymore. You know, to me, uh oh. <laughs> it, hold on. Is text to speech even working? Hello. Oh, there Dad. it is. I'm looking for ten billion dollars in capital to start an AI firm for telling you what color to dye your hair. Oh. The sharks proceed to argue for the next hour about who gets to throw money at them. <laughs> uh, I. Hmm. I like to think that you're just going to train it on selfies posted on Tumblr because they are selling their the tum Tumblr's data to that kind of thing now. <laughs> um, yeah, to me, Matthew, that that's just people 
Blue and like lime green. Um, to me, that's just actually no. It would be the company that paid them the most money that week. <laughs> would be the color. I, I think that all that that is is there. There is a level. Okay, so I, I don't have kids, but I am terminally online. <laughs> the gist that I get from people that were born post year 2004 is that they are in such a deep acceptance of nihilism and all of this technology is just exploding and they've all just kind of accepted similarly to I have that world's going to shit right like there was a period in the last 40 years where things got real good and were very hopeful for a bit but when yeah when you're stuck in a sea of piss it's just a sea of piss right um and so when it's students using ChatGPT to get through tests, I don't blame them. If I was that age, I would do the exact same fucking thing. As for teachers, you know, there's a lot of people in tech and a lot of people, and like there, there's a, a guy I talk to sometimes, he's a regular at, bar, at the bar I go to. He works in uh, HR for the government of Canada, which is like one of the most awful concepts for a job I've ever heard. Um, but he works for HR for jo government of Canada. And he's always talking about how he's extremely nihilistic because he's expecting to get replaced by some large language model. And he's surprised it hasn't happened yet. When you are expecting to be replaced by something, what is the natural human response? It's to put as little effort into the thing that you do as humanly possible because you are expecting to be replaced. If you are told by your managers, you are going to be laid off next quarter, you stop giving a shit. So I'm not even remotely surprised that there are teachers generating. And like, I've, I've read stories about this too. And when I first read it, I, I also wasn't surprised. I'm not even remotely surprised that there are teachers generating homework in ChatGPT. Because what the fuck else are you going to do? You're probably expecting your job to disappear. If you're somewhere that is even remotely pro that kind of shit, naturally. Well, I mean... Does it fix anything? No. But it's the human response. And like, you know, I I technically use some form of <clears throat> cough, vomit on floor, AI every day. Every single time I edit a short. Because Adobe Premiere Pro has that auto captioning device that says, built on some fucking or another AI bullshit. And it's, it's literally just like, okay, cool. It's like quite literally what I used to use, except like, three less clicks and it's quicker. Um, I used to just use Google voice to text if I really wanted captions, but now it's like, all right, I'll just, I'll do this, I guess. And yeah, it's a useful little tool. But as a whole, it's absolutely making the wor world a worse place. <laughs> I'll tell them stories. I'm a little worried about these two. It's like when machines started to show up in 1900s, who would use, you know, growing up, and this is a conversation I'm just barely old enough to remember. Growing up, we had a neighbor who was in his like late 80s, early 90s. And this was when I was like six. This was pre year 2000. So this would have been like 1999. So I would actually, I would have been five. So it would have been 1999 ish. Um, and I vaguely remember overhearing this conversation and my dad's recounted it to me a couple times. And quite literally what the conversation was is when my neighbor's dad was a kid, he went bankrupt and lost his business. His business was he was a farmer. The reason he went bankrupt was because he refused to switch from horse pulled plow to a tractor. And I think right now, a lot of people are feeling that pressure. But the best part about the story was, before he went bankrupt, his son, who was my neighbor, uh, did get a tractor, right? And so was using it on his land, or his portion of the land, I guess. But once or twice a year, his tractor would get stuck, and his dad would come pull him out. Eventually, his dad sold his portion of the land and, you know, because he just wasn't able to make ends meet doing it anymore. And then went and worked with his son. 
But like, they still kept the horses around, just in case they needed to pull the tractor out of the mud. And right now we're in this weird point with the tech industry where we ain't building tractors. <laughs> we're building an extremely dumb horse. We're going to embrace your AGI overlords because of the Roko's bad list. I mean, I'm all for the memes. Let's go. Like, we're not making a necessarily more useful tool. We're just making a shittier tool that does the job for us worse. Sorry, I just put I had to go put a marker down in the chat so I can clip that for later. <sighs> but I don't know, man. I feel bad for these dwarves. I really was hoping we'd get more dwarves migrating here, but Oh man. Trying to just, like, cheer up the real upset ones, like Laya. Lustful after being with lover. There you go, Laya. Laya was one of the most upset dwarves, but has come around completely. You're over here praying on your own, which... And yelling at people in charge. You know, mood, honestly. Is this fort called Apple Bardom Bard because of Cyber Dwarf from Barkley Shut Up and Jam Guide End? No. I don't even know what that is, Ghost Wizards. No, it's called Apple Bottom because we were trying to figure out what to call this fort, and Apple Bottom showed up as an option, and we all had a cackle and then named it that. That's literally all it was. But in your head, Canon, it can be if you want. It really should be called Sad and Empty because that's actually what this fort is. <laughs> You know, Arende, I'm going to make you, I'm going to give you a new job. You're going to go from being a performer to instead being a scholar. Let's see if you like scholarling, scholaring, scholaring, after you're done praying. Um, everybody is wearing yarn boots or yarn shoes, which is the closest I can do. And uh, yarn socks, which is also the closest I can do. You get some really bizarrely niche references when you hang out in bizarrely niche communities on the internet. Also, how are you doing, Ghost Wizards? How's the XCOM world been treating you? You're going to come back for adventure mode and explore some worlds? You only have one god, right? Yeah. <laughs> you saw me on. I'm pretty consistently on, turns out. Meditate on labor. Thinking about dwarves, yes. I, 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 it's very rare that I don't think about dwarves. Just like, you know, my stray giant hunting bat. <laughs> Here's hoping we can get this dwarf slightly happier soon. Slightly happier. 
The only game I've been constantly thinking about outside of Dwarves recently, though, is um, Rift Wizard. Actually, Jupiter Hell a little bit, too. Jupiter Hell's fun. I enjoy that game. Starting to see Dwarves with socks that are getting old. Same with trousers. So let's do... Just 10, 10 yarn socks. Um, I don't know if you listened to it or not, but Putnam said that that is one of the highest things on the priority list. It just needs to be tackled all at once um, because it needs a lot more than just um, like search bars. It needs search bars and folders and better sorting tools and a bunch of things. So it's something that Putnam is working on, but right now they're all hands on deck to get adventure mode done. So it's something that'll get done. It's just not the next thing that they're doing because... As as I understand it, um, they're you know working on adventure mode right now. It's also a very like clunky menu in general, so. Let's actually get Gazoom doing this. Because Gazoom's a talented clother. Because might as well make higher quality socks if I can. Do you need any new clothes here, dwarf? Yep, just socks and also shoes. Looks like you just claimed them too. So I'm going to make copper bin. I'm going to make 10 of those. <laughs> Makes you want to play hooky instead of DF. Well, you know, don't get fired from your job. Okay, it's not worth it, mate. <laughs> don't get in trouble at your job either. Also not worth it. There you go, you've replaced both of your socks. Let's just do a thing real quick. Let's go to body parts. Mm. Corpses. Set all this stuff to be dumped. All right, well, there's a lot of items that still need to be dumped apparently. What is up on the surface currently? Giant thrips. I did catch a bunch of wild boars apparently, which we will uh, turn into wild boar stew or biscuits or both. Fortress attracted no migrants again. Why not a bat cave? I think instead you should make a bat cave, Bastet. And then also put in a batmobile and a couple batarangs. Just saying, I think that this is a much better idea. <laughs> Get battery powered. <laughs> 
I don't know if that was an intentional pun, but I like it. You know, I should actually put the hospital right here and then just use this as my water source. Is a bat river? <laughs> my sorry, my Batman lore is not that deep, man. Make it next to a mine so it's salt and battery. Well, if it's battery enough, then you can uh, you can make some delicious pastries out of it. But then you might as well also put on an episode of The Simpsons because you'll be saying, "Don't." I think it's time to stop. <laughs> I have too much power in my position of influence. Okay, let's go. There we go. Slaughter, 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 slaughter. Nice. You're giggling your ass off? I recommend you keep it on, but, I mean, you do you. Now, this needs no bins. Second best time is now. Fair enough. You, you're not wrong. Why the Sims problem happening sound just... I mean... <laughs> That's very funny to me. But you think that that's the Sims problems problem sound. Anyway, um, be, because somebody used a sound command, and we have sound commands in this chat, for uh, Tier 2 subscribers. That is why. I have enough adult alpacas currently, and enough young alpacas that I can just slaughter a bunch of these. Let's start brewing drinks from plants again. Get back to it, Bob. Tell me. You fucking donkey! What? Why'd you call me that? What did I do to deserve this? Time to make a whole bunch of leather. Tana hide. It's a unique system. I know this. And then we can all get new leather hoods. And also get decorate with bone going again. And down here, Gazoom's just making his shoes of decent quality. Ass off sounds like donkey repose. <laughs> Ass be gone. <laughs> really. That's kind of funny. Of a thought. Okay, so let's build a hospital up here. It does not need to be this big. I think it's actually going to be like a good smaller chunk of this. Eh. Push it out to there. Yeah. You need a child repellent? I think that you are like the opposite of child repellent, sir. 
Or is it just child repellent so that you can play video games? Actually, isn't child repellent just putting on like a romantic movie on TV? Is, isn't that child repellent? Just putting on like some sappy ass love story? Or like a chick flick? What's most kid repellent? You can play games. There you go. I, 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 I mean, five second display of intimacy. <laughs> intimacy with mom. I mean, yeah, sure, that would also repel children. Push <laughs> all kids outside a fifteen meter radius. Hey, the more I hear about. Uh, Having kids, the happier I am, I don't have them generally, but I always say that people are braver than me. Kind of want to make copper floors, but I don't actually have that much copper. I'm also kind of running low on blocks. Get these going again. So get the jobs up and running once again, following around the upset dwarves. I'm sitting here meditating on labor. Mate, can you like stop for a second? <laughs> Maybe. Or like just go do anything else because this clearly ain't helping you. Are you just going to go back and do it again? Well. <laughs> eh. Okay, fine. I will unassign this temple once again. And wait until you go do something else. Stop meditating on, la on the concept of later labor. Go do some labors. Well, the thing is, like, this dwarf seems to really want to think abstractly. So I really am kind of just hoping that me making them into a scholar will make them go do scholar things at some point. And they seem to get way better thoughts by hanging out in the tavern than hanging out in the temple. So my hope here is kind of just that they will eventually go do temple things instead. Oh, you're just like attending a meeting. Fine then, I will remove your special fancy you job. Think of some booze and joints. That would be kind of funny if they added smoke into this game and it fit and it filled the think abstractly thought. This dwarf is now listed as stressed. Need new clothing? Trousers? Alright. Let's make 14 leather pants. Fourteen of them. Also, hey, Warring. Hope you're doing well. Turns out, uh, old Eurist, uh, mate Eurist, is uh, one of those modern philosophers that would prefer to think about and discuss doing real work over actually doing anything. You know, I, I'm, I'm okay with dwarves being those types of scholars, honestly. As long as they do that and they get positive thoughts out of it. I mean, I have a single book in here. Maybe you actually want to go do work, maybe? I don't know. Let's give you jobs back. Provided they, they don't march from the library to the pub and start lecturing people on how they should do on how they should do their job. Yeah. That's low key kinda how I feel when people are like, it, it, it blind. Play the video game at the start of my stream. It's like, don't you tell me how to do my job. Any 
you go. Happy at work. Want to be around family. Will you have none? Also, Squeeze Figure. That's a funny name. How can people be so glum? Mate, you're the glum one. Be less glum then. What are you bringing for food? Prepared alpaca heart roast. It's a well prepared alpaca heart roast. The ingredients are finely minced alpaca tripe, finely minced turkey egg, and finely minced alpaca lung, and well minced alpaca heart. Sounds like a meaty omelet. Well, at least you're content after eating a fine dish. How's my other depressed dwarf doing? Users. It's the fact that he wants to cause trouble that has me worried. Also keeps getting into arguments. We're into early summer. So we've traded, we, we traded with humans last summer. So I'm mildly curious as to how this goes, but we'll see. Over to you, planting seeds. Planting cave wheat so we can make different kinds of beer. I think we just, yep, ran out of food storage. Let's just go sand 50. Glass pot. Green glass pot. I need to uh, turn the lights off on my tomatoes. Hold up. Good timing. It was right as an ad started, too. Also, uh, side note, I have uh, 12 spinach sprouts on my patio and four peas that have sprouted. At your shit post and post memes. Oh, no. <laughs> what, uh, what what'd you do? What did you do? I mean, yeah. Although here's the thing: that's not a salad, but that is that is a good that that is a good shit. I appreciate your shit post. Thank you for the shit post. At least you're like generally pretty happy with your gig. Okay, humans have arrived. All right. We got Quake Plater. Quake Planter. Quake Planter. I don't know how you plant a quake, but... No, this isn't rogue gardening. This is literally just my patio. Although I will say, I officially don't think I any... I no longer... I, I don't think I need to worry about keeping my, um... 
or keeping any... I don't think I need to worry about keeping any, um, like, mint plants on my patio anymore because my patio just seems to have erupted this year with um, mint between the bricks because, like, it's a brick patio, um, and mint is just growing between the bricks. So I don't, I don't think I need to worry so much about that anymore. They wanted leather, right, if I remember correctly? I'm going to once again ask for iron anvils, uh, iron bars, and silver. Plant mint. Um. Yeah, it's fine. We'll bring this one. Yep. Yep. All right, let's go down a little bit. Some of them some coffins, which is a bit dark. I want to say that they uh, they wanted leather, so tanned hides. I mean, not. I know they wanted sheet, but I don't have any sheet. Was it cloth, maybe? No, it doesn't seem right. It's decent value, though. I mean, le selling them leather is kind of crappy because leather doesn't sell for much, so I don't really see the point. Um. Kind of surprised that bones don't sell for anything. RuneScape apparently didn't teach me anything valuable. Selling people bones, not actually the best thing to do. Could sell them the these... Wild boars. Oh shit, do I have coyotes? I caught a coyote chat. Hmm. Mint is allegedly good for keeping rodents away? I wonder how true that is. <laughs> I'll tell you, there are plenty of rodents around my building. They're just not generally directly in my garden, fortunately. Yeah, you know what? We'll just we'll sell them some used laundry and just like not worry about it too, too much. I'll buy a book, maybe two. All right, let's go over to here. Go all the way down to the bottom. And just go, bump, you, right here. Oh, right, no basalt's uh, lava safe, right? As long as it's not granite, we're good. Peppermint oil. I do have a spearmint plant, but I'm pretty sure peppermint is different than just normal mint. Although I could be completely mistaken. I wouldn't be too surprised by that. Making leather trousers down here. There we go. Joker of Spades has already claimed it. Look at that. Just immediately, he's like, I need those alpaca pants. I'll bet that they could alpaca punch. Okay, we're going to go over here and spin thread. And let's see what they have to trade. Well, I don't have much value to trade for, so I will buy a... Well, actually, no. I, I literally have no value to trade for, but they did bring some stuff. So let's actually about face real quick. Sell these gems.
And you know, I'm not actually going to use these bolts. Sell the bolts. <laughs> and that pun just blew out of your... I'm sorry. Sometimes I'll be mid-sentence and then read something in chat and my brain just ceases to function too. <laughs> basalt. Basalt. B-A-S-A-L-T is lava safe. Brown rock, not bath salts. I mean, those would be pretty intense bath salts if they were. They'd probably be, they'd be like the everlasting gobstopper of bath salt. I mean, you need some tough dwarven bath salts for, like, tough dwarven skin, right? So that, that makes perfect sense. You're encrusting furniture or are mildly stressed. Scrap or finished goods, rather. You, you're encrusting my mugs and stuff with gems. And that's kind of cool. We're not naming any dwarves right now, Michael. Also, I don't even know what name you are referring to, so. Well, getting the last two of these items put away. Fried friend shape? <laughs> Mr. Clean of Apple Bottom. Maybe if I had a legendary soap maker. Bought some more alpacas. Trying to spin thread. All right, let's um buy the iron, I suppose. Scroll all the way down to the bottom here. No, they didn't bring books. That's a shame. I will buy a few anvils, though. It's what I can afford. Still waiting on a few more items. Apple trees underground. I don't know if it got mentioned in Discord. Did somebody else mention it? I mean, I'm not growing apple trees underground, but uh, it is called Apple Bottom, mostly because it's funny sounding, and it's the lyrics of a song. Um, as for... Mentioned in Discord? I assume so. Although, I don't know how much longer this fort's going to go for because I haven't gotten a migrant wave after the initial two and I've never traded with the mountain home. And my assumption is because I must have done too good of a job absolutely completely obliterating the home faction with my last fort. You wish you could ask? You can. Codexes. Same with scrolls. That's 108 in the value. I'll just buy the one brass bar. Why not? I'm also like this. This song has taught has actually made me kind of amazed by how many people don't know that song. And you know what? It's probably for the best that you don't know that song, chat. Like, a lot of people are immediately getting the, the joke, and then I'm also kind of surprised by how many people don't know the song.
You do and you don't like it. Me neither. I also don't like it. I think it's hysterical, but I don't like it. I am not going to pretend that I like that song, because I, I don't. I like some of the memes and jokes and things that have happened because of that song and around that song. And I have some fond memories of that song, but I, it's not a great song. <laughs> it's a lot of aluminum. How are we doing in here? Getting close to granite, getting close to black bath basalts, getting... We, uh, we ran out of obsidian, I think. Let's kill the rock mechanisms, that's fine. Um, haven't even started with the green glass pots yet. Because I'm still making those coffins. Let's get rid of those. Actually, I should just make some silk trousers. That's that's not a bad idea. I, I made leather pants initially, but... Silk trousers probably not a bad thing to go with, actually. Yeah, because currently we're running with al alpaca leather. We've also got alpaca wool robes. Could make some silk robes, just so dwarves can choose their favorite material. All right. This is the last summer I'm giving it. The dwarves are beginning to lose hope that they will ever actually get to, you know, see friends from the mountain home in this place that they are living in. And when the dwarves run out of hope, that is when I abandon the fort. And then reclaim it. I am slightly worried, though, that when I reclaim the fort, it's just going to be, like, unsettleable. Man, so many jobs. I will say, having this few dwarves makes it absurdly clear <laughs> how many jobs there are in a dwarf fort. Right? Oh. Oh. Wow, they just found a giant cave spider. Oh, that's mildly terrifying. I'm glad they killed it and it didn't crawl into my fortress. Everyone's favorite sound? It's okay, it's one layer below. <sighs> <laughs> and then clanging, yeah, pretty much. It's a scary as hell sound, man, let me tell you. Back to the darkness indeed. Ay ay ay. Very fun sprite art. Uh what, rodent men? They're basically just Dorfort Skaven. They've killed a forgotten beast already, so they're doing pretty good. Like, they're a force to be reckoned with, for sure. Also, they've been at war with the Crundle forces for a while now, which is kind of funny on its own. Yeah, see, they're chasing the Crundles. One could say that the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but they'll still attack me anyway, so... Yeah, it gets kind of loud. They, they should really make that sound play more intelligently. <laughs> but I'd be lying if I said I didn't like that sound. Genuinely. The vile force of Crundle, yeah. You know, I kind of want to put bolt like everybody into squads. 
and then just tell them to go attack something and then retire the fort with them off map. I wonder if they'd come back. Like, kind of genuinely, I, w I wonder what would actually happen. All right, well, we've still got until the end of summer, though. Because we're just in midsummer. Animals die of old age, and so do dwarves. You know what? Let's actually connect this dining hall to the library instead. Kinda... You know what? Let's just go into here and just all these. Just get rid of those rotten foods. Uh, it depends on the animal type, though. Rumpus. What's the situation? Uh, this fort started in... Year 542. We have 14 dwarves. I've never traded with the mountain home because I think I may have done too good of a job killing them. I should be getting migrants where I am. But uh, and we've traded with other factions, but I haven't traded with the mountain home, leading me to believe that I'm not going to be able to. So that's that's the situation with this fort. All bloody miasma, man. Everybody's getting a snack. You're reciting poetry. Like you're a scholar, but you seem to not think you are. I can't because we're on a lake. The game is bugged, so it doesn't matter if I open the tavern. I don't generally do that anyways, even in forts where... Um, that bug doesn't exist, but if you settle on a lake or if you settle on a ocean, uh, you will never get visitors, period. So also no, I wouldn't do that anyway, because that's not really a solution. Scholar with the steam issues. Sounds like you speak with experience. No, the plan is if we don't get to trade this fall, which is a month away, if we make it to winter without trading, assuming I don't get invaded, I'm going to retire this fort and uh, I'm going to retire this fort and um, reclaim it with a different faction is my plan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it is. And I don't I don't care. 
Fluid levels is the least of my concerns. The actual concern about reclaiming this fortress is the fact that um, there's a lake above it. <laughs> so, volcano stuff, fine. This water, fine, whatever. The problem is, is there's a lake up here. <laughs> so, this is all going to be in the caverns, probably. Um, which actually isn't that bad. Because it'll refill. And I'm sure the liquids will mostly drain. Some stuff will be on fire. There'll be lava everywhere. It'll be a good time. It'll be exciting. It's part of the fun. Wow. Why are you so pissed? It's probably all just the butcher table, if I had to bet. The actual concern is that somebody will destroy or reclaim this fort in the time that I go to claim it myself. Mm -hmm. Or an earthquake or, you know. It, to me, it's only like really a big no-no to reclaim on an ocean because the ocean might just immediately drown every dwarf. <laughs> Which, kind of hysterical, depending on your sense of humor, I suppose. You know, Iranamo, just remember, I don't take suggestions, so... <laughs> now, my mind is made up. I'm going to do the thing I'm going to do. And the thing that I'm going to do is we are going to play this until uh, halfway through fall. And if we don't get dwarves, we are going to abandon the fortress. And then reclaiming it. That is what we're going to do. It's that simple. And we're going to reclaim it by the fourth, by the, with the faction that we've been trading it with. Because my headcanon is that, well, you know, they're starting to get worried. They, they want to go home. They, they're going, well, the whole idea was that we would have a very large group of dwarves that, you know, would then show up and help us. But, like, they haven't, so they're getting desperate. That's why some of these dwarves are so stressed. It's got nothing to do with the rotten meat in this stockpile. Nothing. Absolutely nothing to do with all the rotten meat in this stockpile. What are you talking about? Yeah, I have DF hack, right? But it doesn't read as a joke unless you use a kappa, really. If you're saying something that reads like a suggestion, it's it does it's really difficult to read it as a joke. So, oh bad. Um. How do you get so much meat anyway? I butchered a bunch of um, alpacas. I have a bunch of alpacas. And they all packed together up here. And I slaughtered all the adults. Because I had like 35 of them. Want to practice martial art? Well, also everybody wants to practice martial arts, so maybe it's time to do that. Practice until we have 30 booze. Uh, it doesn't rot when in a stockpile. It rots if it takes too long to get into the stockpile. And the reason it took too long to get into the stockpile is because I didn't have enough barrels. That's why. No. 
It was just simply slaughtering season for a normal farmhouse. Nothing weird about that, Mako. And I'll have you know that we are perfectly normal dwarves. We haven't committed anything. Giddy remembering performing. Don't feel anything improving in discipline. Well, at the very least, you can get martial training for a bit. You also need to satisfy that. Um, if possible, I mean, part of the reason why I'm training them is because I haven't seen them do that in forever. They used to do that all the time. Um, dodge off the edge during training. And part of the reason I'm putting them here is because I was curious to see if they would. But I haven't seen them do that yet, so I don't know. Maybe. Oh no, I know exactly what's wrong with this faction, Edward. It's it's not a civil war. No, the reason we're not getting migrants and the reason we're not trading is because me and my previous fort was at war with the faction I'm currently playing. And me and my previous fort did a really good completely like obliterating the vast majority of their functional fortresses. Um, so I was kind of hoping that I could like play as like a group of refugees on the run from the big scary faction that I built up, but um, maybe I did too good of a job. <laughs> so that that's what's going on. It's, it's not a... It's just all of the mountain homes for this faction are locked in combat, basically. And if they're besieged, then you'll never get migrants because, well, they're besieged. I could force it with DFAC, but I'd rather just retire the fort. Or abandon the fort, rather. Because it makes more logical sense, story-wise. It kind of is, yeah. Man, why did the save function happen, like, seconds before the ad break box? <laughs> it's real bad timing on that. Ah, well. What can you do? The question is, do I begin that new embark today or not? That's the important question. And does that count as a new fort again? And do I rename the fort? Because while well, Apple Bottom is hysterical, I only want to do what chat wants to watch. So it depends. Does chat want to watch it? You know, at the end of the day, I think that the thing that Secret Person needs to realize is, um, in this industry, we don't really play games because it's fun. We play games because it's our job. <laughs> so am I having fun most of the time? Generally. Am I bored right now? Oh, fucking absolutely. <laughs> Just like this dwarf who hasn't been able to fight for too long. That is not true, Yvonne. I guarantee you if I start streaming uh, 24 hours of white noise, uh, I, 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 micro close-up microphone belching, uh, you would probably tune out. So be careful what you state, because I don't think that's true. I don't think you would literally watch anything. <laughs> but thank you for the dedication. I appreciate it. Um, I, I saw a dwarf recite that the harshness cradled. At the frilly pants. Suddenly minesweeper, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> At least a couple of minutes. Oh, certainly, like the three minute a three minute clip of it would go viral, but I really like this dwarf's last name, Squeeze Figure. <laughs> It's, it just, it, it reminds me of, like, 1920s fashion. This is kind of funny. It's like corset. It's like a dwarf, dwarven way of writing corset. Oh, you made a friend. Good for you. 
Smurf's just taking a nap? Okay. All the way up to the ninth. So how long till abandon? Like 30 days? Halfway point of this season, basically. The dry season has come. Sandwich. I mean, I could go get a sandwich. Actually, I, sh I probably should go get my sandwich. Welcome back. Same Lynn. All right, chat. I'm going to go not make you stare at that. Uh, I'm going to go uh, grab my sandwich because that's a, a thank you for the reminder. Uh, and hopefully by the time I come back, we have traders. So you have aim of a thousand subs on YouTube, YouTube, and at one point I dwelled somewhere in desperation and thought that I'll start publishing videos of you playing solitaire uh, with actually a deck of cards because you just cannot play solitaire without someone appearing behind your back and telling you how to play. Um, I mean, backseat gaming is real on YouTube. Let's let's be honest. I'll be right back. Nope, it's not the right one. Nope, it's not the right one. Not the right one. Yep, this is the Castle of Fellowship. So, we'll give them another X amount of time. I mean, thought it was three? Well, seems like it was five. I abandoned the fortress and reclaim it as that faction that just showed up to trade. Thank you regardless, Big Bang. But yeah, that is the plan. Um, is to retire the fortress and reclaim it. Was that faction that just showed up? The Castle of Fellowship. Um. Means that waiting about an hour for your nobles to haul buckets. That's a very long period of time to wait. It happens, Shinobi. You get two tickets an hour. Actually, four because you're a because you're subscribed. Non subs get one every thirty. You just woke back up. Ah, oh, it's all good. 
<laughs> he may have nodded off. Dude, go get some sleep. Nodding off means it's time for bed. I mean, maybe it is, but that would be news to me. That's not what I said it to back when. Also, earthen conflagrations and the rough mischief are two of the best, like, randomly generated squad names I've seen in a bit. You'll make homemade mac and cheese? Damn right. You need to make dinner, do some chores before you go to bed? I gotcha. Well, I do hope that you get some sleep, though. I do hope that you get some sleep. You would definitely throw your plate and cutlery down to the lower floor once you were finished eating there. And that's why dwarves don't have plates and cutlery. They're too dangerous. I'm quite happy with how this tavern's turned out. Seems like all the meat finished rotting off, too. You are pissed, dwarf. Keep getting into arguments. They're just performing and singing songs and doing all their things. All right. Chat. What do we wait until the end of this month? Struck in the head by green glass goblet. Yeah, there you go. I have I did once see a dwarf get killed by a, a granite mug but that's the closest end of the month all right till the 29th see no migrants this season rodents fighting with crundles although i am gonna sort of cheat i'm gonna exterminate all of the rodents everything that's listed as an invader Mostly because I'm slightly worried that if I reclaim this fort, they'll all just be running around in in in, in my fort. Full of stone mugs? No, that would be a horrible defense. Trust me, dwarven throwing ability is the strength there, not the mug. The mug isn't what's strong there. It's dwarven throwing ability. waiting at the fort entrance there's only been one and it's dead at least that i've seen it died to the rodent people hey dwarfy how far can you lob this boot you pretty much <laughs> we also haven't had a single strange mood because i don't have 20 dwarves Sounds like a really good April Fool's Day setup. These dwarves who keep visiting me, these are going to be who do the takeover. The funny thing, though, is I kind of just want to send everybody off the map. But if I do that, actually, I should just expel them all. Hmm. 
Because if it's like a mutiny story, what we could do is I could take like these three and tell them to go attack something and then expel the rest. And then maybe they'll show up. I'm not blaming my dwarves. No, what I'm thinking... Like, the reasoning for this, right, is they were told, go all the way here, right? Start building this, and we'll use this as our new mountain home. They started building here, and it's been years. One of them has died. Like, the most upset dwarves in this fort is because they uh, their friend died. And, like, see right there? Mulling over it. Um, So, that made the ones who are in charge of the military go, well, we're going to head home. And the rest of them go, but we'll die because it's in a state of like perpetual warfare. So I'll tell this top squad to go attack something up here. Let's say one of these, right? And then I will expel the rest of them. What happens if you expel your last dwarf? Theoretically, you should get a, a an end an end game screen. All right, we're on the nineteenth, twenty fifth is when we do this. Also, you might not be able to expel your last dwarf because your last dwarf might be the mayor. But I will expel all of the named dwarves with the hope that they stay in the vicinity around the fortress around here and then rejoin us. Because I do have a allied location that's right next door, right here. Which is a dwarven helix from the Roasted Seals. So here's hoping that they go there. I mean, the cartoon image of pirates that we have in our head n never really existed. For the same reason the cartoon image of the Wild West we have in our heads never really existed. It's almost like creative writing has been around and a popular form of entertainment for a very long time. Almost like that. I mean, who knows, really? You're excited to see an April Fool's Fort? I, I had, I, I've had ideas a couple of times, but I keep, like, losing them. All right, well, the trained squad is going to go attack. Something that they could reasonably win against. It's a destroyed location. That's interesting. They are going to conquer and occupy. Good luck, dwarves. So good luck to Ral the Insane. Who's currently sleeping, by the way. While his men leave. Batome and Cybrek. And as that begins to happen, this squad here disbands. Ral then b begins to leave the map. I jump to our first dwarf on the list, Tubby. Leaves. Terminal wetness. Leaves. Gazoom. Leaves. Creed is nobility and cannot be sent away. So Creed will have to stay. Uh, Merc and, and Joker take their leave. Shake breaks. Leaves with his family. Fallout Rain and Irel. 
Laya. Packs up her things and walks out the door. Arende. Leaves. Good riddance to this godforsaken place. In my head canon, they are leaving with the traitors. But who knows? They're probably just going off into the wilderness to die. So now we just have Ral, who's walking off the map alongside of the grouchy child, Irel, who's still carrying his granite puzzle box. As a bunch of giant Kia steel p steel um, quivers, which is kind of funny. Our final dwarf in the basement, Creed. Oh, we can't tell him to leave. But him and his trusty bat, Vakar. Well, I'm going to heal again. Are about to abandon this fort. Here's hoping it's in one piece still when we come back. <laughs> 